PKA 615 with our guest Destiny Taylor. This episode of PKA brought to you by Lock and Load, Wonky Weeds, Death by Gummy Bears, and Fume. You'll hear more about all of them later. Destiny, thank you for joining us. I know you're busy streaming 10 hours every day. I was going over really? to your, your channel just before this because I wanted to get a feel of what, what you were doing so I could ask questions. And your channel's been popping off the past few days with a bunch of Twitch drama and as I was reading all the titles, I realized I don't know who any of these people are, but it seems Ms. Kiff is at the center of it. Is he a bad guy, and should I hate him? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I already do. I'm a step ahead of you, Taylor. I'm You're, not um, that way. He was a, <laughs> could you describe all seasons of Game of Thrones in like three sentences? <laughs> Trash. Yeah, just of the kind of what you're asking me to do. <laughs> Basically, a cool long like time ago, somebody <laughs> probably got sexually harassed or assaulted at a party. Some people saw this. Some people might have tried to cover this up. Some people might have alerted other people that there was potentially a cover-up. And a year or two later, while some people were attacking another group of people, other people brought up that somebody might have covered up something that happened a long time ago, and people are trying to figure out if that happened or not. And then people mm. got mad about it. It's there's at least I like nine different yeah, there's at least like nine different players involved that was here. Pretty but, um, well done, Destiny. Yeah. Destiny's a good I feel like I get what's going on now. Yeah, yeah I, I get do, excited okay. when we have a professional <laughs> communicator on the show. <laughs> but, yeah, like, basically, the whole thing comes down to um whether or not people think uh Ms. Kiff, who is like or is or was a member of a big gaming team, sent over some friends to have another girl kind of rewrite a twit longer about a sexual assault to cover oh. for a friend. And that's kind of like where everybody's not really sure. It seems like maybe something might have happened. Maybe something wouldn't have. But um, there's not like conclusive evidence when it comes to these types of things because nobody was in the room at the time except for mm -hmm. the people that were. And so, you know, who the do you trust? Sex but, yeah, that's what the uh, the whole Twitch community was embroiled in. Yeah, so I was really shocked to find out that a Twitch streamer might like, I don't know, have acted inappropriately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really weird because in this world, like for <laughs> entertainment, for YouTube, for Twitch, like any weird shit like that is almost just never happening, right? Like, yeah, yeah, everybody it gets here's a really out. good person. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it, I'm just gonna place all my trust in the Catholic Church because I don't trust Twitch streamers like I used to. True. Mm. At mm. least the Catholic Church is like, yeah. Some of us do that to kids. Get over it. <laughs> like, that's what we do, and we're going to do it when you're gone. Like, like yeah, they, they embrace it, and you have to respect that. <laughs> you know? Do you remember Basher? Keemstar Bashir. used to make, like, Bashir? No. I like Bash that name better. I think I have the name right. Destiny. Oh, Bashir. Al-Assad, the leader of Syria. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Notoriously good at uh, Yeah, yeah, that was his full thing. I have no idea. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm gonna foul this up. He he was a Minecraft streamer, and okay, first red flag. <laughs> yeah, and a Minecraft YouTuber, and he got really popular. He had a really hot girlfriend, which helped his appeal because she was kind of um Hi. exhibitionist to that to some extent. You know, like you wouldn't. She <laughs> wait, what, 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 wait, what is that? What? How does? Can you connect the dots for me? So he streams and he's on YouTube and his girlfriend is an exhibitionist, like, like fucks people in public. Or what do you mean by that? I, we need. So at the time, she was just really cute. Her name was Claire baby, baby legs. And <laughs> when they did videos together, a really cute girl in the thumbnail and in your stuff helped. And then it okay, got gotcha. a I can't naughtier. Yeah, eye candy at first. Okay. And then it was like eye candy, but her in a towel or her in a shower, but blurred out and almost pg rated right sure. um later she stepped baiting, up basically. her game and became a chatterbait star okay and days. um but aside from her he was somewhere on the sexual predator spectrum i think on the very mild end of it like don't don't <laughs> rename that spectrum <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> hear me out on this so <laughs> He was, I think, in high school. Like so he was years. heckin' wholesome, mostly. No, he's like a level three, like a level three groomer, okay, and on a one to ten. He's Hear like, me okay. out. I, Destiny's <laughs> not too far off. Okay. He's like 18. I okay. think she was 15. Oh, uh, okay. So Zach says 19, but I, I think that I might be right. I, I, I could all be, be in high school, I always sign and, off. And, yeah. uh, so they were, it would have been legal had they been three years apart. And this is like 80% right. So just going go back to it. school myself. But because they were three years and some number of months apart. High became... school, not GED, a different thing. Sorry. Right. I'm, I'm getting interrupted a lot. You are. Because they were three years and some months apart, it was illegal 
so the police got involved and they had like state psychologists interview both of them and they came away with this notion that like all right so this is against the letter of the law but they were developmental peers that was the term that they used but meanwhile keemstar is reporting on this story constantly and he's saying misleading stuff like he is 27 years old and she was 15 years old which are both true but not at the same time like mm -hmm. do, you, do you see how he's misrepresenting what's going on like yeah sure. he's 27 because this happened nine years ago and uh, his whole audience is like buying everything he says. Keemstar seems to genuinely believe deep in his heart that he has a sixth sense for these things. And I don't know if he had his facts wrong innocently or intentionally, because I, I've been on the receiving end of enough Keemstar reports that I know that oftentimes <laughs> there's bad intent that he's making shit up. Um, I love my favorite thing about anything related to child shit is the verbs that, or, or like the way that people describe things. So for instance, if it's, it's never an 18 year old and a 15 year old. It's always like an almost 19 year old with a 15 year old. Like they always round up the age <laughs> of the other one and they'll round down the age of the other one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I thought mean, that he is 27 and she was 15 was especially agreed. Crazy. Like yeah. that's yeah. Yeah. But he is 27 because it happened nine years ago. Like, like that's it's it's working in reverse though. You left out. Like it's I was 15. <laughs> like I was 15 <laughs> and she's 15. And <laughs> <laughs> the biggest no, thing I got from that was that was nine. It's like you were fifteen before <laughs> around forty years ago. Nine eleven. True. Uh, <laughs> you use the term in that psyche valve, developmental peers. Does yeah. this mean if you're retarded enough, you could fuck somebody at any age, or what? Can you break that down a little bit more? <laughs> that is a slippery slope. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting you just turn of phrase. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, this guy's sixty-one, but he's got the mind of a five-year-old. It's like I'm not okay with this, guys. Like, we can, get out of here. They can't go on tea dates together. Wait. All right. Well, that's an Zach said example. he died of COVID in 2021. Who died? Zach did Bash Burst die? Oh, yeah, I did say that funny. <laughs> Bash died of, in 2021. I had no idea. Anyway, another thing that was interesting. So, damn. Bash would be like in tears as Keemstar exposed him. You know, with with a bunch of false facts and misleading dialogue. Mm -hmm. But then there was some secret recordings that came out that implied they were both in on it. Like they were like, yeah, that was a good one. And that they were both like Bash was somehow complicit in his being painted as a pedophile and used it for popularity. I don't know. I think Bash was in a really fucked up spot mentally and nice. Didn't or things could well. be taken out of context too. Yeah. You know, it could it's fucked up. It could be one of those things where like uh, you know, he, maybe maybe person A is bullying him and he's just kind of like going along with like, yeah, that was a good one. Piece of shit. Yeah, it's there. always hard there. Do you guys know the kill stream? Taking out of context. Ethan Ralph or whatever. Have you ever heard of this guy or any of these no. things? I've heard of him. No, yeah. lay it out. He, like I I said before that like so people submit false tips to the FBI to try to get you swatted or whatever. Um somebody tried to do this to me where FBI came and asked me that like people tell us you got child porn. It's like I don't have child porn. And I mentioned on stream, I'm like, yeah, this is like my third visit from the FBI. Nice job guys. And when I mentioned what they came for, he had written an article on me said destiny currently under investigation for child pornography and i'm like well that's not really right but like i've talked to him in the future, <laughs> and I'm like that was a nice article dude like good one you really got me there so like if somebody clipped that they could like i wonder if that's like the type of conversation they had. Like, oh, he was in it the whole time I'm like no i don't think so yeah. Like, he said he wrote in an article you were being investigated, investigated for child. If you search for it, yeah, Stephen Bonnell investigated FBI child porn. I'm pretty sure. And it's then when important. you go to click the evidence, like to back it up, it's a video of you talking about what happened. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty like, stupid. wait, very cyclical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's absurd. Jesus Yikes. Christ. I, there was this one guy, I, you know, all those channels on YouTube that have like, they're like documentaries, like the Wings documentaries. It'll be like the downfall of Wings of Redemption. I was on one of those channels recently, and I saw like a side suggestion for a guy named Call Me Carson, who was like, I knew oh, him because no. like he was a big like YouTube guy who actually, I think he was a big fan of Woody's. And I watched a little bit of it, and I didn't want to watch the whole thing because I, I didn't watch his content before. And I like scrolled down just to get a gist of what the comments were saying. And it was like, this is all over a 19-year-old texting a 17-year-old. Yeah. And it's like, because I remember seeing him like trending on Twitter like a year or two ago, and just despite my assumption, not looking into it, I'm like, something fucked up must have happened for this being many people to be this upset. Literally, 1917. That that's insane. That's I will insane. say there were people keep whispering about there being more stuff in the background. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, but yeah, what what initially came out was that 17, 19 year old. I think I've gotten to the point in my life where this I not to enable um, pedophiles or anything like that. 
But at this point, when the ages are like 20, 21 and younger, I need to see some behavior because like there are ways that like a 19 year old could definitely like take advantage of a 15, 16 year old. And there are also True. ways where it's like they met when like one was a senior, one was a sophomore, one went to college. They were like the birthdays lined up. So there's developmental like developmental peers. Yeah. <laughs> or just even like it's like it's a thing that like I don't give a fuck. Like if a, if a sophomore in high school is dating like a fucking freshman in college, is it a little creepy sometimes? Yeah, but I don't really give a fuck that much. Is it enough to destroy somebody's life over? Almost never, but it could be. There could be like logs leaked or there could be conversations like that was really fucked up where the guy's mm-hmm. like trying to encourage the younger person to like run away from their parents or like crazy shit like that. That would be fucked up. But there needs to be more than just like I this guy was 20 years old and he flirted with like a 17 or 16. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Who the fuck cares? They're the like the response of people. I just I could not believe like, like apparently he got like chased off the Internet for a while. And all mm. that came out that, like, like you said, that was certified was a nineteen him at nineteen talking to a seventeen year old, which is like mm-hmm. they genuinely like were probably in high school at the same time. Yeah, like if they went to the same high school, they were guaranteed were in high school at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like because they're that close in age, they could have been one grade apart. Like that's just that's retarded. Yeah. Were there it, any? Uh, it like throws really- it throws water on like real stuff. Like I know that's a trite saying, but it's true. Like mm-hmm. when when people like treat a nineteen to seventeen year old the same way as a if it were 40. a 27 year old and a 12 year old, like sure. that's, that's a pedophile molesting a child. That's, mm-hmm. that shouldn't be in the same conversation as a 19 year old and a 17 year old flirting. That's the other, you said it was a pedophile. <sighs> Technically not. Right. Oh, no. I, does anyone here know the different definitions? I, I don't know them off the top of my head, but I know. I make, I make a point not like to. Date. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I make a point not to know the definitions. I, I know the definitions uh, really well. I was a huge Ron Paul supporter in 2008, so I can say the age of consent in every state and uh, the difference between a pedophile and a bibophile and all the other if, if a files or whatever that are up there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No one, you can't even be like, that's not pedo without being coming off as, as if you're defending the pedo. Yeah, like, exactly. No, I'm not defending pedo. I'm defending rich vocabularies. <laughs> I argue about it quite a lot, actually, because I get, I get annoyed at the virtue signaling when you get these people out here that act like they could never, ever... Um, I almost made a really itchy joke. I'm sorry. But when people out here are acting like... I was going to say, never, ever fuck an 11-year-old, really. No, no. But when, these, when these people are out here, when these people are out here and they're like, a 17-year-old woman, I could never find that attractive. Absolutely fucking disgusting. They, and it's gotten to the point where on my old Twitter, before I got spam reported and banned, dude, I'll pull these conversations off Reddit where these dumb motherfuckers are typing shit like oh, I'm 20 years old. I can't even imagine looking at a 19-year-old. It's like, bro, you don't look at anybody. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. What are you even talking about? People type shit like this, and it's like, I'm a, so- I'm a sophomore in high school, and freshmen are like gross to me. I'm like, no, they're not, dude. You're yeah. so full of shit. People virtue signal so hard over it. It's so disgusting. That yeah, is that's ridiculous. hardcore. That's, I haven't yeah. seen that extreme. Meanwhile, like, their mom and dad are like, oh, yeah, my dad was my mom's professor in like fucking college. Like, okay, they're like a 15 year <laughs> age. Like, well, they met when she was like 20. So it's okay. Like, get the fuck out of here. It's Stupid. like, it's like when you see, I, I saw some, something go viral on Twitter like a, a month or two ago. And it was like someone with like a big like communist flag avatar. And they posted photos that they got roasted for. It was like fox hunt on the family farm today. And it's like, an enormous palatialist. Do you know how rich you have to be to go on fucking fox hunts <laughs> on horses? Like, and so like, to, post, to post that is hilarious. Like, it's like diamond appraising today with the family, <laughs> <laughs> diamond family at the beer family mine. <laughs> yeah, fucking ridiculous. <sighs> or you see the same thing. Like sometimes people will be like, "What would you be in a communist utopia?" And it'd be like, "I'd teach art. I'd paint." It's like no, you'd you'd mine until you starve to death. <laughs> <laughs> you, I don't think you'd get selected for like comrade. You will be number one Minecraft streamer <laughs> for the new republic. <laughs> there was a um my my favorite meme for that was there was a big website. It was like a twenty question qu- uh, quiz to figure out what you would be doing on the commune, and you would go through and you'd answer. Do you have an affinity for art? Um, you know what kind of skills do you have? What do you blah blah blah? And um, when you would reach the final page, you'd answer the last question the job that it would feed you at the end was always subsistence farming. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what you were, subsistence yeah. farming. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff about like what you have an affinity for and, and what your potential is and stuff. I sucked so bad as a teenager. My, 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 my GPA coming out of high school was a 1.98, to put it in perspective. I was a terrible, terrible student who completely lacked work ethic and just hadn't found his direction or motivation yet. All these other systems where, like, 
you know, schools, you know, you have to take a test to get into the next grade, to be selected for college, to be there. I would have failed all of them. I would have been nowhere in life under any other system but this one. And I'm thankful I'm here because this is better. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, this system, this system allows you to do that. But it might not be the best thing for our society as a whole, right? Like, like maybe Woody would have been better trained as a lifeguard. Like that was your gig. You had it figured <laughs> out. Favorite. You should still be on that that Coast Guard tower. rescue swimmer. Fucking, you're, you'd be so dark I could by use now. You right now, you'd be so, <laughs> so leathery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woody, have you had one blotch of cancer? Those are rookie numbers. We got to pump up those numbers, Woody. <laughs> I am the cancer. <laughs> no, I like, get like, cancer. You think that of me? In a system like that, like the people that you would actually pull out of and like, oh, you're not going to be farming, buddy. It'd be like one in 10,000 or something that's going to go be an engineer or some fucking Wouldn't have been mm -hmm. me. astronaut or some shit. Like, like your best and brightest, right? And then but everybody I don't know else. It's going to be farm. better for society, right? Like in this system, we allow water to find its level and they don't have to figure it out by 14 years old. Yeah. The only mm -hmm. way it works, you know, Gene Roddenberry was a commie. Uh, okay. they, don't like, they don't like to talk about that over at uh, CBS. He <laughs> <laughs> was a fucking commie. And that's the idea of Star Trek. You're po um, what, what's it called when you're po um, post... Um, God damn it. Post-scarcity. Post-scarcity post society. So all the people who don't want to do shit or can't do shit, they don't have to farm. They can just chill. So I, that's the part of Star Trek they never show you. The billions who must be chilling somewhere, <laughs> not flying starships and saving space, uh, space anomalies. Are you ever post-scarcity? If like if you're like if everything's covered like then power would be the thing that you'd. It seems like we always want more, you know. I was about to say if human wants are insatiable, then post scarcity is impossible. They're pretty yeah, good Star like, Trek though because they can like create. Yeah, it is know, a show from from energy, yeah, and the energy <laughs> seems pretty uh, pretty easily came, came by to come I, by there. Right, but at some point it becomes a storage problem. <laughs> you know? It's like, Star Trek. They have transporter beams and fucking faster than light. They, they, they and, and holodecks. Time. They seem to be able to store. Oh. Like, there's like um. Help me. What is the the telephone booth in Doctor Who called? TARDIS. TARDIS. Yeah, they seem to have TARDIS like technology. We're getting some, some reverb, I think, uh, maybe from Destiny, because I, I can hear myself like coming back at me ever so faintly. Is it testing? Does it glow when I light up, or how can I tell if it's me or not? I don't right? know. I'm not hearing it, so I don't. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you heard it, it right i don't know i can't tell who it is but i heard it mildly here mute yourself it's destiny okay i turned my headphone down hopefully it God, it's not me i don't know what i would have done <laughs> you want to clap again make sure i'm afraid people hate it one two three four five six they, seven eight we got it no we got it. No. No. everyone's no. gonna hate the clap <laughs> someone's good. driving in their car just bang <laughs> <laughs> i'm so listen if there's anything well, i've learned from reading your subreddit as long as there's anything but hockey talk apparently people are happy so what do you just woke somebody I'll up win them over eventually <laughs> yeah I just, I don't, yeah you're mad at me but someone nearly fell asleep and i saved their lives it's true, true. Yeah, you know, well, just for that reason, I'm gonna start playing a police siren randomly on the show. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, I saw a crazy I police video last know. night. Mm. They uh, they they sick the canine on the guy, and the guy no, is like on his sorry. back now, canine on his leg, and he takes out a pistol and like goes to put the pistol to the dog's head, but the cop has an AR-15, and I mean, when I say he's standing over him, I mean he's standing over him, looking straight down, and they just light this guy up when he points the gun at the dog. And the dog is fine. I saw this video too. Yeah. They, Jesus. He was probably going to shoot the dog. I mean, he, he had, you can't. I mean, point he was it. waving a gun around, and there was like cop, three cops on top of him and a dog. So somebody was getting shot, mm -hmm. no matter what. Yeah. I saw another one where yeah. this crazy guy had kidnapped his kid, I think, like a toddler, <clears throat> and he's holding it in the line at McDonald's, maybe. Like, keep in mind, there's cars there trying to get, get their food. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're having to deal with this. And uh, you won't put the kid down. So they tase him, grab the kid real quick, kid, pretty smoothly. Kid doesn't fall or anything. And First then the guy bounce. still won't give up. So they've got like two guys on top of him and he won't put, he won't give him his hands. He's like, got him like locked or something. He won't put him on his back. So they let the dog start chomping on him. And I think they quickly realize, oh my God, no, get the dog off. Cause like the dog bites the guy in the calf and like blood just starts pouring after like two little bites from that Belgian Mao. It just, shredded hmm. this motherfucker i'm it sure was, police dogs are a, scary yeah the police activity channel is just you love endless. that channel so i've never it's seen so it it's so good curious about it it's so good hours of entertainment hours of entertainment you'll i'll say this you'll 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 
it'll it makes it harder to judge um cops who you see being assholes and at the same time a lot of the times the videos on there are cops being assholes it's like oh they got him and at the end they'll be like officer morris is on permanent suspension and charges are pending and it's like oh okay okay good 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 but mm. then some of them it's like that cop just saved like everybody that guy was gonna kill them all like there's there, and then there'll be a cop who like uh he pulls a speeder over and she's got the baby and she's like the baby's dying and the cop saves the baby on the hood of the car like right there in front of you good stuff the dog the, 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 the cop saves the baby yeah he like cpr's the baby back to life Damn. Has, or maybe it had something in his throat it, it, like he like saves the baby good for him they should yeah. they should if they're trying to change perception they need more of those videos i would <laughs> i think they need better uniforms i think that we've that, got that, that's so that's such a good point <laughs> I think they, 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 I, what would their uniforms look like? All right, would, so right now, you, here's the thing: put like, them in sh you, uh, like shorts, like a little less threatening. Ooh, I saw that Reno nine one one fucking yes. Halloween costume. <laughs> Zach Lieutenant <Pumbia>. Dangle, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly like Woody in, the, in his Halloween costume. It it I, like Woody's I'm, fit enough that he shows he's serious, but he also wears wearing short shorts, so you know he likes to hang out and play. <laughs> <laughs> the I duality do. of man, all in one <laughs> outfit. Oh, you shut the uh, fuck I up. can't find <laughs> Google image isn't coming up with it. Oh, Zach may have found it. Yeah, that's yeah, there we go. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now, <laughs> Woody's thighs filled those out much more impressively <laughs> than this loser's. I will I'm so add. confused why you've neither found a picture of Woody in the costume nor the character who wore it himself for many years. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> though, the, you found the, a third party wearing a costume. Look at look at the boots. I love that. The boots, are <laughs> yeah, the boots are pretty great. The boots are pretty nice. I mean, I, what would your idea for new cop uniforms be? I think shorts would I'm, like make things seem a little lighter. No way. See, I was going more hardcore. I was going like Judge Dredd with it. I want helmets. Oh, I was thinking making them like friendlier. <laughs> no, you got to go the other way. You got to go the other way. Oh, you know, I don't you think people, people are going to like did, that. Because I feel, I feel like, like cops are power tripping enough. Like if they're showing up in helmets and shit, oh, I can't see, even imagine. Oh, I was just thinking. How about that, like, all I, cops have to wear assless chaps? That'll weed out a lot of people who don't want to be laughed at as silly. And really I think make that sure. when you see it, and it'll make sure they're fit. I think this will strike, you know, terror into the hearts of of would be criminals when they see like a bunch of Judge Dredd, Judge Dredd's walking <laughs> around. Just give them some of those cool motorcycles too. Why not? Like 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 the whole thing, make them frown. True. Maybe we should like if they brought back like public executions just for like serial killers, just to put the fear of God in people. You think that would help? I don't think so. I, I think that I, I don't think so because everybody knows that you die if you do that stuff. Like most of the time, anyway. Like if you there's a lot, a lot of those like school shooters and stuff. They they're going in there to die, right? I don't think public executions are going to solve anything. Although I, I do want them. I've talked how many years have I been <laughs> wanting that Running Man scenario where we just throw them into like a you know some sort of a game show that we all watch. No, no, we crucify them from Boston to New York. That's warning, like the Roman Empire. Do you remember when they used to, not well you obviously don't remember nor do I but they used to do that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I yeah, remember. back in the day we used to get a little wild. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bet I bet that I bet criminals had a lot to think about and smell like on that road. So, you do that with serial killer? Do we I don't think we have enough serial killers for that. Wasn't that I don't think it's that big Spartacus? of a game. Are you talking about the movie Spartacus? I may uh, that did happen though. I think I think that's historically accurate. To it some. is. And, there there right? were three it's... slave revolts, and in each of the, the second slave revolt was the Spartacus one. I think it did was they the, do the, the bit with the? I, I I'm doubtful about that. They did that crucify they... them. Uh, yeah, they crucified them all. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they cru they did crucify them up and down the road as like a warning to to other like slaves who wanted to get out and 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 try their luck. Yeah, yeah. None of the slave revolts did did too well in the end. <laughs> but the you wouldn't know that by the shows. Like in the shows, it's like, oh man, like they're kind of valiantly losing, but no, <laughs> they were they were tortured severely. Why did they lose? Like you would think that a bunch of gladiators would be pretty effective at. Rebellion. Uh, they're they just like, well, the the Rome was so vast and so enormous, and Rome, like part of Rome's power was the permanent standing army. That also meant that they were very well trained and and very segmented, and so when they they could go into towns and ransack them for resources. And that's what they did. They kind of were acted as raiders. And mm -hmm. then, like once the Roman legions got there, they they crushed them. They 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 met in battle a few times, and they didn't do well. And then in the end, I think they they lost like everything. So, mm. but hey, in the end, 
who's remembered? The Spartacus. Gladiators. Yeah, for losing. Russell Crowe. <laughs> Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Oh, I, I was doing the TV series. What is the TV series? It's Spartacus. 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 Yeah, that was yeah. that was a wonderful series until the main guy died of cancer. What was that disease he had? Was it? Oh, I thought he had cancer. I thought he had cancer too. You don't? Yeah, think but it was, it was like a specific kind that's got like a like a. Yeah. It's like one of those three name cancers. Like, like it's one of those <laughs> <laughs> was it like pancreatic? Because pancreatic is nah, the one it, where it's it like might have been like non Hodgkin's lymphoma or something like that. Like like I remember. Is that was, the good Hodgkin's? Um, that's the good one. <laughs> Clearly not. Well, then he's well got the non, non-Hodgkins is the good one. That's my kid's mom had that. And it was like really progressed, but the survival rate was pretty good. So that's the, yeah, I and think Woody and I, Woody and I are we're cancer good. warriors. We're, we're hoping Taylor yeah. joins us soon. Yeah, I've heard you guys are all getting cancer here. I read that on the subreddit. It made me a little yeah. hesitant to a cancel on chairs a few times because I wasn't sure there was some weird shit going on here. But Yeah, it's a little contagious over video. Yeah. Jesus. It's only facial cancer though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who cares? Do you guys want to see an update? My, yeah, uh, your let's see your cancer. Nose. So I don't. It's mostly healing. Okay. There's a little scar. You can kind of see it. It should smooth out and look good. Um, but if you look up close, there's a there's currently a lump where the scar is. But did you have to get like reconstructive surgery or? Mm -mm. It That's was not his called... original nose. That pops <laughs> off. <laughs> it was something called Mo surgery, and it, the audience has heard this too many times. But sure. they test the cancer right there in house yeah i heard that part yeah so that um they can take the smallest margins possible but it was still a pretty big hole in my face like mm -hmm. it was it was not nothing nice uh, i mean not nice i'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad it was nice now. I'm <laughs> Dude, so i have a, i have a little story so, so i'm out riding motorcycles right i'm teaching mm -hmm. jackie to ride a bike and what she she's a she only rides in the neighborhoods like in a subdivision so every so often she'll say hey why don't you go off because I feel a little stifled, like barely exceeding 15 miles an hour and uh, and then come back in five minutes or so. And she gets to be as slow as she wants to without me feeling like, you know, come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. All right. So I zip like five miles down the road, this canoe launch near my house. And uh, there's a guy there. He's a black guy. He has no shirt on. And he is like the perfect specimen. You know, if aliens were to come down and get the perfect human being based on physique alone, they would select this guy. Okay. But he doesn't, he's not doing well. Like, like he's walking along his car, like holding the, the car, supporting himself, like, like it was a big crutch or something. And uh, I see him struggling in the parking lot. And I'm like, do I just ignore this man and, and leave him alone? Which good call kyle <laughs> or <laughs> do i do what i do and offer to lend him a hand because i've been in that situation so many times right it's an outdoor area with like a walking park and a sure. canoe launch and stuff as as a frequent injury i uh as opposed to an injurer a person mm -hmm. who receives injuries all the fucking time injurer yeah <laughs> okay there have been like <laughs> heck the last time i was in colorado I needed to carry like a little 20 pound bag with, you know, toiletries and clothes to my room, but I have a broken leg. And someone is like, can I carry that? It's just 30 feet. It's nothing for them. But for me, I'm hopping around on one foot yeah. painfully off balance, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It was a huge act of kindness for someone to carry my bag just, you know, from the bike to the room. Yeah. And uh, so you I'm see offering this crippled black man looking. I'm offering it. <laughs> looking fucking fit. I can't overstate that this guy looked like he was an NFL wide receiver. All right, so you're at least semi hard, like heading toward him. You're like, I'm gonna have a black friend and semi a workout hard. buddy, <laughs> and a workout buddy, and he's like into outdoorsy stuff. Yeah. Like this might be my black soulmate. So you're bricked up, all uh, of flutter. All right, I'm a little insulted by the semi hard thing. I am a blue chew customer. Okay, <laughs> you're, I am you're rock, diamond, I am rock hard, hard. <laughs> yeah. very vascular. Okay, <laughs> and. uh so anyway, I turn off the bike and I'm like, you know, hey, you all right? You know, do you, do you need a hand or anything? And uh, he looks at me. He's like, yeah, I'm all right. Are you all right? Like uh, aggressively. And I was like, oh, my bad. Like, I, I thought I saw you limping. And he goes, yeah, I'm disabled. And then I realized <laughs> that I look a little closer and his car is in the handicap spot <laughs> that he's using as a crutch to get around. 
And I'm like, the fuck? I gotta get my ass kicked by this fucking person <laughs> not if you're with no legs. Oh. <laughs> and, and well, not no legs, just not. Now we know why his upper body is so yeah. powerful. Yeah. They, I, I think <laughs> maybe he gets around by wheelchair all the time, or I wouldn't be surprised if he had stilts for well, his it's arms. It's not a hobby. And just fucking, you know, got around like <laughs> what that. Is like that. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. And I, that, I like double down on the apology. I'm like. I've disturbed your peace. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Apology. And, uh, yeah. Come on, you're in the right here. You were you trying think? to be. You, you were this, trying to be this helpful. Uppity, yeah. crippled fella in a parking <laughs> oh, lot Christ. who doesn't know how to accept a little. He should have been like, "Yes, friend, I'm doing great. Having a hard time getting around since the war. You know how it is. Like, like fucking hit it back, dude. <laughs> he could have. You're in the I, right I, here, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my heart was in the right place. <laughs> It turned out maybe I should have left this guy alone. <laughs> Do you but, think you could have uh, taken him? I think so. Yeah. I, th I don't know. I don't know. I, so here's the thing. I have a bad leg too. I'm still not 100% on the broken leg. So the advantage I'd normally have, like being able to wrestle him and push him to where I wanted to go might be somewhat like Taylor. You yeah, know. but he can barely stand. Mm -hmm. So let's just say we're even now. Well, if we're gonna if he, even on the legs, he's kicking my ass oh. in the upper body. I need a leg advantage. You can't to, let him to bring you to the ground. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's his Taylor, domain. You've seen enough hockey fights to know that <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Four different. <laughs> this is Dude, the this guy. guy. You have, this you is have the guy be, you asked. Have, have no? Have you guys seen the video of this guy like wrestling? Yes, it's the not thing fair. Is, he they wrestles like him out. skinny little white guys because they're in his weight class. Mm -hmm. He's he beats the shit out of people. <laughs> it's it's so great because he's got no weight in his lower body, and so he gets a hold of him, and it's like me grabbing a small dog's paw. I can do whatever <laughs> I want with it. Like he, it, it's incredible. It's wild. Yeah. It looks, you know, it's a shame, but when you see people dealt that hand, it's it's whenever good to I, see him like play I, it the best I can. So whenever I see someone built like that. I really wonder what that undercarriage looks like. You know, is mm. it just like, is it like on Rick and Morty when he was going to donate his penis and they were like, yeah, we'll just have a loose tube of urethra just hanging here. Or does he have like a dick and balls down there that he has to like put in some sort of supportive thing so that he can hop around and like, not, like he's he bouncing on his balls all the, the time. Button. I, I wonder how he, it looks like he's cut off like right at the bottom of his nipples, like right here. Like, like, like he's so little. I can you bring think... him back Zach? Yeah. I, I... I think if you see another video of him, like he looks shorter in that picture. Like mm -hmm. I think maybe I'm like he's that. cut off before the cum gutters, right? The Adonis lines. Like, 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 like where is his dick? I want an and the butthole. I need to see his butthole too. I need to see that man nude. I need I mean, to know clearly. what's going on under there. Because it looks like okay. Oh. And the, well, it's all draping in the in the picture on the right. I can't tell what's up. There. I yeah, I mean, it looks like he could do a one arm pull. He's up. like a magician trying to pull a lady out of there or something. I, <laughs> he's not fooling me. Anything could be in there. Well, look Jeez. at the look at look at the pants. See, they're like kind of around his waist, and it looks like there's more underneath that. I'd it looks like there's something left left picture left of the picture. What is that filling space under the skirt? That's his dick, Woody. Jesus. Oh. Oh, now I need to see it. <laughs> fucking hog. Now I really I want to see it. No, I, I see what you're talking about, and I'm curious. I'm so curious about. He was born this way, huh? Oh, mm -hmm. and his belly button exists. His belly button on the does right. Exist. I see it. Yeah, you, yeah he, doesn't he it was, have to? Don't you kind of need one of those? Born. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's got a he's got a well, belly button in every. Right, yeah, he's yeah. not Kyle X Y. Remember that? Show? <laughs> I do remember that show, vaguely. Um, so I. I this he wrestles at 106 pounds, so he's oh, he okay. That's so kind of strong, thrashing dude. people, dude. I wonder what he benches. How good is he? Like, his legs are useful too, and certainly leverage is useful. Like, yeah, but imagine all this. the muscle you could build on your like. What do the other hundred pound kids look like that this dude exactly, <laughs> is exactly. destroying? You can see also how many of your wrestling moves no longer work now because how much of your grappling relies on being able to like use their legs and shit. Their You're hips. right because I was point. looking at it on from the other direction, which is how many of his wrestling moves don't work because it, you know, there's just a lot you well, can. All do of his wrestling moves work because he probably doesn't learn to do very many with his legs. <laughs> I <laughs> would imagine. That's how many, right. he's been training how many his whole options life are this. closed off to him? I'm trying to say. You're never gonna yeah. double leg that guy. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> His workout yeah. is P P P P P. Would you want to be a, push, like? Pull, would, push, would, pull. would you want to be alive if you, you know, were were in that situation? There goes my light. You fucking dog. You fucking dog. <laughs> <laughs> what did the dog do? He knocked the light over. 
He's been over there playing this <laughs> whole dog? time. The little one. His brand new dog that he got. Oh, uh, Toby. No, if they, I were born like this, I would hope that I would like do something like this and be like, all right, this is the hand I was dealt. What's the best possible thing I can do? Like all right, up, wrestling. Small beat people. beat the shit out of people in my weight class. Like wait, it, hold on. Is your background a green screen? Yes. Mine? Yeah. Yeah. Why the fuck do you green screen sound foam padding? <laughs> because uh Kyle took a bunch of time like a year ago to make a white or a red and black foam pad behind him. And then I just put one up as a joke. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> and I I'm and sorry. I haven't I haven't anyway, changed okay, yeah. since then. Sorry, if you were the wrestler guy, you would hope. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, wouldn't you? <laughs> like I like I, you wouldn't just want to like kill yourself. Like you'd want to see what you could do, right? I like, think no like one, a... your expectations. People's expectations for you are so low. Like when you excel and like actually get to be like dominant in something like this guy. It's wild. Humans get used to stuff like surprisingly fast. Like, even if you lose, like, senses or if you lose, like, a leg or whatever, um, I, I think, like, pretty quickly people acclimate. Um, I, I think as, like, healthy people, you see somebody crippled and you might think, like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, like, every single day you must hate your life for using a wheelchair. But I think people get used to it pretty quickly. Like, even, I think that there's even a high quality of life reported with people with shut-in syndrome, which are the people that literally can only move their eyes. So I imagine if those people report doing decently, then, I mean, everybody else is doing okay as well. Oh, my you God. Know, except for people with, like... Really big, like chronic pain. That'll be the thing that'll fuck you Do up. Do you know what happens if that person doesn't blink five times for five? <laughs> hey, hey, Billy, it's time. They want to know how you're enjoying your care. Five blinks is five stars. Go ahead into the iPad. Go ahead, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to blink once? He's not going to be alive when they get there. Yeah, it'd be like, all right, <laughs> do, are you hungry? Blink once for yes or twice for no. And they blink and you just wait. <laughs> he's just like, oh, still not hungry. <laughs> like he's just always watery, trying to not. <laughs> oh, somebody's peckish. <laughs> that would be a horrible reality. Yeah, they need. Oh, I, I, I could totally understand like having a good quality of life without the use of your legs. But I didn't know about shut-in syndrome. That was what mm-hmm. it was called. Just being able to use your eyes. Something that's like, like that, a, yeah. that's such a horrifying prison. Like to tr- Im- imagine that. You have no ability to communicate like you you you're just like a piece of furniture like that would fucking suck and you yeah. couldn't even do anything you yeah. like you couldn't even like roll into a pool if you wanted to end it horrible but how yeah, did how are they, how do these people report that they have good lives i I'm genuinely I think they curious. communicate with eye trackers and stuff generally mm. kyle i think you're muted i'm not sure though unless you just mouth the word oh really no, you, I hear you. I'm oh, okay. No, I'm mouthing words to the little dog. I'm like, no, don't chew my cords. No, don't bite <laughs> my see. feet. Your, te- your, your teeth are sharp. <laughs> Which dog I, is it? Is it the new one, Toby? Mm-hmm. We haven't, the audience hasn't seen Toby. Well, he's latched on to my toe right now. I'm dealing with that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll show him when he, when he comes out from under there. Pull your toe up towards you yeah. like a, like you caught him, like you're like, hooking like a fish. Him. He's got yep. those puppy Kyle, teeth, sharp as fuck. You need to hold, pull him up later. Kyle went out and yeah. he bought a neurotypical dog. <laughs> We're developmental peers. His, his previous dog was a little neurotarded. And it, 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 it is like uh, just for for Destiny's benefit. Zach, go ahead and pull up that Down syndrome. Dog. My dog does not have Down syndrome. It Your has dog. Down syndrome. We're He's so far boy. past this. We're so far past this. Everyone this is understands what Malamutes this. Everyone look agrees. like. Pull up a Malamute. Like, that's what they look like. They have that derpy face. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Pull up the you. dog. Destiny will see immediately. Oh. Woody and I caught it instantly when you sent that picture the first time. My uh, wife caught it a, instantly. I showed her the a, photo, and she's like, oh, what's wrong with him? She was like, why are his eyes that far apart? <laughs> <laughs> They're oh, not man. far apart. He's man. a happy boy. He is. He's a happy boy. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> he's look, he looks his head looks a little weird because he's like so underfed there. He's gained like 15 pounds. He's looking good. I yeah. showed him to my wife. Um, Zach, are you able to open that picture? This is who she thought Kyle's dog was related to, I guess. Oh my god. She thought he had that. <laughs> oh, that's me. That's Tell me, me you don't see the red. Like no, my dog's got all its teeth. First of all, it doesn't have like weird little kid from Stranger Things syndrome. Yeah, he does. <laughs> no, I see the resemblance. No. Yeah, he does. Well, that kid's he's... fully tarted. Like, 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 he's all there. I think that's. Uh, 
<laughs> He's all there. <laughs> I can't like believe the, that show's still going. I, I totally lost interest in that shit I, after the first. I, I, I heard it gets better after. How? No, oh, maybe. Two. It was fine in season one. My wife and I are watching good. it. We just finished. We're in the first episode of season four, which is the current one. And uh, I was pretty invested. Like it, I was out. Uh, Jackie and I went out in the town last night, and I was so excited to get home and watch the season finale of Stranger <laughs> Things three. It was a blast. We went axe throwing. I'd never nice. been axe throwing before. Like she was all gussied up in this nice dress and like you know sexy shoes and everything. So she had to wear the axe throwing Crocs, like because you couldn't wear open toed shoes to axe throw. Of course, and. Uh, I was half decent at it. Like I would say that I stuck the axe for points three times out of four. Uh, nice. It was easier than I thought it was, and uh, even Jackie by the end of it was like half the time. You know, so it's it's pretty fun. I've only done that a couple. T- it's like something I've only done when I've seen it at a bar, where it's like we're a bar and we have axe throwing, and it's like when did this become a thing? But okay, I'll try yeah. it. And like, it's not like you see people there just like hucking it. It's just you just want you. It's about one rotation. You just want to do one full rotation. That's and what it is with everything. Stick every time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I've never thrown knives, but I assume it's the same thing, right? Just That's one full how rotation. I, did it. I didn't really do any training or anything. I just I, I I found a hand motion that worked, and then I put myself the position from the target in which that worked. Because I'm making a video. I'm not learning to throw knives. <laughs> this place had um, it was like the regulation distance there was lines on the ground you know like bowling almost like you're not allowed to cross this line and you are allowed to cross it by the way you just have to have one foot on it the other foot goes like steps in front of it that might be how baseball works i'm not sure and uh yeah so you just keep one foot on the line throw the other i did better with the double overhand throw i think I was watching on TV the competitions that they had, like, I guess, inspirational axe throwing competitions on, like all these TVs around the place. And those guys were doing weird things, like one arm behind their back, single hand throws, like they're making it harder. I suspect Mm. if somebody good was doing what I did, they just hit all bullseyes. Yeah. What would actually make it difficult, like if you were going to have challenging competitive axe throwing, Mm. you would need targets of unknown distance um, and um, like they do with archery because... They have uh, these mm-hmm. 3D archery tournaments, and you you go to a station, just like golf, and down there is like a a, uh, a a turkey target. You don't know how far away it is. You've never even seen that target before. You might know, not know how big it is. You've just got to mm-hmm. be like, it's like 33 yards? And you've got, you're like a 30-yard pin, and you hold it a little bit high, and you shoot and adjust, and you know they score you. That seems like a ton of fun. Like, yeah. I wouldn't want to go to be scored harshly the same way. I don't want to go play golf and be scored harshly. But to go and, like, just play for fun, I would enjoy that. Golf, if, golf you is want to so play golf without keeping hard. score? No. I was, like, have you ever done a scramble in golf? Do you know what that is? I've never golfed. So a, a, so a scramble in golf is, like, you have, let's say, 12 people are going. There's three foursomes. And you just play from wherever the best person's shot is. And so it's not every person playing through. Everybody hits, but then you just oh. then you'll play from. Oh, Kyle got the best hit on the fairway, so we're all gonna play from Kyle's. Oh, Taylor got the best chip from Kyle's position onto the green. We're all gonna play from Taylor's. Like, and you do it that way, so it feels more like team oriented, mm. and that's much more comfortable for someone like me who's an absolute anchor. Yeah, in any golf situation, it is. It is like I for people who haven't driven. golfed, like it is so the difference between how hard you think it is watching it and how hard it is to actually do is an immense chasm. It is so fucking hard to make the ball go where you want it to. I never, I've never played golf, but I've hit a lot of balls with a lot of different clubs, not knowing what I was doing. And uh, I think, I think the the thing that we, we figured out was to stop trying to hit it hard. Like the, the mm. clubs are so good and the balls are so good that just making good contact and kind of driving it where you want is so much more important than hitting it hard. For sure. But at the Every same time, time I, tried I don't to hit really it hard, have much would, fun playing. Yeah, I haven't. I, I we used to we used to drive a lot of balls for sure. That was fun because we could just go down to the state park and I, I don't remember what a bucket of balls was, but it was five dollars or something like that. And it's a lot of fun. Go to the uh, pawn shop and buy some big goofy ass driver that we could barely use. It's fun. Break it, <laughs> doing your happy Gilmore swings. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, we didn't. Whenever we'd get into something like that, we wouldn't just buy one. Dad was Dad's always been smart with that stuff. It's like it's like ah, don't buy one. We're gonna break that one right away. We'll need five. We'll need five drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my 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 dad was very into golf 
still is. And I remember when I was like 10 or something, he was like all about like, you're going to go to this golf, like training day or something. And you're going to learn how to play like the basics and everything. And it was like a summer long thing where I had to go like every week and do it. And I fucking hated it, hated golf. But I remember the only highlight of the whole summer of doing that once a week was we went out and I got paired in this foursome with this really annoying kid, a few years younger than me, maybe like seven, eight years old. And he was talking up his new driver that his grandma bought him for Christmas or something like last year, the entire time. Like he was all about it. He got a couple of good hits on it. And there was one final like hole that had was pretty long and he was like seven or eight. And so he didn't couldn't actually drive it very far. And so he was like, watch this. And he like went back as though he was going to do the happy Gilmore thing with his club. And he ran towards it and did it, except he hit the ground like a foot mm-hmm. before where the ball was. And the club head shattered off and went ding, 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 and just went down there. And he like had a mini shit fit panic attack. Like, my dad, you can't tell my dad. You can't tell my dad that I broke it. Just say, oh, just say. And it's like, first, like, why do you think I'm going to talk to your dad? I'm another kid. <laughs> and it's like, you, what's like say, say that it broke just normally. Just say I hit it normally. And it's like, what's it's like, the most you're going to be the one to lie to your dad, man. What's the most expensive thing you ever broke in your parents' household growing up? And damage being done counts. Like if you like burnt down a garden shed, same shit. Hmm. Never burned anything down. Uh, I sent my brother to the hospital a couple times on accident, and I'm sure that wasn't cheap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so I guess whatever it costs to get a kid checked out for a concussion twice. I drove a... <laughs> I wrecked an, a- I wrecked an ATV. I wrecked an ATV right right into the rear fender of of my dad's like new truck when I was like fourteen or fifteen or something like that, and like ruined the quarter panel, like crumpled it up, hit it so goddamn hard. Um, I also totaled my mother's car by backing into it with another car because um, I, I didn't know that it was in the but parked behind me. I was in an SUV backing up. And her car was parked behind me. It was this low to the ground Chrysler thing. And I hit the front, popped the airbags. That totals it. Um, luckily, they were on the trip to buy her new car. Like when they came back, she's got a brand new car. And I'm like, that's a good, great that you've got that because <laughs> whoop, your old it. one, I ruined it. Um, so, so that was that happened. I don't think I ever, that's probably it. Those are probably the two mo- more uh, expensive things I ever did. I flipped an ATV a couple times, but never did any more damage than like shattering the windscreen like that and like m- messing with the alignment, but never actually broke one. So I guess I was pretty cheap, pretty well. Yeah, I think I was pretty cheap, too. I-, I can't think of anything I did that. That cost them a ton. I, I played not. video games all day. Yeah, I don't think I ever broke anything or would have been the kind of person to break anything. Hmm. I broke some windows. Oh, yeah, I shot the window out of my dad's truck um shot it yeah i was like four <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that makes it way better okay <laughs> ah it's a bb gun bb gun oh okay <laughs> so you just fired a bb gun shattered it yeah the side window he was uh under the hood working on it and i and i shot the side window out <laughs> Did he, was he upset with you ah he chased me and i hit under the bed he couldn't get me under there he had this uh he had this big water bed um and like under like under the headboard was a little crawl space type area, and four year old me was like in there, and he's on the other side, like something out of Lord of the Rings. Come out of there! <laughs> I was like, nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, overall, not too expensive. I don't think. I I bet I'm missing something like huge. I'm forgetting about. Oh, what about your? You didn't have any like big medical stuff happen to you growing up? Because I had a bunch of stitches. Uh... I broke my nose a couple times. Maybe on a bunch, but five, Th- that's four, the five only times. bone I've ever broken. I broke my nose twice, and that's that's all I've ever. I didn't really have to go to the hospital much. I didn't need stitches till I stabbed myself on accident a few months ago. So mm. I've been. I mean, and that was on me. My my dad didn't pay for that. That was on that UPS driver. That was on the UPS yeah. driver. That yeah. that was a hundred percent on the UPS driver. You know what Had those I, guys get paid? Guess what a UPS driver makes a year? Ninety. It's over six it's, figures, I'm told. Like, like, like yeah. they're saying those guys make like forty an hour or something like that, and then like, like, like that's where they start. And really? then there's all sorts of like overtime and double time and nonsense. It's rough conditions the way I, I saw it, but they, it seemed like they were starting out at forty. He said that says fifty seven, but I don't. That's not the experience that the, that like I'm hearing from like actual UPS. Well, this guy was not making a hundred because he didn't know how to use a pallet jack. <sighs> or maybe. 
He's yeah, it does, those things aren't related. I mean, maybe he's pretending I mean, like he doesn't know like, how to operate a pallet jack. I feel jack like because... I, I earned more than 100, and I can't operate a pallet jack. So, Oh, that's true. <laughs> oh, we, we can all operate a pallet jack. You put I, it under I, the slots, <laughs> and then you and then you go like this. I said and I could pick it. it up, but... <laughs> no. That's, uh, that, that might be on my new list of like uh, 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 jobs for young, for young people to do. I think if you're starting out, that, that one's UPS. Seems yeah, maybe. The cool thing about if, if, if what if what those people on TikTok are saying is true, unless I was There's no like way TikTok. those guys are making are starting out making six figures. I don't believe it. No shot. I don't believe they're starting at six figures. But here's the thing TikTok about TikTok lied to me. They <laughs> UPS like famously promotes from within. So like with all the top brass at UPS, all the management staff, it's quite likely that most or all of them either drove a truck or loaded a truck or mm-hmm. started in a shipping bay somewhere. Mm-hmm. It, like it's different if you're in accounting or like, you know, you're pretty badass, but, or if you're in it or something like that. But if, uh, if you're in like the management of running the business, then you started by putting boxes on a truck at UPS. So it, it's a, uh, it's a neat job if you, whatever I mean, maybe get a good head on your shoulders but you didn't and go to college pretty, you're, you're getting a lot of exercise like even the drivers i've seen that are fat they're <laughs> like a like a powerful fat like yeah. a like, farmer like fat. they're moving around football a lot. player uh-huh. yeah like a football player like an yeah. o-line fat where it's like not the kind of guy you'd see at buffalo wild wings and go what a lard you'd go good god like oh i also saw eats another and lifts a lot on the anti-work subreddit i saw a picture of uh subreddit from, it was one of those delivery drivers, like I don't know which one, but he was showing like what he had to deliver in a a, a load or whatever, and it's mostly fucking Amazon plasma TVs or whatever in there. Like, like the big, you know how cheap they are now, and it's mm. like, okay, you get like a fifty-five inch TV for I don't know three hundred dollars. So everything bigger than that is only a little more expensive. So everybody's like. I want a 75 inch TV. So, but these guys are having to deliver 75 inch TVs left and right. He just had so many gigantic, oversized boxes, basically, whether it was TVs or not. But I think that's a big part of it. Mm-hmm. TVs are the, it's like 55 inch TV, slightly more than free. 65 inch TV, barely more than that. And then somewhere like 75 is cool. 78, the fuck? We're tripling like, the price. Like 82, yeah. it's around 82 or 84 is when they go to go crazy on you. And yeah. You stay right below the crazy zone. I don't know. Like, 8K is right around the corner. Like, like I thought 8K was going to be bullshit. I was like, the fact that y'all are talking about 8K is just a publicity stunt for maybe, like, I don't know, NVIDIA or whoever makes GPUs to be like, yeah, we we can do it. But then I keep <laughs> seeing, like, I don't know, game demos and uh, and uh, people, like, with 8K content. And I'm like, are, are people watching this? You're uploading it. It so wouldn't surprise me if, like, over 50% of gamers were still using, like, 60 frames per second 1080p monitor. Yeah. Yeah, that's what... Taylor here does, because he likes Are you on infuriating me. Taylor? Mm, I don't know. I don't think. No, this one I'm on is <laughs> this one. Yes. Right That's the first. The answer one's fourteen. I don't even I know my resolution I, or frame I, rate. <laughs> I, I I don't care. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I all my all my monitors say Asus. That's what I looked for. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, uh, they, I can see it just fine. I don't think my eyes can see in 4K. I have very bad eyes. I think I can get up to like 1440. I don't. So, so I actually made a comparable works. argument for 8K. Like 1080p to 4K, there is an improvement. It does look a little better. Um, of course, really good 1080p might look better than Netflix 4K. Like we, we all know it's bit rate to a large extent. But 8K, like am I an old man shouting at clouds being like, that's more Ks than you need? <laughs> yeah. I think that I think the 8K would uh, might come into play with really big displays. Yeah, okay. it's going to help you with the size of your displays and the distance from you and everything. It's going to be the big factor in there. Yeah, yeah you, if, if you have one of those, um, I would want an 8K projector 100%, like these 100, 100 plus mm-hmm. inch screens. Like, yeah, my 8K might work. Um, or it, I mean, it would work. It would, you would have a noticeable difference with AK. We definitely need an AK projector for my wife to watch Star Trek from the nineties on. <laughs> Dude, uh, we, I, she and I are probably have the same fucking viewing list. I, 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 love that stuff <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot in common. Yeah. Yeah. We were, we were having fun with a Seinfeld trivia. I think Star Trek would be my, my wheelhouse though. I think I could do TNG, um, like trivia and like go to a bar night and fucking clean up. I've I've seen that so many times. Like I, I've lost count. Like like just I keep it playing in the background, and I pay hmm. some attention. I'll be like Dr. Pulaski. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you could do the office really well. 
you you should find, and I guarantee that's a bigger like seller to getting like the women at the bar for a bar night trivia or Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Trek, I'm sure is is still big. It's just always big. it's a thing. Yeah, my wife but, likes to watch shows she's seen before because she doesn't. She's not sitting there watching the show. She's whatever milling around the house, doing mm-hmm. something, passing in and out of the room. And with that, if you've seen it before, it's no big deal. Same. I like that's I like Twitch idea. for that a lot. Um, I, uh, Twitch is really good about that because you know it's kind of happening now and it's not all that important depending on who you're watching. No offense. Yeah. <laughs> I think for a lot of streams, I think people not have you, that. Destiny. Like, you're like, not you, Destiny. I mean, important. I'll sit down and get my fucking cup of coffee if I'm watching you. <laughs> but I think for a lot of people that stream a lot, a lot of the viewers are like, they have you on in the back while they're, they're either like at work or they're working on something else in the house or whatever. Yeah, it's pretty normal. Yeah. yeah. That's, how, that's how I use TV. You, that's why I have King of the Hill running all the time. Yeah. Are you really yeah. streaming 10 hours a day, Destiny? Uh, I've been working on another project recently, but yeah, my goal is usually from, it's usually from noon to 10. It's the goal every day. And you're still getting in the gym and everything with those, with that. Um, as long as I don't have anything else in the background going on, yeah. Because um, I usually nice. go to the gym after, so ten thirty to twelve thirty at night. At night, night. Yeah. damn, good yeah. for you, man. I have an apartment gym, so I don't like to go. The number one, hold on, whoa, sorry, I almost got sucked into gym talk. One quick comment I'll say, and this is probably true of everything. I if I have to go somewhere and there's. Actually, you know what? I don't know if the whole internet has poisoned my mind for anything. It's true of the gym. It's true of other things. If I have to go to the gym and I have to wait for anything, I just lose my fucking mind. If I go to the gym and there's like two or three people, like in because the apartment gym has one rack, um, I like and I have to stand there or like do something else. Like it just it fucks with me and I get irritated and then I'm wasting time like just standing around doing things. Sure. But I feel that for everything nowadays. Like I, there's even sometimes where like I could drive to Best Buy and get something, but like if there's like a line, all I'm thinking is like, why don't I just Amazon next day this? Like, or if I've got to go to the bank. I'm like, I should just use my fucking mobile app on this. Why the fuck am I like? I feel like going out anywhere now, like my mind is fucked because I feel like if I drive, if I leave the house in my car to go run an errand, I'm gonna be gone for four fucking hours, no matter what it is. It drives me insane. You but would I don't know if- hate working out with me. I'm thinking about it. Like, <clears throat> like Woody, come on, go. Like, no, I feel like shit today. But I don't want to admit that I'm weaker than last time, so we're doing five minutes between sets. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mind oh, resting between right. sets, especially if you're doing if you're doing like a lot of like big things, like like if you're doing big squats, big deadlifts, big sets, and you're waiting like five minutes between sets. That's fine. I just don't. If resting is a thing you're doing, sitting there waiting for a thing to open up is you're not even resting. You're just wasting time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. Yeah. That's the thing that yeah. drives me crazy. Yeah. I was watching Israel Adesanya's workout, uh, and it was weird. It was a lot of isometric stuff, a lot of hopping around on one foot, literally. But then mm. um, he was doing these um, with his weightlifting. He was putting, I don't know, with li- with lightweight. He was putting tension on his muscles and then holding like like positions mm. for long periods mm. of time, like like loading his muscles up before he began his workout. They had him hugging this uh, this this bag as hard as he could, like counting down a timer, and he's just like burning out his abs and arms and everything. And then they had him doing bench press with maybe just the bar. Just like holding at like that midpoint where it where it's at its hardest, mm-hmm. just holding for a long time. And then they had him do like a deadlift type thing. I think they called it a rack lift though, because he hooked the bar underneath the rack so that there's no he can't pull anything. He's lifting a million oh. pounds. You mm-hmm. know, he's just he's just loading up and putting everything under like as much tension as feel as feels good. I don't say, know. I'm under if tension. The right? Exercise depends mm-hmm. on me trying hard like where there's a possibility to cheat i don't like it as much you know like like i want to talk about cheating for example okay for example like uh heavy bag hugs if that was a thing like who's to make sure i'm really hugging as hard as i can you know i i need to be doing like dumbbell overhead presses or bench press or pull-ups or something where there's no getting around the effort Mm -hmm. i was talking to a youtuber who's um he's gonna do one of those youtube fights and the guy that he's got to fight, <clears throat> he, he knows who it is. Now this is like public or anything yet, but the guys he's he's got to fight is, I'll call him a professional athlete who's middle aged and clearly on juice, and hmm. like, and it's like, dude, you're fighting. I don't like like his. This sport doesn't of seem cho- safe. His sport of choice doesn't really lean toward boxing necessarily, though it is a. Rough this is sport. your guy. My guy's a YouTuber. <laughs> Your guy's a YouTuber. The pro is a professional athlete who's not really uh Yeah, he's over the hill, but but like basketball ripped, a ripped up like dude, that. like like abs and pecs and like could be on like the cover of a fitness magazine looking motherfucker, like scary. Good gosh. Larry. Was he disabled? I might know him. No, no. <laughs> um, and I was but I was telling my guy, I was like, dude, 
that guy you're fighting is on so many steroids. Why don't you get on steroids? Uh, uh, you are the, the model for performance enhancing drugs. There's no laws against it or rules against it in what you're doing. You're doing mm -hmm. this YouTube boxing and your opponent is clearly juiced to the gills. There's no like feeling bad. Right. I was at the very least get Just on something that's going to give field. you more cardio, right? If you could have 20% better cardio than you were already going to have from a, from a syringe, like why not? Like that guy is juiced. Like, like I'm telling you, if you look at this guy, you'd be like, oh no, <laughs> hmm. which one of the 300 was he? It's, it, it, doesn't look good. it doesn't look good, but can but you write in the chat who the person you know is? I will write you on WhatsApp and tell you. Okay. Okay. Keeping it tight. Yeah. We... <laughs> tight to the chest. I'm going to say it. Okay. <laughs> 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 no second it comes through firing it's this one. Destiny? Out. Huh. Yep. <laughs> Good luck, bro. <laughs> wow. Oh, Martin Shkreli challenged me to a boxing match after I made fun of him for his uh Bitcoin thing getting stolen or his like crypto shit falling through. <laughs> Did he really <laughs> Did he he? challenge you? Well, no, he, he just said if he saw me in real life, he'd I think he said he'd beat the shit out of me or something. So. Oh, I've been told that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By by Martin Shkreli? This guy's making a lot of enemies. <laughs> yeah, he is, yeah. No, I, I, he's out of jail now, so I guess he can fight people in public. <laughs> I don't think he'd want to do that, but no. But what no, was he, it, he? He got like he marked up a drug real expensive, and then they, like they said he was embezzling money from. I don't even remember. I, I think basically too. the charge was that he ran a hedge fund for people, and I think he was taking money out of other businesses to guarantee good returns for people that were investing as hedge fund, which is type of securities fraud. I think so. I think I don't uh, well, it sounds yeah. like he's just trying to do the right thing. Sounds like a smart guy making money. <laughs> I mean, if you're in the hedge fund, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you Posse schemes are really good for the first few people to get involved. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, <laughs> it's a Ponzi scheme. Get it on the ground floor. Get it on the ground floor. That is true. Yeah, <laughs> I've always wondered advice. actually if you could advertise like a scam coin where you're like very blatant, like this is a scam coin, and there will be a rug pull, <laughs> but I'm not going to say when. And like, if you're an early adopter, like you could be one of the people to cash out early, and you get a lot of people in or whatever, and then everybody's kind of like chasing the high and until it collapses like it'd be pretty funny in my head that's like what people is that not what cx coins were from the start yeah like, but they weren't explicit about it <laughs> they didn't say but, they were going to do a rug pull. did anyone think it was going to be a valuable coin you could stick in for the long haul it's dude if you if you excited. read if you, if you like search out crypto people and like read some of them they'll be like uh doge doge x is the currency of the future and here's what and it's like you're a liar like, like, like this is obviously not true uh monero or whatever the fuck or like some random crypto like that's not like it's I, it's just pump and dump people it seems like so mm -hmm. like cx ran a lot of them. streams or this is ice beside he would run streams and he would do like pump and dumps on stream and be like all right you know we're gonna get on this and we need to get out and we're gonna see how much money we can make it would be entertaining it's good content so after run it, uh, this again, Woody telling a story is about 80% accurate. Um, so after like nine months of doing pump and dumps of like, all right, guys, let's all invest in this thing and get out. Uh, he decided to make his own coin and then did it. And everyone's like, what? How could you? Like, how? How are you shocked? <laughs> is, it's not exactly. Have you not been watching? This yeah, is like, insane. Kind of spelled and he's it out. Like, and his defense was like, these were all sophisticated investors. They knew the risks. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a hilarious defense. There's no way I could fool these geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> these high IQ individuals bought this no full well knowing the, the risk. Yeah, I feel like like that's a between the lines. If you're reading in between the lines, he's not saying they're all of sophisticated investors he's like yeah. we all pump and dump and scam that's yeah. what we do around here these guys knew the score how can they be surprised are uh -huh. nfts still a thing i haven't seen shit about those in a while did they fall away did everybody who who got the scammed? Guy? was got it scammed? doug polk who we had on the yeah. show yeah, who's like he's like yeah have you guys heard of nfts and we're like uh what's an nft and like was, and he's like oh my god they are dominating my like you know we're all the middle of our own universe like they're dominating mm -hmm. his universe and you know he's like you got you guys gotta get in on nfts he's like i want to come back on this show in a year and you're gonna see how you should have gotten into bitcoin and you should have gotten into nfts we have to quick get him on the show before that shit bounces back <laughs> <laughs> he is waiting on that the stuff to swing back the other way before he's ever gonna talk to us again maybe um and, and look look like i i think bitcoin Bitcoin's gonna gonna rebound just fine. 
eventually. Oh wow, it's it's down to nineteen thousand. I had no idea Bitcoin was so low. It, for, yeah, um, I get email. I, I I get an email every day, and it's like Bitcoin's up or down, like percentage. And mm-hmm. uh, and every day it seems like down six percent, down six percent. Like fuck, like like yeah, they have more down days than than up days. It feels like, or maybe I don't know. I get you that know, email like, every day. It's it's apparently part of Bitcoin culture that you don't tell people how many coins you have, you know. And and I have friends who are <laughs> <What>? <laughs> fags, fags, right? And I'm with you. I'm with you. It's just fucking cocksuckers. I want to know how much money you have. <laughs> it's because these guys. It's because all these guys are fucking, dude. I get so irritated that like there are so many self-made millionaires on the internet that are like giving business advice and they think they're hot shit because they got lucky out of some dog shit fucking random coin that they happen to fucking buy and sell. And mm-hmm. now they make all their money just like selling self-help shit or selling business advice even though these motherfuckers don't know anything. And they all give dog shit advice when it comes to running businesses or getting rich too. Like they're all talking about like, you know, find the right coin to invest in or like do like these the weird, like I hear like drop shipping is brought up a lot and all this shit. It's like, this is how you get rich, guys. So I was like, bro, shut the fuck up. Like, you don't know any. You got lucky. Shut the fuck up. Like, take your money and get the fuck out of here. Like, nobody needs to listen to anything you have to say about literally anything. You have I want to hear someone to add. give advice on how they got rich. Like, all right, all right, all right. Listen to me. Hear me out. Choose your parents very carefully. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, want, you want to find a doctor, an attorney, an accountant, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Or like if they were honest, they'd be like, you need to identify something. I used my intellect to identify pee pee poo poo caca coin <laughs> as as the ultimate ride. And it's like, no, you got lucky that pee pee poo poo caca coin like went off on like, you know, poo poo coin. Like there's li- th- how many of those were there? There wasn't there literally a poo coin or a shit. Probably. Shit speaking of all right, speaking of it, good investments and people actually doing that Warren Buffett thing or whatever, where he's just okay. he's like, ah, this is a thing I like. Yeah, I'll invest in it. Do you know that Shaq was trying to get security around? I don't know one of his houses because it's Shaq, and uh, and then Shaq Shaq was like, I told him to put some cameras in there, and he's like, eighty five thousand dollars, and I was like, <laughs> what? So I go to Best Buy, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I see this little camera, you know, this ring doorbell camera, and just go in, you just put it there and it worked. Now I was in China and somebody rung my doorbell and I looked at my phone and I could see that motherfucker at my house and I was in China and I told him what was what and handle that business. And I said, I'm gonna invest in this company. Now, how much did you buy? I don't like talking about that. What happened right after you bought it? The last one, Jeff Bozos, he also found it. And he bought it for $2 billion. <laughs> so it turned out real good for me. <laughs> it's so good. I don't know how much he bought in for. But read like, this. I, Here, I'll read it. Let me interrupt two. you, please. Shaquille O'Neal invested roughly <laughs> $200 million in Ring Doorbell in 2016. He became the main person in the marketing department of Ring Doorbell. But in Jesus. 2018, it was purchased by Google. But Shaq had invested a while ago. So he put $200 million into this before Google bought it. Shaq yeah. saw, he well. saw the potential. He's a businessman. He saw. And, and was, God knows what it. What God knows what like that turn that two hundred million has turned into, right? Because mm-hmm. it's so popular. I think I play a lot. Everybody likes Shaq. The interview was so funny. I think he said something like, "I told him, you gonna pay me money. You are gonna give me. You gonna put me in your commercials, and I'm gonna invest in your company." <laughs> <laughs> it was something like that. It, it, if it wasn't Ring, it was some other like thing he did. Yeah. He looked, you're getting a little about... more green miley as this goes on. <laughs> <laughs> well, so is Shaq. He's getting old. <laughs> Dude, I got a lucky investment once. This is a long time ago. Call it like 22 Take years ago or something hand. like that. <laughs> and uh, we had our first kid, and Jackie's shopping at Children's Place. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this mm-hmm. retail store and mall. Got a pretty good idea what they do there. Yeah, yeah they sell clothes. <laughs> and... Uh, She's like, you know, children's place is by far the best. The clothes prices are nice. Uh, like they, they compete with Baby Gap, for example, whose stock uh, was like so much bigger. It was like 12 times larger or something. But children's place was a way better thing. She liked their clothes. She liked their customer experience, et cetera. She's like, we should check that out as an investment. So I look it over and I, I apply. I have a little bit of finance background for the listeners. And um, I'm like, well, all their financials are really good. Like they didn't have a lot of debt. They had more cash on hand. And then I'm like, this is just a solidly run company. I like it. So we we invested in it. Not a ton, a ton, but I'll break the fucking Bitcoin faggot code and say I put $17,000 <laughs> in it. And uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Doesn't it always sound so much worse when he says <laughs> <laughs> Put a hard T on that thing. When he, says, when he says those things, it's like, 
like, oh, I think he said that to a man in the streets with and then spit on him before. <laughs> so, so anyway, it's seventeen grand. I'm investing in this because I think it's like a really good clothing company where my wife is having a good shopping experience. And I'm like, man, I like the product. I like the financials. I'm in. Anyway, the the stock like goes bonkers. I don't know what it goes up like eight times or something like that. Apparently, they start selling Razor scooters and Razor scooters become the rage. Everyone's buying fucking Razor scooters in like 2002. And uh, I don't know if Children's Place is the exclusive distributor or just their biggest distributor, but everyone's going to this place and buying their damn scooters. And then I got out and we made, I don't know, 60 grand or something like that off of a lucky investment because it wasn't the freaking skirts that I thought I was making money off of. It was the Uh, Razor scooter, which 2002, that sounds about right because I was bananas for them. Yeah, look, you got out right. There at the was point. like a whole like twelve month period. It feels like where those things were the hottest that, fucking though. thing. Fucking you had to have the razor scooter. Come on, they, 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 <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I wonder if I still have oh, it. Wow. I should check it out. They, they like they had to make a check on that. I've got some. They made a rule with razor Actually, scooters and like heels. You couldn't so bring them to they? school. Right, they're back down. I'm sorry, he, Taylor. What were you saying? Oh, I was saying uh, razor scooters. Like the, they were so big in like late grade school that they had to ban them from school. Like no one, same with Heelys, just because like a couple fat kids just biffed it and <laughs> like took a <laughs> header off of the the concrete. No one else can whip around. I'm Heelys were underrated. Heelys. Like they like, p- dude, I've got a. Pair. You see some? I've got a pair. I got size eleven and a half Heelys. The, the, uh, uh, like some of walking around in seemingly normal shoes, and then they glide like they have a superpower, and it's like the fuck. That person thought ahead and wore Heelys here. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that's the coolest person they in this whole way. Dude, I saw yeah. a guy in Heelys at the. I saw I saw an adult in Heelys at the airport once, and I was like, yes, that's, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's that right. guy. Ro- like, throw a fanny pack on that guy, and like he's. Oh, you king. know, he like, needs Heelys and a suitcase with wheels on it. Yeah, like, glide that glide shit away. Too. All right, so those electric suitcases. I saw a drunk black woman in the airport on the internet the other day, and she she she's like making a stink, electric. and they're. Like, and they're like, ma'am, you got to get out of the terminal. And she's like, ah. And then she sat on her suitcase and zipped away. And it was the funniest <laughs> thing I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, she drunk drove her fucking. And they ha- they're chasing her. And I think eventually they have to, like, take her off her, her, her luggage, throw put her in handcuffs, and, like, throw her out of the airport. Because she's like, man, this is a secured area. And then things escalate. You know how it goes. Dude, but if electric is, I love if those. Everybody starts riding electric suitcases around the airport. We're one step closer to that fucking Disney movie where they go to space. Wally. Skip That's that it. one. I skip that. We're one. also really one step though. forward to that other Disney movie where everyone's in <laughs> like fat chairs. So just like That's slowly Wally, right? Am I shook? wrong about that? Oh, That's that also Wally. Wally. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. I guess yeah. I did not know. Well, you're right. Yeah, that's not a great deal. I didn't even know they had electric suitcases that you could ride. Yeah, you could sit on that thing and like zip away. Are they are they meant to be ridden? Yeah, what else would be the purpose to just like autopilot and follow it to your gate? No, like, like you sit on it and you're like, like, like you can control it. They're gone. Like, like, I don't know what they cost. They can't be more than what 300, 400 bucks. Good luggage costs that anyway. Like a a big bag. Make I don't know how. But I feel like that's going to make lines for security. Sh- I don't have good luggage because it gets so beaten up, right? Like, like why would you, if you're going to invest in something, it, it should be something that you have, you know, control over and you can take care of and make it last. Your luggage is the opposite of that. I Every like bag- luggage with plastic sides. Oh yeah, for that yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I've got like- Amazon luggage. It's ugly. It's enormous and it's plastic. Oh, two oh it is like a scooter. That. Oh damn. I like it. She oh, sat so on hers though. Whatever, whatever she, she had, her, she, she just could kind sat of on. She, she she sat down on whatever she had, and I'm not saying is that, that even power. electric though. That's just a oh, scooter. see that's all right. See that's not even electric. Okay, I, I like mean that it. does look fun though. Like you're able to like zip around. Like yeah, exactly. Like, like, can the you fuck? go to the picture with the person? Is it a little girl riding it? It was a little I'm, girl. I'm a little insulted. I'm looking for. An, we need an adult man. I want to. I want to see a grown ass man, and and I want to see him doing like shaka bra. Like, and he needs to be cool when he rides the. Yeah, the, 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 I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put yeah. uh, a hydraulic kit on my luggage. I'll lower it. Yeah, lower <laughs> it. And bounce around. <laughs> yeah, cause a huge Some nice LEDs on it. <laughs> Some nice LEDs. Gonna look like you, a real. You know what the next level is that you never see anybody do. Everybody's got those like uh, lights under their trucks here in Atlanta. 
why does nobody have like a like a fog machine? So when you pull up to a, a red light and stop, like fog starts coming out of the bottom of your that's the next level. Why does nobody do that? That'd be Jesus. so cool. That is kind of cool. People are, it, had. fog isn't this gonna is look wild. Cool. Look at this shit. I mean, there's do no way check, I fit like, on that. Like, like how did she was at the um gate, right? Like right before you step on the plane. So presumably that's her like mobility device, and they're gonna like fold it up and put it away with the wheelchairs. I if this was like a common thing, I could totally see fat Americans falling off this and hurting themselves in airports. Like it would be like a common enough occurrence that there would be like special squads at airports for people falling off their suitcases, and then they would get banned probably one week. They they'd have like sharp turn warnings in the terminal for people not flipping out. Do you ever I don't want to do airports too much. Oh god, I hate airports. Do you ever get people, you know the walkways that move automatically? Yeah. What, why do people walk on those and then they stop? Uh, yeah. I'm not I'm with you. And they, and they stand you. in the middle of it. It's like they all the they crowd the whole time. thing. They crowd the whole thing. And so you're walking, walk, and then you stop because now everybody stopped. And these floors don't move that fast. No. And now you've got the motherfuckers that decided not to get on there. They're just walking past you. Now you stand in there like an asshole. You could mm -hmm. ask the people in front of you to move, but the whole fucking thing is crowded. Oh, I yeah. ask them to move. The, the one exception is if I'm injured. If I'm injured, I'll stand on that thing. Sure. Which is At like least half move to the, the time right. I'm in an airport, it seems. Oh, I get but, I get a little bit of uh, like a super, feeling of superiority being the walker on those next to the lazy standers. Anybody yeah. else where you're like, I've got a gate to get to, miss. I'm not about. I'll do that with uh, you know. with escalators yeah. for especially down ones. Yeah. If you fly down the stairs, you can get down like, tw yeah, 20 times faster. People won't even be halfway down by the time you hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I sometimes like I'll just like see someone who was taking forever on the little path thing and then they go to get on the escalator to to go even slower down that because obviously not going to step down. I'll go on the stairs next to him and hustle. To make sure yeah. I beat them down there. To make sure. Oh, you got to do the real, the real passive aggressive. Pass. When you're coming out of those walkways and somebody was standing the whole time and you walk past them, that's like when you're doing your Olympic power walking, like as quickly as you can to let them know how much they fucked up and held oh, you back. Step up your game. You fly. Run backwards while they're on the fucking thing. <laughs> you oh, think <yeah>. you're? <laughs> that's that's the move. <sighs> Oh yeah, so what are our topics for tonight? <laughs> no, Dude, no, I wanted to eat my that. My bathroom <laughs> remodel is nearly finished. Okay, and it's confused. fucking dope. Oh, you guys uh, are back. Okay. <laughs> oh, did we lose you for a second? Yes. We've been remodeling my bathroom since July, and uh it's the master bath. I don't deserve it. It's so stupid. The shower has 12 fixtures in it. Jesus. 12 shower nice. fixtures. Yeah. I'm Wait, what state do you live in again? North Carolina, it's cheaper okay. here. The uh, the toilet, dude. So when you sit on it, it automatically starts the suction fan, so that no odors escape the toilet. You wouldn't want to smell your own poo. The seat is heated. You don't lift the seat, by the way. You press the button depending on what you want to do, and the seat lifts on its own. Okay. If you approach it at night, the water glows blue. So that like approach it at night. Yes. Yeah. Does and, it turn on like it detects you approaching? And then it turns I, I think when the lid is up, it sh it shines the blue light or like something. Fringe, yeah, I don't yeah. know. But the lid is typically down because it's all mm. automated and everything. You know, it's not like a regular thing where you like you leave the seat in someone's per usually the woman's preferred position. No, fuck that. The whole thing goes down when you leave the room. Um, it has an anus massaging b bidet. Like that's wow. a thing. And by the way, I'm not like pretending it's a massage you hit the massage button it has a fucking clit stimulator there's a picture of a woman sitting on it fuck? yeah and you're like you press the girl button when and yeah i tried it and it, it'll get you off i wasn't <laughs> i'm a fan <laughs> it, it has a um you don't uh you don't first of all you don't need toilet paper and i'm i'm a guy you've heard me on the show before just boast about my anus hygiene mm -hmm. if i say it doesn't need toilet paper it doesn't and and afterwards it blows warm air on your tush to dry it off it takes a minute but if you bring your laptop <laughs> it's fine your laptop <laughs> this is your how you get pink eye <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i'm, I'm on now with this it's hands free well the that's true and dry. the suction fan is keeping all that the, yeah. the, the, okay um how much it, was this toilet? This is a fancy it toilet. It was eleven $1 hundred dollars. The toilet. You've been describing that's the features so much of this toilet for ninety seconds. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, so much. that's an incredible. Right, so, toilet. so for eleven $1 hundred dollars, that's way more affordable than than I than I thought you were going to say. Um, it has a remote control. For like pranks, 
<laughs> like what else are you gonna use that for? I, I You're guess... already sitting there. Why would you need to be remote? I'm with you. I feel that way about sex toys too. Remote controlled sex toys. It's like, oh, are you not with this person? But okay. <laughs> there are um, some though, that's the point. I have the it's so funny. So that one of my home apps, there's only eight of them. One of them is the Love Sense app. You know, it's it, it's literally that, right? You can connect to a vibrator around listen, the listen. If your partner's remote, I'm on board with the remote thing, but that's just not my life. So like Sex toys that come with remotes seem needlessly complicated to me. You'd be flying while operating a toy. I'm <laughs> just extra, saying. What do I get out of it? Layer of failure, potentially. The, uh, <laughs> Fair enough. Um, anyway, my new bathroom is pretty dope. Uh, I, I don't know. Can you imagine, Taylor, a <laughs> toilet that had like a, a hole to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, and like, like your wife. You? And your wife just telling her friends, like, yeah, it's even got like a little hole that the guys can fuck to get off. It's really, <laughs> it's really cool. I, yeah, I, I play with it. And like, it's totally never green. <laughs> like, <laughs> we should have, uh, like, you, have you ever seen them like milking things that happen in Japanese hospitals? Like, you guys yeah. have probably yeah. seen the videos. Yeah. Why didn't we have posts. one of them installed? It seems I don't, appropriate. The, the, the thing I don't like about when I see those Japanese jack off machines is that it's never like one. It's like a row of them. And so and so like a bunch and so like am I am I like coming in with the evening shift here? Like putting my dick in here and then like I, I pull the, the train horn on the way out. Like what the fuck is going on here? Oh I I've one cool thing about the bathroom, I just want to throw it. The mirrors have built into frosters. You know, so you press oh, like a button that. and there's like okay. a heating grid behind it that defrosts the mirror. It's pretty the you know the exhaust fan that's above the shower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're automatic. When they sense that it's starting to steam, they just turn on and work. And that's that's fancy. Have you sat know. down on the toilet? Oh yeah. Not having to poop, just wanting the anal massage. <sighs> the seat is heated, and you, I like it more than you'd expect. So I've been like, I. This is the best seat in the house. None of my other seats the are here. The best seat in the house? <laughs> None of my other... Like, why would I get up and go to some other seat? I've got my laptop here. I've got my butt warming toilet here. Does your laptop have, <laughs> is there something to put your laptop on? No, but we should do that for That's sure. That's happening, yeah. huh? There's going to be like an arm that... A, you need an arm that attaches over here, and then you can just swing the whole yes. thing into your lap, and it just floats right there, and you just got a little desk. You just need Try a mic set up, and you could never yeah. leave. You guys are going to... Next PK, I'm doing from my... You're there. The you could green screen your toilet. <laughs> uh, I have a video, That's but awesome. it's five minutes long, and I'm afraid it's a little too boring for the show. If it's of your toilet, what's, then I what's will... It, uh, <laughs> what's it about? And we can talk about what it's about. It's my we, bathroom we tour. Through. Oh, it's oh your bathroom God. tour. It well, then perfect. Let's watch ba- that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, it, I, like I said, it's five minutes wrong. We, we might want to end up flipping around it. Uh, I made it just a vertical video to show my mom the bathroom. Yeah. I mean, you could just play it in the background while I memorize yeah. the layout of your home. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I, I guess no audio. So we, yeah, we, we don't need any audio. It's going to be too it. dull. But... Uh, There it is. So some of it's still getting done. You can see that cabinet still getting done, and I, I don't have. There's look mood this, lighting for the bathtub. Look at that's that what lighting you're looking at. by the tub. <laughs> um, so the tub with legs. That's some rich guy shit. <laughs> the tub with legs, Taylor. <laughs> that tub was the only. So the whole bathroom is. Are those speakers? Uh, the things behind above the shower. Those are the shower head fixtures. Uh, um, we're gonna put a couch there. Yeah, that oh, like room be- next to the tub is the shower. So oh, there's no like door or anything. Okay. You just walk behind the wall. Okay. And uh, I thought those probably... were speakers that were like. Speakers sounds cool. I don't know why we don't have any speakers. That tub is the only thing that went under budget. It was $2,000 and it had like the smallest little dent right where my thumb is. I'm explaining it. Okay. And uh, um, we couldn't see it until it was time to install it. It was covered with like all this padding and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we call Wayfair. And we're like, hey, this tub is damaged. Can you swap it out with another? And they're like, ah, we can give you a credit for fixing the damage. And we're like, ah, no, thank you. Please swap it with a new tub. And they're like, ah, we can't do that. Apparently, they don't have them. Um, mm-hmm. Instead, we can give you a, a full refund. So we're like, cool, 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 do that. And they're like, ah, turns out that uh, you, know, you just dispose of the tub on your own. So... We fixed the tub for like two hundred dollars. <laughs> it was the only thing that went under budget. <laughs> there you the whole thing. I, I've never. I like the tub with the spigot in the middle, the faucet in the middle. That looks very fancy. And that high up, you probably get a nice splash. 
<laughs> Probably. I want to see the shower. Friendly. This is an awesome bathroom. This I really so like it. Purple Heart at the bottom of the vanity. It's like a special wood that I like. Um, we'll see about the turn. That's the defroster thing I was talking about. And then the mirror lights up like that. I look fat. Don't look. At me. <laughs> <laughs> look, Dean, you you cut so that ridiculous. out. You do not. Look fat. Kyle, tell um, your friend Woody he does not look fat. <laughs> he doesn't look fat. I tell him every night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, this is but fucking. I'm trying 50. to show this. I'm waiting to get to the shower. Those are the the vents that turn on automatically that I mentioned. So here's the Ooh. shower. There's like a car wash on the right and fixtures Jesus. on the left. It looks we like had the... Uh, the Temple of Doom. I got to go back <laughs> past some dark shoes. On the right. <laughs> it does. It does. The uh, that like thing and f- all right. So these are all the shower fixtures that re- we had. The house's plumbing upgraded. We put this like pressurizer. And you know maybe if you're Maybe your shower, your roof house is always perfect, but some days the jets are like, it's your shower's best day. And the other days, maybe your shower has like an enlarged prostate and it's yeah. a little drippy. <laughs> um, because we put this house pressurizer thing in, every day is the shower's best day. Like it, it adds every plumbing fixture in the house is just like kick ass oh, yeah. mode this all looks the time. Great. This thing, I, I don't even know what this is. I think it's like a female masturbator. Where do you see the what? jet that comes from the side? I think what is the mad. purpose of that one? Oh, <laughs> well, come on! Well, so, I, you know, fast acting douche. <laughs> I don't right. know, but uh, um, I do like that little bench there, though. I remember I, I stayed in an Airbnb that had a thing like that in there, and just sitting there with all the like shower heads blasting down on you is so nice. It feels being great. able to kind of like put your head in your hands and just relax. Let it. My, I get a lot of tension in my upper back, so when I wake up, it just. Oh, that'd be great. I like yeah. the water oh, there's the mega oh, toilet. There's the, toilet. <laughs> there's the mega oh, toilet. That one. <laughs> All right, you gotta get some. You got an entertainment center in that in that mega toilet little alcove. I, you need yeah. this thing here. Is how like how many amazing. towels do you need? <laughs> my God, man. That we're having that thing redone and like restained to match the other wood in the room, which is why it's unfinished right now. But uh, it's an old timey refrigerator. You put the ice at the top, and it would drip to the bottom and keep things cool. But there's the remote for the toilet that I talked about. I shouldn't have opened it by hand like a peasant. What the fuck is wrong with me? That is pretty embarrassing. <laughs> opening your toilet. And is, is that the the ass detection mechanism? <laughs> I guess so. Hey, Dude, hey, the, is that a camera? I don't know. I don't know. The bidet is so accurate. I I suspect some sort of like photography a is happening. I think that's a Logitech webcam that I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, "How does it know exactly where to shoot that stream?" There's but, it, it, jokes on you. They're selling your asshole in photos. Yeah, yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's some call center for two like, day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, that's the master bedroom. I think the bed needs to be made, but yeah. Anyway, so that's our bathroom. That is model. awesome. You can see there's still some work to be done, but it's uh, it's you. But now we can use it. It was kind of rough to <laughs> like use the upstairs guest rooms for a couple months. Very nice. Well, that's like it. I'm glad it's done. Yeah. How was so. the uh, the contractor situation? Did you did, did it go smoothly getting this done? I know you've had issues in the past. So we love these contractors. I get along with them really well. He's a base jumper, and uh, so like on a personal level, everything went super well. This particular project went like, um, what, what's the, the what's the bad side of on time and under budget? It's over time and over budget. That so it, it <laughs> <laughs> so there is there is some of that involved, but. Um, uh, we okay. like him so much. I didn't foster. Like, it wasn't was a no... Donald Trump uh, situation, not nothing like that. But you got a great bathroom out of it, so that's all. We, we got needed. a great bathroom out of it. We're happy with the workmanship, and uh, and we would hire him again. We've hired him. I don't even know how many times. Yeah, he's sort of. He's almost. He lives here. <laughs> so. The thing that I would really like in a bathroom is is um, those heated floors. I just remember I oh. stayed at a resort um, one time a few years ago, and. It was in the winter, so and and the tile floors were just so cold. Getting up to go piss, and that warm floor was awesome. I really liked that. And then I, I think one of those houses. Up. I think we rented a place in Colorado that had the heating, where it's like the the tubing yes. in the floor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That shit exploded the first night we were there in the oh, garage. No. In the garage, in the garage, there was all these like I think it was copper even all this tubing, and it looked like 
I didn't know what it was. I didn't give a shit. It's not my house. But there was a lot of like infrastructure there. And one of those pipes burst and was just spraying high pressure, hot water into the garage. And I'm thinking like, not only is my name not on like the rental of this place, it's rental. <laughs> I get to, it's rare. Usually when I'm somewhere, I, I'm the guy who's going to have to end up paying if things go poorly. And this was that one time where I was just like, <laughs> look at that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that looks Man, expensive. That looks expensive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's going to get in the dry and the drywall. Oh, wow. Yeah. You guys are fucked. Emergency plumbing in winter. Good luck. And they did I, though. They had an emergency plumber come there the next day. God knows what it costs. And he fixed all of that shit. And it was just, I don't know. Uh, I was, had that kind of serious. plumbing growing up and I didn't love it. Um, it's kind of neat that like your floors are warm and your feet are warm and stuff. But yeah. we eventually went from carpets to hardwood because it blocked the heat from coming up. If you didn't keep your room clean enough, my father, who his room was under mine, would just get like melted out because my room's cold. The heat can't rise past my dirty clothes on the floor. <laughs> and the thermostat is like, well, keep it coming. And he would just get heat, you know, blasted, sonnet in his room. So I had to keep my room clean or he would suffer. And I'd get in trouble. Um, oh, that makes sense. That kind of stuff. I, uh, made me wish for I had a regular vent. No, I uh, on that trip, I I think Chiz was on that. Yeah, Chiz was on that trip, and I was going to pull a prank on him. And I, it was one of those times where I wasn't sure if the prank was too extreme or not. I don't think I knew <laughs> Chiz. Like, you know. Are you like, fucking like, with his rain fly? <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> like, he, I think what happened is he'd gone upstairs to his room in the cabin with his big lodge. And he goes upstairs, middle of winter, Colorado, and like throws his suitcase in the room and everything. I think that's what happened. And then I go up behind him when he's not there, and I open these big swinging windows that are that are in his room to the outside world. And then I go back downstairs for the next six or eight hours while we like smoke weed and party and drink and watch movies and just eat food and just, you know, enjoy the evening. And so when he went to go to bed that night, the whole time it's in my head, <clears throat> his room was sub zero and snow <laughs> had blown in and oh, the, it was so cold in the room. The snow was just, wasn't melting. That's how cold <laughs> it was so cold in his room that snow wouldn't melt in his bedroom. When, like when he goes to bed, I know that like, temperature. It's great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> but I was a little worried. I was like, oh, is this one of those where he's either going to get mad or sad? Cause that's never what I'm going for with a prank. I want you to be like, you got me. <laughs> I don't want you to be like actually mad or, or sad, but 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 he was pretty chill about it. I think he thought it was funny. Cool. You don't want someone to feel bullied when you prank them. No, that's never the goal. Well, I mean, sometimes depends on the, the person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, depends ideally, a person. prank is like for a laugh that you can share. That, the, the impractical jokers do pranks the right way. They make themselves into the butt of the joke and they make a funny scenario. Whereas the old YouTubers were pranks where it's like, I'm going to dress up like a, a 9-11 terrorist and then like throw a bomb at him. And it's like, <laughs> we're like, this isn't a prank. Like you're, you're assaulting someone in public. Some of the um, some of the early uh, live streaming days with the uh, IRL streamers or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, damn. Did you ever see the one where I think it was like a brown kid in a school and he was streaming or he, he must have been in a library or some building or something. But he was streaming and then somebody did one of those text to speech donations and I, I think it was something along the lines of like the bomb will now detonate in 10, <laughs> nine and everybody starts screaming and like running out of the building. And he's like walking, obviously like fucking nervous. Cause I think the cops got called on him or anything, but yeah, no, I'm geez. sure. Yeah. They got was a, that yeah. ice Poseidon. Doesn't he have a, no, that wasn't ice Poseidon. It was somebody else. Okay. I feel like I've seen that video. The cops I'm showed up for that. one. I saw that one, I think, I think that was a, uh... yeah, I saw that one. I, I have a, I have a UFC topic we can all participate in. Oh, I love UFC topics. Here, wait, hear it out. I saw it on the internet. If Joe Rogan main evented a card, it'd be the most watched card in UFC history. I believe that. Bigger 100%. than Conor McGregor. 100%. Yeah. Who would be his ideal opponent? Danny DeVito. How, how tall is he? <laughs> Joe Rogan, he's like 5'8, five five eight eight? maybe. Yeah. But built I think like that's a pushing it. He's built like a, okay, then 5'7, built like a brick I, shit house, though. I, I, think, I think Joe Rogan is about 5'5. Five, five. Uh, and, and real thick five, like, five. Like, man i've seen him next to every time i see him next to people he looks itty bitty not itty bitty he looks short he looks very short because he's such a thick stocky guy he's right, the I'll same height up. as conor mcgregor how tall is joe rogan really <laughs> that's what all yeah, that's right, all right? No, I, wait, wait, <laughs> zach says five eight i also got that by googling 
I don't know. He's if the he's same really... height as Conor McGregor wearing shoes while Conor's barefooted. I think you're right. Yeah. Because he's in that octagon in his, you know, shirt and tie, microphone. Connor obviously just kicks some fool in the head or whatever. Right. The pick I saw was a weigh-in, but I think he was still barefoot. Oh, that's good. Yeah, they, they yeah, yeah. They're, they're barefoot there. Well, not anymore, man. That 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 deal they're Ceremonial. shoving down everybody's throat with the shoes. <laughs> the Rock has a brand with Under Armour with the shoes, and they're making oh, them all yeah. wear the shoes and like I don't know, suck the dick of the shoes, like pretend like they like him or whatever. Not Nate they, Diaz. Nate Diaz yeah. on his Instagram. He's just like, look at these fucking shoes they made us wear. Look at these ugly ass shoes. They fucking suck. They made us wear them. <laughs> they fucking suck. <laughs> just, I like Nate Diaz more than I ever did. Uh, I like how him a about, lot more than I used to. How about this? Just going by similar ages and weights. Joe Rogan, he's 55. Mm-hmm. We're going to say 5'8". But that's, that's a little high. But his opponent could be Jason Statham, also 55. <laughs> and it says 5'10 here, but keep in mind, they're both Hollywood heights. So it's probably a 5'7 mm. guy and a 5'9 guy. So it's not like a big difference. I think Joe Rogan does whatever he wants with, with Jason Statham until he decides to stop. Is First of all, it'd be, a, it'd be a catch weight. So you can fight, he could fight anybody he wants, right? Like, like they, they could do it that way. So could it be he, one of the uh, could it be one of the Paul brothers or are they both too big like weight wise like would it be a, why don't, don't you just do the fight that everybody always big. wanted and do Wesley Snipes that was what I had in my head yeah Where's apparently Joe Rogan was scheduled to fight Wesley Snipes at one point confirmed really? by Joe Rogan though like like it's a real thing they uh, I forget they were trying to put it together it, they were trying to put together I don't know if it's because Wesley needed money or what was happening but it was real enough that Joe entered the training camp he said yes to it. And then they tried to change the terms, and he said yes to those two. Like, he didn't care. He just kind of wanted to do a fight. And apparently Wesley Snipes has some sort of striking training, but so does Joe. And Joe, of course, is a master on the ground. And I don't think it matters who Joe Rogan fights. I think that it would be, uh, it, would be trem- it would be tremendously po- uh, popular. Uh, yes. I think everybody... He, he, I think everybody would want to see it. It'd be a freak fight. I feel like it would have to be, and I could be wrong, or maybe is, is Wesley Snipes popular somewhere now, or? No, I know, I, no. It just, yeah, it, that's was. just like a thing that was going to happen. Because I was going to say, like, if it's Joe Rogan, I feel like you should find somebody that's like relevantly, Equally, like, yeah. Hugh culture-y to like blow it up or whatever. Who would be, who would be good? That's is like Hugh Jackman about his size? <laughs> no. Or maybe he's too oh. tall. I think if Hugh Jackman is like way smaller. Also, he's, he's going to, he's, you know, he's. I remember him being too tall for the Wolverine role, and some people fussed in in that regard. Uh, That's only because Wolverine's supposed to be five foot flat or something. Wolverine's (laughs) supposed to be like a midget. Okay. Yeah, that's why they're mad about that. That's fucking stupid of them to complain about. I I don't think he's that tall, but I don't really know. I, I, I love a little celebrity like wouldn't match, but um, Dr. Mike won the I Dove boxing event, right? Didn't he beat I Dove? Hugh Jackman? Dr. Mike? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, Would you say they did, they did the big YouTube uh, event? I think Dr. Mike ended up beating Idubs on that funnel thing. That would be an interesting to see him get beat up, but that, I don't think he'd be big enough. I think you need somebody way more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone like a mainstream TV yeah. guy. I just like if you're gonna find someone even close to Joe's age, like how many 55 year olds out there do you think could take Joe Rogan? Like he, he's actually a pretty fucking tough guy, and he looks like yes. he, he looks like when you grabbed him, he would be dense. Like, yeah, <laughs> like it seems like there'd be a lot of density if there. I bear hug Joe Rogan and tried to make him tilt sideways. I don't think I could do it. No, he's he's a very fit guy. All he and he's fucking hopped up on shroom tech or whatever the fuck, <laughs> <laughs> taking all that on his on it on his on it grind. So I think there aren't many people you know who might be like competitive. Uh, Eddie Bravo. Eddie Bravo. He was a fighter, right? He's some sort of jujitsu savant. Oh, I uh, thought he was in the UFC. I don't know about his fighting resume. I don't. Okay. I think he just does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But because Joe sure. probably couldn't take like a real UFC guy. Like no, you don't think like no, there's no, not a real UFC. I guy. mean, like a real like a 55 year old real former real UFC guy. I we wonder, moved a lot he, away from the. From yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you take a 55 year old UFC guy, he could be broken down by now. Like, can Joe beat yeah. Chuck Liddell? Maybe. Yeah, maybe is, he doesn't need Chuck, to be hit anymore for his sake. Right. I uh, Yeah. His wife came out or ex-wife, wife, something like that, and said that he's got CTE and that he's violent. And you know what he That's what sad. she said that really rubbed me the wrong way, that he'd go to bars and he wouldn't let people get out of fights. And something about that verbiage, like a guy trying to cool it down, say, Chuck, this isn't what I'm looking for. Just like, I'm, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. I'm sorry I said what I said. Like, whatever it is that's making Chuck mm-hmm. want to fight. And Chuck still is physically violent, angry. Bro, 
if someone's trying not to fight, he should be able to not fight. That yeah. that's how this goes. It, it, if he's trying to save face and come out the winner in some way, then I can see how that escalates and and why that goes. How like look, we can't both save face. But if someone's just trying to get out of a fight, let him out. Yeah, yeah, that's shitty, and that I feel like that's happened multiple times, even with like some UFC guys who aren't. CTE out they'll like get in a fight at a bar and it'll be like oh there's like there's an out in the video where they could have left there's another out where they could have left oh and they decided to pulverize them instead like i guess when I'm, that's like it, everything looks like a nail when you're yeah. when you're a fighter I, I'm sure. yeah and it's not brave right like it, it's oh did you win a fight yeah that's the thing you're good at i'm not impressed you yeah. know like a, a, it's not embarrassing. It's like, who's that chess guy? That like Swedish dude or Norwegian or something? Magnus. Like if, yeah, Magnus. He comes into the room and he like, if he bullies me, if he overpowers me into a game of chess and then just wipes the floor with me, it like, like he looks like the douchebag. It's like, this guy didn't know what he was doing. He was like asking you like what a good opening was and you were smashing him. Like similarly. Are you any good like at chess? Dick. Uh, I was in the chess club in middle school and I enjoyed it, but I didn't really play much after that. So I know how I just, I don't know strategies or anything. I'm maybe at the same level. You might be better than me, but I taught my wife to play chess just mm -hmm. recently. Right. So she's never played chess before and she picked up all the moves pretty well. Like I thought chess was kind of complicated to learn. Every piece moves differently mm -hmm. and some move one way and attack another. And like, that's kind of tricky. And anyway, she picked up all the rules quickly. And uh, obviously I kicked her ass. She had never played a game of chess before. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I like it this way. This is my dominance training. And uh, so then we play again. Dude, she's gotten into chess. She hasn't nice. beaten me yet, but she's found an app on her phone. And now she's running like named offenses and shit. <laughs> and, and, yeah, she's modest about it. Like she sets up her boards and it's like symmetrical and her fucking knights are out and her bishops are in like attack position. And she's like, all right, that's as much as I remember. I'm like, the fuck you're remembering shit? Yeah. I'm making up all this as I go along. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I play. I'm like, you can't outthink me if I'm not thinking. <laughs> if I'm playing move to move, you can't possibly anticipate. My right? Next. And then and I just get hemmed up. Destroyed. She still makes silly mistakes, like thinking that if her bishop's right next to someone, she can take it. I was like, no, mm -hmm. they only move diagonal, even if they're adjacent. <laughs> you know, they, Like, that's the thing. But, but anyway, she is going to be kicking my ass soon unless i start Good. learning actual chess strategies then you can introduce her to magic the gathering and she can become a truly cool person. <laughs> someone who's what? awesome everyone uh, who plays magic they're not fucking it's, weirdos it's gonna be more <laughs> expensive than my bathroom remodel <laughs> it will like those, <laughs> those guys over at wizards of the coast have struck gold it's a mm. cheap ass ink cheap ass cardboard and they're like this one <laughs> Seventy dollars, idiot! <laughs> and it's like <laughs> that's seventy bucks a pop. You're gonna need four in your deck, aren't you, retard? <laughs> oh no! It's like oh god. Like, I to get another job. We've discovered that the cardboard costs too much. We're going virtual, I'm, I'm and so, all the cards you have, you don't have anymore. I'll never jump back into the cardboard collection. Just really, just buying those boxes every so often, and those boxes like with all the packs in them, so we can do sealed like open six and build a deck out of that. And my wife and I'll play. But like one of those boxes will last forever because we only do that like every few months. It's it's so much fun. Magic is such a fun hobby. I just love it. It's so stupid and nerdy, but I have so much fun playing it. Do you think the market for physical cards is going to dry up because the world's moving online? Uh, I, I There are some people who are like all about paper and they don't want to play arena. So there will always be those people. But the majority, like everyone who's getting into it now is jumping in on the video game because like and if you learn on a video game and then try and go back to paper, like now that person has to remember all the manual triggers themselves, which it's, it's much harder to go from a video game to the real paper. Whereas if you like me learned on paper, like you can jump back to it real quick because you remember all the phases and triggers and things you have to recall. But yeah, like Kyle, Kyle would probably not want to jump back into paper magic again, unless we went on like a vacation. Then we could like <clears throat> play a little bit or something. But Chess I use the mat. I use the mat um, mm -hmm. and it's got all of the stages like, written on there yeah I don't yeah know why i'm not focusing focus mm -hmm. focus on them yeah little rules matt that's handy is yeah. that a game you ever played destiny you're not interested in magic the i gathering? used to play um the pokemon trading card game physically a long long time ago but i did hearthstone for a little bit but otherwise no other types of games i play um 
I will say, based on the thing you said about like a chess pro Magnus coming in and beating up people, um, I will forever be salty on um, when when I when I was a professional gamer so long ago, ten years ago, I played StarCraft, mm-hmm. and you know you <clears throat> we're gonna venture into the heated topic of skill based matchmaking because <laughs> I know a lot of you Ooh. FPS guys get really ass mad that you might have to actually not kill noobs for once, and I know how mad that it makes you guys. Yeah, that's bullshit. Hated. Um, I'm not good against good players. <clears throat> I like yeah, it at this point in my life because I'm the noob. <laughs> I know. But, um, <laughs> I got so mad when battle royales like the PUBGs and everything started to become popular. Because from my perspective, like the natural extension of like playing StarCraft, like RTS, if you were good at RTS, kind of the next evolution of games for you were games like League of Legends or Dota, which mm-hmm. are pretty different and pretty hard. But if you were a good FPS player, now all of a sudden you've got a whole new game mode where you are a literal fucking god among noobs. And you sure. get to roll through games, you know, 10, 15, 20 kills. And it is the most unimpressive fucking thing in the world to me. And I hated it. And every time I see like that argument pop up again for like, because uh, I, I don't know where you guys are at on it now, but I see that argument pop up for skill-based matchmaking. Mm-hmm. And everybody's so salty. He's like, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Why? Because you just want to like shit on noobs all day. I hate it. If that yes. triggers the fuck Nobody out of me so that, much. Destiny. I, I, think that's I know when it triggers me. I don't <laughs> play against people that are your skill level. It's dumb to no. watch these fucking streamers no, no, that are like no, 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 no. middling <laughs> FPS. <laughs> loser failure pros environment though. go through these games and destroy like 30 people and it's like you're not impressive bro it is like you're actually like at the end of the Step Brothers movie I think is that what it's called where they beat up all the fifth graders yeah like, that's <laughs> what you are except you found a way to monetize it and stream it and it's bullshit yeah, and that was one of the funniest scenes in the film fuck they should have <laughs> to suffer, suffer like everybody else through the game I got so salty how those battle royales let like any decent FPS player come in and just be a fucking god in some arena do most games uh like I, none of us actually really care about that shit. But like, or do most games have like a skill based matchmaking queue and then a non skill based queue? Or do for most what types of games? Do, for like an FPS like COD, because that's what I see people complaining about. Um, do- no, for COD and all of that, I'm pretty sure it's, they don't do skill based matchmaking, right? And not if they want to. Oh, I thought COD did do skill based. No, because every time they suggest it, all the Dude. people get really fucking mad about it. <laughs> it, it. It really is awful. But you know, if if you're good at the game, like you don't want to have to be sweaty all the time I, th- I think that they like to be able to to cruise playing against the average person like i'm above average but i'm not elite i don't want to have to play against like people like me like i, I like, like i that that's why i like it i, I would never want to play against i don't like it either i don't like skill-based matchmaking because i don't want to get sweaty if i'm exactly. a little bit better than everybody then i want to be able to i want the i want to be able to see that I zach said uh that a problem is in COD that it does have skill based matchmaking. It's hidden, but he says that it's weighted more than connection. So I can, wow. if that's true and it's weighted more than your connection, that's pretty like they, you should always wake. No, that's not highest, like some right? hope shit that the COD fucking losers made up. We're like, oh, well, when they, <laughs> well, when they do skill based matchmaking, uh, sometimes they match with bilingual people and I can't communicate with my team. Like, that sounds like some cope shit that they make up to, to why they shouldn't have it. Like, there's a really good reason why I need to be in a game where all of my opponents look like they have Parkinson's disease. Okay. Like, it, it absolutely has to be. Because they're trying to get a gameplay. That's yeah. all they're trying to do to get a, a nuke to drop and make a commentary on it. Or that's not even what people do anymore, really. Did you play the uh, the new beta? No. Well, after you said that it, it wasn't that fun, I stopped downloading it on I Xbox. I downloaded it and I, I played it for a day. And then I heard that they unlocked some new game modes and I was coming back for the second day. And I was like, wait, why though? Why would I why would I play more? It's awful. Like I, I don't I don't have any enjoyment from killing somebody in that game. Like I don't I don't mm-hmm. care. Like, I don't like getting the kill streaks even. And if I die, I really don't care. Like like that's the problem. I don't care about if I die in that game. I could die thirty fucking times in a row. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Um, yeah, I guess you've been playing enjoyable. like you've been playing higher stakes games for so long, where it matters if you die. It matters more to me dying in like Fallout. Like if I'm playing Fallout Four and I'm not, I haven't saved in the last ten minutes. It's a much bigger de- deal to die in Fallout than it is to die a few times in COD. Like it's just rinse yeah. and repeat. You're just instantly back in the game. Um, I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't care if I shot people if i got three i've got a triple kill or something i just didn't care i don't know it, it's, it's not the game i care about anymore at all you just have to wait wait till Vermin but it's really slick like, like, like it, it might be the slickest cod i'd ever played it was it was so nice like, like i liked all the guns how they looked and how they worked and i like the game mechanics nothing seemed all that broken to me is everyone still sliding around everywhere yeah they they kind of nerfed the sliding i think the slide canceling in particular maybe because when i tried to slide cancel my guy just kind of like stalls and awkwardly slides slowly to a stop i don't know it, it's like when you catch a dog taking a shit 
it, it, <laughs> it didn't seem to be the sort of bouncy sort of slipper slip and slide thing you used to be able to do but uh, but maybe i just don't know how to fucking play but i do like that it's a bit more like battlefield where in the one game mode you could spawn into a, a helicopter that somebody happens to be flying over the battlefield and parachute out of it and sort of like wing suit down to get exactly where you want to help save objectives so the the mode where they're trying to copy battlefield is actually pretty fun hmm. damn what but happened I, to Battlefield? but i canceled my doing? i canceled my pre-lo- uh, pre-order though um when i realized i didn't need to pay for the game to get the the tarkov yeah. mode or the uh oh. battle royale mode is battlefield a, a popular game at all anymore is that dead that last battlefield man they really fucked that one up <laughs> people Did they? hated it i didn't I even know why i never liked battlefield i think there was a lot of lack of attention to detail i i, I just remember seeing the video where they're really they're really upset about some uh, reload animation stuff but i'm sure there's like core game mechanics that people feel like they suck i've never been in a battlefield though i you feel so inconsequential in a battlefield yeah. game I kind of want to be a big deal. Like if we're playing, <laughs> if we're playing search and destroy, and I'm the last guy left, and he's the last guy left, like it's just it's all on my shoulders. You're all that's left. Playing hmm. Battlefield, that's it'd be so hyper rare that the whole game is on your shoulders in this one moment. Like that just doesn't happen. You're just like killing meaningless hordes of people who instantly re- either respawn right where you killed them, or even better, their buddy just goes. And like wakes them back up, and they just pop back up. Like I don't know, I just I feel inconsequential in those games. Yeah, I, I like the games guy. where it's where it's easy to to kill people. <laughs> That's why I was bad at Halo. Like Halo was just you, you had to hit in the head, and everybody else was doing really good at it, and I wasn't. Like I think COD, like you could you could luck into a lot of deaths in COD. Halo was a little more skill based, I thought, and for mm-hmm. that reason, I for I, sure. Yeah, I forget what it maybe four shots of the body finish with the head, something like that. Mm-hmm. And people who were used to doing that instead of just center mass old school cod, there was a multiplier for hitting in the head, but the strategy was kind of center mass. So your bullets all hit Yeah, um, new cod. The bullet multiplier for the head has gone up. I don't know about the very newest, but the one I played a little bit ago. So you want headshots. It rewards that. Um, but when I my meat and potatoes cod days just shoot in the middle of the body so when a mm. halo would drop and it would become the popular game for a month i'd get my ass kicked because yeah. those guys mm. all had more talent. the guys who played counter-strike as they're oh. it's like it's like mma right the guys who have mm. a wrestling base it's like oh, seem to man, do well you're so lucky now <laughs> you just gotta now you just gotta learn how to punch people in the face and you're gonna be a badass Right. So much easier. And everyone's going to keep their hands down by their knees because they don't want you to take them down. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're over here like, and we pl- I played COD as like the first like real shooter that I d- devoted hundreds and hundreds of hours. So yeah, you just spray them right in the middle. It, it doesn't even matter. Uh, the guys who play Counter Strike is their thing. Now they just, you know, can click on your head. And I, I, I still have to, when I'm playing Tarkov, I'll be like, before a match, I'll be like, the head, the head, the head. You have to shoot them in the head. Mm-hmm. Stop shooting them in the body. <laughs> they have armor on their chest and faces yeah. are one shot kills so by, I'll, I'll be streaming to like a half dozen guys in the in the discord and be like why'd you die i'm like because i'm fucking stupid that's why i shot him see that thing he's wearing i can't shoot through that that's why i shot it 12 times <laughs> he was, he was super mad at that game but but again i want to play a game that makes me angry if i'm not angry at the game then i'm not gonna be able to have fun Play me in magic. <laughs> <laughs> I will make it unbearable for you. <laughs> that's See, how that's... I am with movies. I, like, I'm impressed. Like, do I want a movie to make me feel good? Yeah, sure. But really, I just want a movie to make me feel. All right, that's I got what Then you've me. got to take my advice and watch the goddamn caveman show, Primal, on HBO. It, it's from Cartoon Network. Watch one episode. It made me cry. That 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 that, 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 that caveman show. It's Wait, really which, good. Which it's Primal? called Primal. Um, oh, there's okay. a couple of seasons of it. It's animated and there's no dialogue, and it's about a caveman and oh. uh, and uh, and a dinosaur and their buddies. And uh, bit of a documentary. Uh, it's a bit of a it's it, it's a documentary. It's animated uh, again, no dialogue. Christian documentary. It's really good. I like it a lot. I started watching it when it came out, um, but then I never went back to it. And then recently, I, I started watching it again. It's it's really really good. I. I don't know if I want to watch something that makes me cry. Well, <laughs> you might be more of a man than me because I cry at all sorts of things. Like, like, like half the movies I watch, I cried at a thing last night. I watched, um, I'm watching The Outsiders again. It's that HBO mini series based on the Stephen King novel. 
mm-hmm. and and Jason Bateman um, directs and stars in at least the first two episodes. So and and there's this part where Jason Bateman, who's been accused of this child murder, is explaining to the cop that when the cop's son was on his team and he was coaching him, they had this like little. He, he's like, you know what they called your son? They called him Whiff because he couldn't hit the ball. He just kept swinging at it and he couldn't he couldn't hit it. And I told him to stop. They're eleven and twelve years old. What are you gonna do? But I taught him to bunt. Most kids don't like to bunt, but he could do it. Remember what they called him? What they said when he'd come to the plate? They'd say, push it. And the cop starts getting all teary-eyed. They're sharing this moment. And I'm sitting there like... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, so when you asked me if I ever touched your son? I yes. I, he goes... <laughs> I, he said, I touched your I, son on his I, tender, <laughs> sexy little heart. <laughs> That's what he does. But he, he wasn't says, a pedo because he was 12. I he touched says, your I son at home. I touched him in the bathroom. I touched him on the field. So. I touched him all over. The he place. said, I hope so. And and uh, and I cried. It was I touched real your son bad. in a way Dude, that's no a amount g- of therapy can take away. <laughs> 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 I cry at the fucking lameish so, Stranger Things season one. There's this one character. His name is Steve Harrington. He's got badass hair. Steve the Hair Harrington. And they teach you to hate this fucking guy. He bullies the kids to some extent. Not really him, his friend, but he's involved. He's a bully too. And uh, the the really pretty girl who is the, the star's sister, he fucks her. And you kind of don't root for it. The next morning, she like wants love and attention and he's ignoring her. And, and he's it, whatever. But he has a redemption arc. And... Uh, there's a scene where like the same girl I talked about and her current boyfriend are fighting the big bad monster and Steve's there and they're like, get out of here. The monster's coming back. And he runs to the car kind of cowardly. And uh, so her and her boyfriend are there. They have a baseball bat with giant nails hammer hammered through it way ba- more badass than Lucille from uh, walking dead. And um, this, this baseball bat with spikes Anyway, the school jock bully type guy is at at his car more than ample time to escape the big bad monster. He is home free. They told him to leave. They said, get out of here. The monster's coming. You run. They didn't want his help, but he sees the lights flickering inside. He decides to come back. Anyway, boyfriend's got this baseball bat I described. But he's not the high school jock. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And the monster immediately like smacks him around and the bat is on the ground. Anyway, out of nowhere, Steve the hairdo Harrington grabs this bat. And this motherfucker knows how to work a baseball bat. You can just like, (laughs) I'm not even a baseball guy. But by the way he holds it, he knows what the fuck he's doing. And he starts beating the goddamn daylights out of this monster. And at one point... One hand, and he like flips the bat around and does this move and uppercuts I'm him. So, I was about to say, you know, if I were writing that scene, he'd do some bat tricks in the middle. You have, I was did. about to say, you ever, you ever see somebody do that bat trick where they like pretend to swing, but they're really just <laughs> flicking it twice yeah, and then catching it? Cool. Like, oh, you this pull guy, that, and I'm blown away. He like, did, his, he was able shit. to do like a one handed twirl and then grab the thing again <laughs> and swing an uppercut on this monster. And it's like, right. Who do you want dealing with this baseball bat than the freaking jock of high school? What season is this? One. Oh, and, what? Uh, this I is season, season one. one. Oh, I, man, it's been so long ago, huh? Yeah. I, guess I watched it when it came out. I don't remember that at all. I'm current on this show. I'm right about this. Oh, and, I believe and, you. Yeah. And uh, uh, anyway, so I'm like, I was talking about my, to my wife about this, and like, it, and I, I found it on YouTube and replayed that scene. <laughs> Tears, because I cry at victory shit like that. I always yeah. do you know what i saw you know, <laughs> you know, I, it, if you want to test like like just how uh uh, uh much of a pussy you are for victory <laughs> i saw a thing the other day they were like you think you guys think marvel was the first to do it and they're talking about the scene where uh, captain america is like being tough and you know everybody shows up to help him apparently there was some power rangers movie where like <laughs> we're like the current power rangers i don't know if you're aware of this but there's been like so many oh, the no. current power rangers like down on their luck and they're like what are we going to do and then they see like figures like start like standing on the canyon and then more and more figures and it's always pairs of five and you look and it's like every power ranger who's ever been a power ranger and it's 
it might be 200 people. And then the <laughs> OG Power Rangers come really out. Really, the porn star? The OG one, the, like the, the, well, the, 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 pink, the yellow ranger. The green died. ranger fucking takes his mask off, and it's the actor. He's like 45 or 50. Wait, I thought some He's, of these guys, like, didn't. Was it the. Was it the power the red guy the red ranger didn't that guy wasn't he like a child molester guy or did Let's not he talk about that all right? okay. you know? didn't, didn't the yellow he ranger, his, the he yellow ranger his crimes <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I'll tell you what when when the power ranger thunder force needed him he showed back up and he went yes. right back he's to okay in our child book. Molestation I guess it's like the Dave Chappelle skit right sometimes he rapes sometimes he saves or whatever <laughs> <laughs> I I love the uh, the original power rangers were I just I like the idea. Well, the racial coloring. Yeah, yeah. I was I don't like the idea, but I, I it's interesting that they were like yellow ranger, Asian girl, it was black funny. ranger, Jesus. black guy, like that pink ranger girl. Uh, uh, the red ranger was Native thing. American. Was he Native was American? He, was he? I remember well, that. I don't know if I'm either, remembering a meme or not. He's like half Native American, and I think they literally like find that out like in an episode. I'm sorry. I, I remember I was I watched this show was as he it like debuted, concealing it, but I was like seven when the like I, I i watched the original first season of the power rangers which isn't even a real show by the way you know it's like they took all the fighting yeah. from that japanese show and then they had some american kids do all the like talky parts and then they uh, just edit everything i together. thought you were gonna be like it wasn't even a real show you know power rangers is scripted right yeah <laughs> like, whole thing is zordon <laughs> zordon is the fucking real bro those, those okay? buddies are just it's, guys it's all in a the suit. fucking they're <laughs> gaslighting you, motherfucker. Those putties are hobos, okay? If they're, they're killing them. There is a world. There, there, God. I, I, you guys all seen Where's that, this um, going? Where they're real? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, ha, have you seen that? Uh, it's like a 10-minute mini movie that they made of like the Power Rangers rated R in the future, some shit on I YouTube. I have seen that, no. Oh, fuck, you guys. Oh, it's, it's interesting. I'll watch but it later. There, there is a world where rated R remakes of some like older shit would be so fucking cool. I want to see like an HBO like 10 episode miniseries set in like the Harry Potter world, but it's like rated R shit. Yeah. Like I just I feel like the amount of an stuff horror. you could explore. I want an yeah. horrors. I want an horror and uh like it's an it's a it's a new horror coming in to like the job and he's meeting an old grizzled one who's all scarred up and shit. But for for the for the non mega nerds an horror is like law enforcement in the magic world and and he would see the CD side, the side where people have potions to turn so if you want to like uh, a polyjuice potion that makes you into a specific person for a spe for a specific amount of time, you need a little bit of their hair. So there'd be this whole underground market of hot people's hair, so you could turn into like a celebrity and do weird shit with them or whatever. Oh, that dude, that already exists. In there. There'd be oh, dragon man. fighting and then like all sorts of crazy shit. What else would they? I, I imagine there'd be a lot of violence. A lot of violence, spells. a lot of crazy a lot, sex spells. A lot of penis enlargement. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sex. A spells. lot of like, what's it like to be a girl drinking the potion? How many? They, wait, are they called <laughs> polyjuice potions where they all turn yeah. into Harry? Po polyjuice potion is like temporary, but yeah. Can I, oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I just, I thought of the twin brothers. Dude, in real life, do twins have the same dicks? Yeah, exactly. They're genetic duplicates. We, we've talked about yeah. this before, how like. So they do. We have confirmed it in real life, twin brothers they have like the exact same dicks like, i bet exact... they're very close but because sometimes there's an identical twin who's a tiny bit taller than the other one yeah so well you, you say might... very close yeah. but like imagine how much it would suck if you were identical twins and you had like your dick is like five and a half inches and your brother has like the six and a half inch that final inch that's a big deal that would be imagine if you're like that guy do you think they ever compare like you're ever curious like i want to see who got fucked on the that part of the genetic lottery we should have just, asked uh Slush i don't Puppy know what about this look, all you do is you get your brother to send you the dick pics you use his pics no chick's ever going to notice it when they come to inspect. And if she ever does call you on it, you're like, all right, would you? tomorrow we'll do a measure off. And you have Steven come over with his six inch dick for the measure off. <laughs> this is, this is a good like, idea. Like, you are not going to pin me down on this. <laughs> Dude, if we, if we were twins, Kyle, and I were the big dick twin, I would hook you up. And I hope you do the sure. same. Well, yeah. Like, like, like if, if, if one of us was like the athletic twin and one of us was the smart twin or something, you'd have to have each other's backs. I don't think that happens, though. I think they're fucking identical. But the most fascinating stories that I've read are yes. twins separated at birth and how parallel their lives can yeah. be like down to down to the really weird shit where like their wives will have the same like career and like the same like haircut oh like, yeah yeah mm -hmm. and they'll like, make like, like really yeah they'll find like both of these guys like split up and never talk to each other but they're both dating they're like, in education cardio surgeons or like yeah they're, yeah it's they weird both grow up like to that, be yeah. firemen yeah. Yeah, they're, they're both like, in pediatrics like, like they're like, in the how? same fields with women who are in the same fields 
doing things that are similar in mm-hmm, places yeah. that are similar. Like they, I mean, they're genetic copies of each other. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah but yeah. nature and nurture, right? <laughs> like, like, like they went off to different families. Like, like you'll see sometimes they're in different income brackets, and and how like sometimes the one who was in the lower income bracket outperforms the one when there is that disparity. Like you see really interesting stuff. It would be barbaric to do. It would be some Nazi stuff, but like separating twins at birth and doing weird stuff to see what happens is very interesting. So when it accidentally happens, it's important we take advantage and take notes. It's like, I thought I had triplets. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, nah. No. Did you see the Reddit post? Uh, I think a month ago with the wife who thought her husband, her husband thought she was cheating on her. She thought he was cheating on her. Um, no, he thought she was cheating on him. I'm sorry, Jesus. Okay. And they, um, they, because they'd done a paternity test because something was happening with her kid and the husband found out the kid wasn't theirs. I did see this. Yeah. And then she found out that the kid wasn't hers either. And yeah, by the shit. hospital. <laughs> what did they do? The did hospital they... switched babies at birth. Yeah. So when she had the paternity test, he demanded one. He, yeah. he had, a, of course, which is fair. Of the way the kid looked. Mm-hmm. Like, this kid doesn't look like me. I, I mean, he got really suspicious, had a paternity test and it wasn't his. And she's like, I never cheated. I never cheated. I would know if I cheated and I didn't. So they had another paternity test and it came back that he wasn't the father again. Holy shit. And she's like, I don't like, I don't know what to do. There was a Reddit, like Man, it's one of those where movie. they do I'd updates over time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so then they had a maternity test and it wasn't yeah. her kid either. And they were switched at birth and they, they think they got money out of the hospital. And can you imagine the roller so. coaster, the roller coaster ride that you and your spouse would have where one of you feels so like it, you like, no, it can't. No, the, the, he, he's like, bullshit. Really he's, he's like, that's not my son. You cheated on me. Like, like there was a time where he believed that. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then, and then she must've yeah. been like, no, I didn't cheat on you. What the fuck? And, and like, like, where is she at during that? And then like going, taking that full, uh, full <clears throat> circle and both of them at the end being like, we both got <clears throat> fucked. By the final. The, so yeah. here, let me t- let me the ask this twist, to the, the board. Real be her finding out that, um, or or before it's revealed at the end, she comes clean and she's like, "I actually did cheat on you." Right before the hospital break goes <laughs> yeah. up, we're like, "Actually, we switched your baby." She's like, "Oh no!" <laughs> no. If you're her, do you at any point in this thing have bad vibes towards your husband for him not believing you, for him being no. suspicious of you? No, because you were trying to tell tell him something that. You were telling a lie. You just didn't know it was a lie. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it, I everybody feels differently about this. And he could see through it. Are you mad at him for his lie detecting skills? <laughs> yeah. There, I oh, think that did... there, this is something I run into a lot for um, like casual sex stuff, right? Is there are some people, if I hook up with somebody, usually I'll like just ask, like, when was the last time you were tested? Because if I want to fuck you and you want to fuck me and you're willing, probably fuck other people too. Um, mm-hmm. Some people, just by the virtue of asking that question, will immediately get like upset. And it's like, what? Like, you're either of the mindset where you're like, okay, well, it's reasonable for you to ask these things. Or there are a lot of people I think in life that are geared towards like, just the fact that you don't trust me, regardless of what evidence you're presented is enough to make you upset, is enough to make that person upset. Yeah. So there are just some people that are like that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah most where, like, people I can't are believe like, you wouldn't trust me. And it's like, okay, well. Yeah. That's <laughs> I mean, a real like, shitty attitude to take. I've never experienced It's like, that. well, I mean, I'd be better safe than sorry. And like, sure. <laughs> like or it's yeah. like, you know, if you were lying, you would say the exact same thing, wouldn't you? <laughs> you, <know? Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say, I found out a lot. You can't say that in an argument with your significant other because you come off as hyper schizoid autistic. But yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's a horrible situation. Those poor people. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. I wonder how often that actually happens. Here's the question. Here's the question. What do you do with that baby? How old old is the baby? It was just like a year or so, right? You can take that back. You you can swap swap that right out. No, no. He's five years old. I want cash credit. I want cash credit for medical stuff. Well, that, that, that other couple's taking care of your kid. It depends, it depends on the other baby because you might I actually want... be ahead on that. If that other baby's a sick baby, if you had a sick baby and they raised another one and they took care of all the medical bills, you might that might have been a good investment for you. Right? Then, they then in that me... case, it just falls under finders keepers law. <laughs> they kind of shorted your baby. They borrowed it. They returned it when it was worth more, <laughs> and they got fucked on the uh, trade. I guess. Yeah, it's a bad investment. It's a bad That'd kid. Be real investment. shitty. <laughs> you hear about those like uh, fertility doctors who will slip their own sperm in and father Oof. like hundreds and hundreds of babies? Yeah, those sigma males. Heroes, yes. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you got to say, I mean, he is a doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah right? Is he a good looking like, doctor? Uh, I mean, it's like, it's, it's like very, science-y, very science-y, very science rape. <laughs> it's what it is. You know? It's really horrific. You know, like, like I, I wouldn't like that. 
I no. wouldn't like that. No, no one would like. He's the only guy in that corner. No one else is like. I get it. Yay! Like, like no. yeah. I think there was an X Files episode where something like that was happening. Somebody was slipping their sperm into the fertility clinic because the kids all had the same genetic mutation where they had tails. And it's like, all right, <laughs> let's find the one guy who has a tail. A tail yeah. <laughs> Doctor Ratsman. But wait. <laughs> 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 it wasn't me. So, I read One the post thing. about the baby that was switched at birth. They don't know what happened to their biological baby, and she's oh. terrified about that reality. Hopefully, oh. like I thought, there was an update where they said that they had found them and they were reaching out. I thought that too, but I just read it. Oh shit! So did we get Mandela affected, or did it actually? Uh, Could have got updated. I... Oh, but I mean, thought I... we found him, but we didn't. Or her. Well, they made, probably don't even know. Well, I'm sure they knew they had the baby. Have y'all huh. done 23 and Me like a like an ancestral thing? Mm -mm. My brother I, did, but I never have. I'm so goddamn white. I, I, I pulled up my results the other day. I hadn't looked at them in a while. I think it's 98.9% .9 like Northern European, like like English and uh, Irish specifically. My, my brother, I don't, he didn't like show me the page or anything. He was like, oh, I did it. And it, like, or no, he did it like a couple of years ago and they sent him an update. And he's like, yeah, like there's a big mix of European, but the only like two big ones were like British and Italian. Yeah. Mine is, uh, I mine thought is, I was, I was pretty French. Maybe, I have a tiny amount of Scandinavian and then that fucking two percent Neanderthal, which is hilarious. <laughs> well, you, if you're if you're of European descent, you got a little Neanderthal in you. Damn. My usually. So I, I haven't done one. My mother did one, and if I have my facts right, and and I don't know her percentage of Neanderthal. It's hard to compare it to yours. I it was like she was more Neanderthal than ninety eight percent of people, or something yeah. like that. It was like the it was stated in a different way than yours. I don't know if two percent is like. Slightly above average, or like way, way, and you're ninety nine point nine percent. Like I, you see how they're not the same. I wonder if but, they were still around. Like if they need their own sports leagues because they were like stronger. I thought they had bigger There's, brains. I thought they had bigger heads, but they were dumber. I don't remember. I think they had bigger brain and like maybe were they a little they were, shorter and like broad? Like they were stronger. They were like more muscled than us. They weren't kind of like Kyle's dog. A little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a reason that we persevered and they couldn't. Yeah. He, watches <laughs> he watches this. It's all right. He won't understand. It. Sorry, Rocky. <laughs> if he ah. could read, he'd be upset. Um, <laughs> as a as a Neanderthal, uh, I've done a bit of research on this. They were they were just as intelligent as you, you Homo sapiens, and they were um, uh, they they had art. You know they had jewelry, tattoos, and stuff, and uh, and you know advanced flint weaponry and all that. Yeah, it was stuff. like that cave art, though. Like, you know. there's got to be like a cool racial slur you can use or something. Being two percent Neanderthal, there's got to be something there, right? We gotta we gotta figure this. You out. gotta figure it. Yeah, we'll and we have to one, like yeah. make sure that everyone with Neanderthal ancestry is yeah, on board. No. That we get pissed. If people use it, that's our word. Oh, that wait, actually. We're extinct. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how hard we were oppressed. We were instantly extinct. start fighting as soon as someone calls you a, I don't know. This reminds head. me of a really old set of commercials. Was it Progressive? Who had the caveman? The caveman so commercials. Yeah, Geico, so he's right? Geico, Geico. Could do it. Oh, Geico, yeah. Something yeah. that was really interesting along the twins thing. There's got to be like some fucking murder movie that gets made out of this plot. But um, two twins... Two sets of twins married each other, and they both had kids. Technically, I think those kids are all genetic siblings. They are. Like brother, sister, That's like so that wild. close because of the twin shit. There's yeah. got to be some movie where somebody kills somebody, and they have the same DNA, and then they later find out that like their other fucking um, sibling uncle had like a yeah, child or something. The Outsiders is actually a little bit like that, right? Remember where... So, like... Before we jump people... into The Outsiders, Kyle, I did not realize we're overdue on, on the two-hour mark. I was having so much fun. We're going to hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors. This episode of PKA is brought to you by Fume, F-U-M. Fume is the natural inhaler designed for a better, safer, and natural way to quit cigarettes. It is a no-smoke, no-vape, and no-nicotine replacement for the hand-to-mouth habit of smoking. Fume handcrafted wooden inhalers and handcrafts wooden inhalers and uses cores infused with plant oils studied to curb cravings. They have flavors like peppermint and conquer with minty notes to stimulate menthol cigarettes and other flavors like cozy chai and lemon berry bliss for a sweeter experience. And all their flavors are 100% natural, no harmful chemicals, no artificial flavors, and absolutely no zero nicotine. Quitting is tough, but Fume can really help. They've got thousands of five-star reviews from smokers who have tried everything else, and it's and this is what worked. Whether you're a smoker or ex-smoker who still struggles with cravings, Fume is a perfect tool for you. 
Head to breathefume.com slash PKA and use promo code PKA to save 10% off your entire order. That 10 per- that's 10% off your entire order when you head to B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M dot com slash PKA and use code PKA. Again, that is breathefume.com slash PKA, code PKA for 10% off your entire order. So if you're interested in quitting smoking or you're tempted to start smoking again, check them out if you're interested. Uh, this episode of PK also brought to you by deathbygummybears.com and wonkyweeds.com. Are you or a loved one sick of mediocre or even bad THC alternatives? I know I am. Well, we've got great news for you. Deathbygummybears.com and wonkyweeds.com have you covered. Death by Gummy Bears and Wonky Weeds were founded by a group of passionate professionals who were sick and tired of low-quality Delta-8 and THC alternative products that are spray-coated and very often incorrectly dosed. That's why Death by Gummy Bears and Wonky Weeds had the boys in the lab cook up high-quality, powerful Delta-8 products that are accurately dosed and actually taste great. Looking for a super strong 100 milligram Delta 8 gummy that will put you on your ass? Then deathbygummybears.com is for you. Looking for a more mellow, relaxing high than the cartridges, disposables, pre rolls, distillates, and weaker gummies that you'll find at wonkyweeds.com are more your speed. So whether you're trying to get absolutely shit housed or just a nice, relaxing night at home, we've got the Delta 8 or THC alternative product for you. With so many satisfied customers all over the USA, American-based WonkyWeeds.com and DeathByGummyBears.com serves all states where hemp-derived THC is legal. So whether you're a current THC enjoyer or just interested in trying something new, head to WonkyWeeds.com or DeathByGummyBears.com and use code PKA20. That's 20% off your entire order. That's a lot of savings. Once again, that's WonkyWeeds.com, DeathByGummyBears.com, 20% off with PKA20 at checkout. And for a limited time, while supplies last, they just sent me this today, these Delta 8 bars, these one gram Delta 8 vapes, you can use the code PKA free for buy one, get one free for these. They are more gentle, not as intense as the THCO or HHC. So if you're looking to kind of try it for the first time, that's a good way to do it for relatively cheap. The, uh, the, the PKA free is only for these, though. So if you want to get other stuff, you're going to have to do two checkouts with PKA 20 for the 20% off. Check them out. They will... Uh, and if uh, Kyle high. will agree, if you're trying to just get fucking silly high on on the cartridges, then get the HHC. This feels the strongest to me. Uh, really fucks you up. Get you get you feeling nice. Or we'll put you to bed. Try some gummies. Try what, whatever you want. Wonkyweeds.com, deathbygummybears.com. And finally, this episode brought to you by Lock and Load, the finest cum pills in existence. All the others are fakers. They're pretenders. They're, 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 <laughs> they're false prophets promising you things. We're the reality. Nobody else is telling you to take nine pills a day because they're deceivers. You got to take nine fucking pills a day if you want to come like a man. So lock and load code jizz or code PKA for 10% off of this or 10% off of anything you want over at GorillaMode.com. So check that out. Get the pre-workout nitric if you would like. That's what I use every day before I lift. We should send some. We should send some to Destiny if he doesn't already have a preferred pre-workout. <laughs> Um, I thought we were talking about the cum pills. Okay. We should send Destiny some cum pills too. Yeah, I was gonna make a joke and plug my own Gorilla Mind Link, but I think that might actually be crossing the line. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cum um, no, pills are hilariously effective. It takes about two weeks to notice a difference, and about six weeks to get the full load. But uh, you'll and then in about twelve weeks, you uh, get a. I'm just kidding. <laughs> in twelve weeks, she drowns. <laughs> yeah. All right. What were we talking about? Kyle was talking about something. Kyle wanted to talk about a TV show. Now he's gone. Oblivion. Oh, he said, you know, there's kind of a plot like that in The Outsiders, dot, 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 Uh, about twins or something. I don't know what. Now we'll never know about his twins point that I'm sure was salient (laughs) and good. I want him to bring his new puppy on screen. He popped it up right in the middle of PKN, didn't he? Or maybe that was no during the hangout. He showed everyone in the hangout his new puppy. Yeah. I want to see the new one. He had a puppy hooked on his toe like he was fishing and and he wasn't down to show it. It blows the. We need I wouldn't actually. I would. I would. Pressure. I would say this while he was here. It blow the new dog blows the pants off his old dog in terms of cuteness. It's not a contest. They're not playing Taylor, the same. Sport. I don't think you're allowed to have two children. <laughs> 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 this this fucking bad. loser can't even walk. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Winner. I don't want to say I love one kid more than the other, but this one was body trained at 11 months, and the <laughs> other fucking retired. And the other oh, one, God. idiot. I'm just leave him in his room. He's just. Big Bitching again. <laughs> that's how I'll handle my my son and daughter. Uh, what are are you going to have kids soon? I, I thought you would be a dad by now. 
Uh, so, you were like, let Jesus take the wheel on uh, birth control like years ago. It has. We've I've been on a long Jesus take the wheel birth control streak. <laughs> I don't my I, in regard to condoms. I'm Catholic. Like, I won't, <laughs> I'm, I'm not touching those. They're, they ruin everything. But for the kids thing, like it really because right after we got married, she had her back issue with her, right. her spinal cord. And so we've had to do quite a bit of, of stuff, you know, only like once a year, really, or I guess once we had to do it twice a year, we go up to Mayo Clinic and then she gets scanned and everything. And the next time we're going is January. So we have an appointment, I believe in January to take her in, get her scanned up her pain level, like nerve level, like pain and everything. It's much, much way infinitely lower than it was back, you know, a year and a half ago or whatever, like literally right after our honeymoon when she started getting that pain. Um, so once the doctor and, and I, I say the doctor will clear us, the doctor can't clear us because it's what such a rare thing. Pain level, like can she stand all day, for example? Yes, yeah, she yeah. can. Like she, she couldn't before. Uh-huh. Like at first, like she could barely move at times because there was so much intense nerve pain. Now she can be on her feet all day. She can do this and that. Like she lifts weights with me, and so like it's it's doing good. But like if she overexerts herself, sometimes she'll like get a band of of pain around there because I guess it aggravates the the area of the bleed in her spinal cord. Um, but once we go in January, they're going to take another look, and all they can really tell you is like it either looks like it's increasing in the amount of fluid or blood in there or in- decreasing or it's like stagnating. And the last couple of times we've gone, it's all been less and less, which is tremendous news. Cause it's what a, is the condition called again and say it slowly. It's called a, Oh my God, I'm, I'm fucking spacing. It's like a malignant. It's no, not malignant. It's, um, metastasis. I'll remember it in a minute when it's malicious. Like no longer it, thing. It, it was a malicious. One of the words. <laughs> no, it's not Kyle. You're muted. No, it's not malicious. It's, um, <laughs> A deadly, horrific, a deadly horrific. No, I remember the first like word. I'm like, no, of. the first word in it is a mean one. It's it's a oh. it's not a good one. I I'm I. It's I not malicious. Apologize. I no, it's not. What malicious. is the what? Wait, what is the condition? We can find this. We can, it is so twenty it's, questions. Though. It's a it's a bleed in her spinal cord in the action, not near the spinal cord, within the spinal cord, and it's usually in the brain. What the? F- is it an intramedullary medullary hemorrhage? Or no, hemat- it is not. Hematoma. One sec. She's in the other. Oh, okay. Well, there. That's probably. Fine. Hey, baby, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Are you texting her? Oh, he's he asking. Ran away. Her. I, I, I was Googling it, so I didn't see what he was doing. Wow. I he's guess we're doing an update on him. I, I can't wait to hear what the first word is again because it's, it's like. I, I went to go ask her. She went to bed. And as I was walking out, I'm like, oh, it's called the cavernous malformation. So that okay. is it's it's a cavernous malformation in the spine. And what that is caused by is within the spinal cord, a bleed can happen. And that causes to put it puts a lot of pressure on the cord itself. And that pretty much can impact anything in your body that's in alignment with that area or anything below that. And so, like, we had fears for a long time, like, like, if this bleeds badly, could could paralyze her or something like it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Thank God. Um, but yeah, as of January, when we get checked out again. Um, I think we're going to maybe as long as everything looks good, we're going to maybe go on another big vacation and then start trying. So, Oh, okay. that would be fun. so because it's kind of improved on its own or improved with lifestyle changes or whatever made it improve, mm-hmm. you're thinking it's not surgical. Definitely not. Yeah. Like, like it was, it was fucked up when we like first started investigating it. Cause we went to a doctor, like a surgeon near us here in St. Louis and like went to a good hospital and the guy immediately like saw it x-rayed and was like, this is a tumor. I'm, I'm willing to operate on it. And we, I was like, this guy's fucking 72. Like, no. And like, I, I remember, I remember literally leaving and like me and my wife were like in so much distress, like, cause it, it put, it was an enormous amount of stress for both of us still, you know? And I was literally telling her, she's like, I don't want to have spinal cord surgery and I'm scared. And I'm like, that fucking quack is not touching you. We are finding, <laughs> I li- we, I, we said this on the way to the car. I'm like, we are finding the guy for cavernous malformations of the spine, wherever it is. And we are going there. And it just so happened that that guy is at the Mayo Clinic up in Minnesota. And so like, that's where we've been bouncing back and forth to. And immediately, like when that guy, this Italian guy who knows his shit, wrote the book on it, literally like, he told he immediately he? he was probably 50 55 maybe mm. yeah a great age 49 he was 49 and he, <laughs> his hands barely shake. yeah no I, his, his hands did not shake at all and he immediately was like this is not a tumor i know that for a fact just by looking at this i can tell it looks like a rare bleed um 
there's no reason to like go into a surgery right now because it's such a risky thing. Like I'm, he said, like, I'm comfortable with this. I've done it before, but it's never the right move to opt for the surgery before it's like necessary. Cause in, in the spinal cord, just a little fuck up and you're paralyzed or your, yeah, your, yeah. your life is over. And so it was pretty, it was really bad at the time, like a year and a half ago. And then we went back like a year ago and now it'll be January that the final one is. So I remember what all- happened. I read it as a carnivorous malformation. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, I don't always have my glasses on. You guys think I? Hey, wear she's, glasses she's got a little hey, piranha in her back. <laughs> hey, are you sure that it's not a carnivorous malformation? Man, that's a lot scary. I'm gonna have to get fucking a, an animal control guy. <laughs> I'm gonna if find the best animal control the guy in the, guy the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you needed a zookeeper. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's definitely not a Your dumbass <laughs> went to a surgeon. I feel like he's still alive. Here I am pissing money away at Mayo. <laughs> and I could have just went to to Oric. <laughs> like a crocodile hunter type situation. Yeah. So like it's it's way better than it was. Like she Great. can lift and everything. Like it it's. We don't think about it the way we did before because there was like quite a bit of time there where it was like <clears throat> I was personally just obsessing over it. So fucking worried 24 seven and like she's worried about it and I'm trying to like be the strong face. But in, inside I'm like, oh, my God, like, please be OK. Like, uh, yeah. it was, it's, it was it's been rough, but she's doing much better now. Yes. Yeah, so now and you'll try for a baby this winter. We'll see. I mean, I, really, I want to I want to get through that doctor's appointment and see what they say. Taylor. And if he has any like advice for us about that, things to be on the lookout for, but it's so rare. He has that, like, advice for you? Like, know, like uh, if this starts happening, like, you know, from when, behind, like, it gets closer it. to the cervix. It's a better delivery. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he's doing. Telling me how to inseminate her. <laughs> like I'm like, no, I understand that part. <laughs> he just carries on anyway. Yeah. And not to brag, but I can do it a lot faster than you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy taking forever. <laughs> this is a Taylor, you should really wait until we know how the election goes. To you know, if Trump doesn't become president, do you really, really want to bring a child into this world? Yeah, do you want to have a bring a child into Biden's America? <sighs> that's that's so true. <laughs> I often make life changing decisions based on who won the election. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah I'm not going to have a kid if Biden wins again. Kyle, I bet we need to see your like dog. That. Yes, get the dog. Uh, get him up. Get him in the mix. He's leagues from here. I took I took him away. He's gone. What is happening? Why he was he was all tuckered out and he flipped dog. his fucking water bowl over it and then he rolled in it. Oh god, I bet he wet. looks like the last one or even oh, worse. And now Kyle's just, worried about how Judge Matthew guys were. That's what it is. That's what it is. Kyle's afraid we'll find a defect in his new He's dog. downstairs getting dried <laughs> off. And he's I, got I, sloth I, from Ice Age in the basement. Not good. We, yeah. we, it's very no cute sloth dog. from the Goonies in the basement. I mean, you've got a picture <laughs> of him. Kid, the <laughs> sloth. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a picture of him somewhere, right? Like, like you can show a photo of the dog. I just don't have him handy. You know, here, he's I, in I, the house. He's he fast. was handy previously. He was biting oh, on your toe God, and over the camera, and, and you're so much faster than him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone needs to take that dog to the dentist. It's got a little underbite. Poor. Fella. I don't think a de- I don't think a dentist can fix that. With enough money, you can you can fix anything. I think you just want to put that one down. That's a that's a lost cause. I wonder how hard it is to recover from that leg lengthening surgery. I'm talking uh, about supposed to be pretty agonizing now. Don't they have to? Isn't it like months and months to? It would make sense that it is like like it's three months. So I broke my leg recently, and uh, just to for get that, taller or just like incidentally, <laughs> I did it for fun. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, um, just for those bones which were already like touching to reconnect is like mm-hmm. a good twelve weeks. Now, they, with the leg lengthening surgery, they take the bones and separate them by a few inches, and the bones have to grow back and find each other along like the length of this metal rod. That must take years. Let me see. Do you think do these people look normal? Like, wouldn't your body mm. be not proportional if you just lengthened? Like, yeah. what is it? Just like your femurs or whatever? I feel like you've got to look weird as fuck. Like your, your arms so would look short. They do it in their shins a lot, and if they want to oh, add okay. a little more to it, they'll do the shins and the thighs, based on what I'm reading. And uh, I do see them as a little leggy, but <laughs> it seems like you can add on a good like four inches, maybe five, and still be like. Yeah, all right. So look at that guy. Is he's a 
He doesn't look disproportional to me, actually. That one looks like better than normal. I don't know. That's a slender man looking motherfucker to me. He's got a black shirt on. It makes him look a little fat. I don't know if I trust that. He's wearing shoes. Wait, in the are second you talking one. about the doctor? Um, wait, who's the guy in shorts? The guy in shorts is the guy who. He's got the taller. patient. Yeah, he looks like he's. I don't know. He's looking a little lanky there. He, but he's also he's not wearing shoes in the first photo. Um, he, socks in one why did the doctor get shorter? <laughs> Yeah, wait, what? There's a lot. Did he donate of his own going legs? On in this picture. <laughs> There's some yeah, forced perspective. What the fuck is going here. on in this photo? <laughs> <laughs> Can we find another one? I, I just, I uh, Zach, Zach, I just, I just linked a whole forum that has a bunch of examples of people. All right. So on the left, he's posts that thing still bisects at like the same spot on his ears. He got taller on the right, I guess. This right, his is, ears went up a cube. Uh, it looks like his feet. His knees are closer to the doorknob in the left one. This isn't enough height to spend a bunch of months agonizing in pain. Like, I want to see like a really short guy who got to. Yeah, I want to see a guy who got six big trucking inches on him. Like, <laughs> that's a lot of. All right, all right, let's check out this chick. Oh, so no, her she... shoulders went from well below to on top. No, she is didn't she... get taller. Look at her left, her, the before. They were lengthening one leg to get it the same length as the other. Oh, wait, but she got taller. Am I not crazy? Look at where her shoulders are compared to that thing in the back. Look at where her hips are compared to the doorknob. I guess they just knocked them both out while they were there. Yeah, but she's also wearing a totally different outfit. I've seen enough before and after gym pictures to know that this is some sketchy shit right now. We got different outfits. We got different. The lighting is a lot brighter. Her hair is different. <laughs> well, look She's at smiling. Where I don't know if that are. makes it a little taller. <laughs> one might have been taken in the morning, one at night. I don't know if I'm trusting these pictures like one now. Up here she has and better like one... biceps in the black picture. <laughs> like <she's... clears throat> Let's see another one, Zach. A lot of these. Oh, a huge amount of these are like one person with a too long or not long enough leg. Mm. Okay. Well, that actually seems like a reasonable reason to need this surgery. Like one leg isn't long enough to walk comfortably, but a dude oh, who Kyle's dog is here. We didn't even notice. We got so distracted by the people. Oh, cute! Kyle, you cute muted. Up. But yeah, see. Yeah, we know. We've been talking about the dog here. <laughs> his name is Toby. Unless you change his name, you're still in the in the window where you can change it. But I think Toby's a cute little puppy name. Yes. What other ideas do you have, Kyle? Uh, Toby or Bernie? But I think Toby. I think your name is Toby. Your yeah. name is Toby. And he's already used to Toby. His long eight weeks of life. He's already <laughs> there. That dog he is, is so a much cuter. chill dog. Good gosh. No, is he always that chill? No, he likes to run around and like be silly and chew his toys and bark. And he's just, I got to, you know, he, he's done now. Yeah, he's done. He's done. <laughs> he's mm -hmm. got, do you have a little bow tie on him? I got a little bow tie. I have I'm, bow ties on my dogs too. He's got a bell. My wife puts it there, but I like it. They're, they're the bow tie boys. They run yep. around. Adorable. <laughs> yeah. So that's so that's all that our group chat was today. It was just sending clips of dogs. <laughs> Where's the bow tie? Uh, oh, I see. On the side. He's half uh, Bernie's mountain dog and half poodle. Speaking so, uh, of that, I talked to someone, or my wife was like, oh, that's going to be much bigger than 50 pounds because like my, like, my friend has one that's like right, 75, 80. So... Unless he's a real little guy, I think he's going to get pretty large. 70 to 90. I keep showing you guys that, and you're like, 50. I'm like, 70 to 90. Yeah. It's, 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 oh, yeah, 50. That's a good size. Like, 70 to 90. Is, is this muted? <laughs> like, I'm telling you. You just have to stop feeding him around, uh, that, that <laughs> around you know, yeah. six months. Plateau that size. Yeah, he's going to be about 50, 55, they say. I think you may have bought a pot. I think you, I think you may have bought a pot belly pig there. <laughs> gonna be a you gonna do a, 80, you gonna do a heckin' big jump? Do you have any uh, pets, Destiny? Fuck no. No, you're not a dog guy, cat guy. Nope. No, no they're cute. I like playing with them. I just I don't want to take care of the animals or anything. I feel you. Does your wife have any that you got conscripted into? Uh, nope. Actually, you have a kid. I do. Yeah, he lives in Nebraska. No, oh, yeah. So you don't. You're past the the dog thing. <laughs> or no, you know, you know, lots of people like, or at least like friends of my parents I knew when they got like empty nest syndrome, a bunch of them bought dogs. Uh, well, I mean, I moved, so my nest is pretty empty, but <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't even take care of my kid. Why would I want an animal too? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, 
No, the uh, I, the, it's nice, but like when you travel a ton and you got to find people to babysit them, and like you're, sometimes yeah. your house smells like pets, and I just I don't want to deal with any of it. But they're really fun to play with. If I go to other people's houses, it's fun to play with their pets. I guess I'm like a pet. Um, what is it like an uncle Slut. or aunt? Where they talk about how like they, it's fun to play with like your nephews and nieces and cousins or whatever, but you don't want one of your own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I nailed it. You think aunt? <laughs> I, I slut is what I went with. Like he just oh, sort slut. of goes around and no. plays with anyone that'll let him. That's there's a name for that. Sometimes like you you know when you pet a dog out in public and then you come home and you let your dog like smell your hands and they're kind of like and they're jealous. Yeah. What the, yeah. What you, then what you the have to do that doing? reclaiming pet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here for you, and he's like, you're playing around. You're yeah. There playing yeah. around as though it's we don't have a contract here of <laughs> an assumed contract of exclusivity. <laughs> i've been watching uh a bunch of those hurricane clips this shit is oh, wild the Cat fort myers four? is gone like how gone of it. like i dude florida's so flat i want like okay normally when i see a flooded out area i'm like oh sure but they have set the camera up to make that particular area look as flooded mm-hmm. as possible but Florida is so flat. I wonder how widespread the flooding is. Does it go on as far as the eye can see, like when the Mississippi overflows? Yeah, I don't know. I, I've just like watched the clips I've seen where it's like boats being thrown into buildings, like being thrown into the second floor of the building <laughs> or third floor or like a clip where it's like, you know, this is Fort Myers, a camera out the third story window in a, of an apartment building. And it's like the water's only like a foot below where they are. That, And I'm also like, like, I guess lots of people just stay every year and you're just like, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to roll the dice. But I mean, I don't blame people. Like I feel like it's, it's, it, I guess the same thing kind of happened with the coronavirus. Not like, do you remember before the, mm. before COVID, you remember how many times like the killer flu, like the bird flu, H1N1, we always thought that civil, like, civilization was going to end Ebola. Yeah, it's, yeah. It happens a lot with hurricanes in Florida too, where, and I think it was, was it last year or two years ago? It was sometime within the past three or four years where there was going to be what was supposed to be like the killer murder hurricane coming through Florida that was supposed to cause like terror and kill thousands of people mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And they hyped the. I think there are news of that. Um, is his name Shepard Smith or is it Mark Shep? Who's the guy on Fox News? Shepard Smith. Shepard Smith, where he's talking about how like, yeah, if you're here, you're going to die. You're going to die if you stay for this hurricane. And it came. Oh, I can hear him saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, He he actually was. He was super dry and he was like trying to like hype it up basically. But yeah, and then nothing happened. The people who were here are no longer. Yeah. (laughs) Actually, wait, have you seen it or you just like ad living? Oh, I was just ad living. No, I'm pretty sure he actually says this. Yeah. Like, the people who were. There was like, there were two people in there and that woman's husband. He's dead. Yeah. And um, And at the end, doesn't he go, and your kids? They're dead too. Like, yeah, like, it's a really <laughs> funny clip. But um, yeah, and it did ended up not happening. And then even here, like everybody called me dumb because, and I'm not trying to be an, uh, an anti alarmist or whatever. I'm not trying to say I know anything about Florida because it's my first year living in Miami. But a lot of people were making fun of me, like, "Oh, you gotta leave, you gotta leave, you're gonna get fucked or whatever." And I think we had like rain yesterday. And I'm like, okay. It came and in a little north of you, I think. I guess, yeah, yeah but it's basically like nothing. Yeah. I'm Miami's disappointed fine. in Biden, really. Like, I. I read it on the disappointed. Are you, is this the Republican? I'm in you. I'm disappointed. Biden's going to stop the well, hurricane. He didn't even attempt <laughs> he to tried. fix the hurricane's path with a black Sharpie. Like Trump True. would have given it a go. That is the weaponry that that man has at, at hand. I, I, if you don't put a strike on the next hurricane, then <laughs> you are literally committing treason. In my on no, the side of the hurricane. Trump at least considered nuclear weapons for the uh, black <laughs> hurricane. I never <laughs> really thought about it. All right. Think See, about that for a second. I did. What, when Trump saw a threat coming to the United States, you know what he thought? Mm-hmm. I got to stop it. this no matter yeah. what. Have you guys thought outside of the box ever about ways <laughs> to stop these things? Like, like a nuke. Th- that's going to nice- be a series of fans, the biggest fans you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> blow even harder than they just blow blowing in the opposite direction of the <laughs> hurricane. I don't see <laughs> why that would me. fail. People are talking about like, like that. Like, that's short sighted. It, what it shows, no, sir, it's feeding off the ocean. All right. So what if we move the ocean? OK, we just push that back a little bit. Now, what's the hurricane going to do? Let's push the ocean back 50 miles. We'll be good. Just drain it. <laughs> Where the drain water it. is, pull you, it out and put it to the side like you would. You don't really. actually want to destroy the hurricane. That's short-sighted. You want to you want to Heart. utilize and harness control the Look at the damage a hurricane can do. That's that's way cooler and more powerful than anything we've got other than nukes. And there's no yeah. fallout. So if we can control hurricanes, we control fucking You want to control something. earth? I, I think well, earthquakes. You could uh I keep seeing how low the lake levels are and stuff. Why don't they just take the hurricane and make it go to Utah? True. They should. 
they, do they have low lake levels over there? Is, are they going through a, a dry spell? Massively yeah, low. Yeah, it's like a work. huge thing. It, it. I remember, I'll make this up, like 8, 12 years ago, the lakes and river and the water levels in California and that area, you know, Colorado, et cetera, were so low. It was this tragic, never going to recover thing. And then it recovered. And now it's back. It's so low, never going to recover again. And I don't know. Maybe I'm they an always say that. the dip. Have you guys ever, um, <laughs> have, have any of you um, run into that, that issue that seem, seemingly is very common where you, you can't get water? Like you just can't get any today? Like that's just no, never happened. Wait, where at? You're at the store? I, or? I don't know. In your lives at any moment no. ever. Like, like no, they always talk about these water, water shortages, but, and they're, they're like, turn the fucking faucet off while you're brushing your teeth. I turn them both on the whole mm. time. My shower's I, running right now. <laughs> I got 12. We know that Woody shower is not running right now because if it was, it'd be like a public announcement. Like a FEMA would be deployed to Woody's fucking house. And it's part of my tradition. I, I run a piping hot shower during every PK. <laughs> There's something to be said for like the scariest things. You mentioned that without water thing. I think anytime like things change that are really familiar, I think things get really scary. So like if you've ever gone through like school when there are no students there, it's very fucking eerie. Yeah. I think the scariest moment of my entire life, the, the just the, I say scary, but like just very eerie, eerie feeling was driving up and down the 405 at rush hour hours and having there be no traffic in 2021 where the coronavirus, when it mm -hmm. first hit and every city went dark or not dark, but like quiet and nobody was anywhere and you drive and every place is empty. Nobody's driving on the interstate for the only time in your life in LA, there's no traffic. But when you go to the grocery stores, there's like a line of carts outside the store. And I'm like, Ooh, that's some pretty fucking spooky shit. I feel like I'm in a yeah. post-apocalyptic movie or some shit. Dude, the um, opposite happened thing. here. Like, yeah. So I being a fucking pussy liberal or something and staying inside obeying all the covid restrictions etc and you know we're like quarantining to the point where i've barely left the house in three months or something like that and then i venture outside because i have to you know into this freaking post-apocalyptic neverland and the traffic is down by like a third and I'm like, wait a minute <laughs> you guys have been outside all this time like it, it, i, I the traffic have you all is gotten COVID? Third, it's better. No, I haven't had COVID. Mm -hmm. I haven't had COVID either. <laughs> I'm one of the few people that I know that that haven't gotten it. And I, you know, I I did that. I was going to the gym every night and still mm -hmm. managed to avoid it. And I I low, attribute low traffic hours. Like you were you were you had your like it was like a play pen for you. Yeah. See, at the time that you know, I, I'm still going on how I was feeling at the time. At the time, mm -hmm. we we thought you could get it from like some you could like touch some sweat and then maybe like lick your hand or something and get COVID. We Just thought that. Doing that. I know you wouldn't do that, but, but but if you think about it, you'd operate some machinery and you'd like touch your headphones to adjust the volume, and somehow or another you'd like bump your lip or something. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, like sure. you thought that could give you COVID, and uh, and so I was like fucking like a surgeon going like like sanitizing my. I would sanitize my hands as I went out the door, and my notebook and my water bottle, like alcohol on everything, just using their alcohol to reckless abandon. Just, just didn't give a shit how much I wasted. And then I'd kick the door open and st stumble out of there. That's kind of you to clean up after you were done. That's a that's a gym epidemic. It's like people not returning carts, just sweating all over shit and expecting everyone else to just lay in it. Very rude. That's so the thing. equivalent to that in the gym is I don't mind the I don't mind the people that don't wipe stuff down because like I figure if you go to use something, sometimes you'll wipe it down first anyway, so it's whatever. But it's people that don't put shit back. That's very rude too. Just leaving. Or shit there will on be like hotel. sometimes there'll be the oddest combination of weights on the rack. I'll come and I'll be like. There are no 2.5s here. Where are they? But for some reason, there is like eight five pound plates. <laughs> like, <laughs> what were you doing? Drop yeah, sets, you, bro. Or, or <laughs> like, I just, yeah, I'm so confused. Or like people that will put like people that will put the 45s back way up where the 2.5. Some guy is going out of his way to yeah. hoist these 45s up <laughs> on like to block off all. You know, there's like some girl that wants to like do her 85, 90 pound squat and she can't even pull the fucking plate <laughs> off without killing herself. I do that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I always, every time I go down, I rearrange everything just through because where you're resting between sets, or whatever. And it just mm -hmm. drives me crazy every time I go on the next day. And it's just like, if you're big enough to use the 45s, if you're big enough to put them back where you found them. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's like I take it I, all, I take them off in my home gym. Like, yeah. <laughs> not me. I leave my shit right where it was, and Jackie gets mad. She's like, <laughs> you know, there, there's 200 pounds on the bench press. 
I'm like, yeah, that way it'll be there the next time I need to bench press. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good work. I've I've done that before for my wife. She's like, I need you to take this off, like, because I'll leave them on the machine sometimes in my basement, and I'll be like, no, just like work up to it. And she's like, I can't overhead press 180 pounds. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like not, not that, with that attitude. attitude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> not until you buckle down and get serious about this. Like you start low enough with an overhead press, you can always do at least half the movement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see that? I, like I, I went to a, a lifetime fitness a few months ago with a friend, just like because I have a home gym. So like every once in a while, it's like fun. If I get invited to one, I'm like, oh, I'll see how the peons are lifting and they're much nicer equipment than what's <laughs> in my fucking rat's nest of a basement. But like it is, I could never go back. I'm too spoiled by my mm-hmm. home gym. Like destiny's right. If I see a guy that I have to wait even two seconds to get out of the squat rack, I'm like this, I'm just pissing time away. What am I doing? May as well be at the bank. It's infuriating. I like, don't think I ever had to wait um, the whole the Well, whole you went time. at two in the morning. Yes, that is when you go to the gym. Uh, that is the that is the time to go because then you. But isn't wait. your now you're a home gym master race member? It's yes. better. It's Infinitely mostly better. better, but there's something to be said about having like I don't know two hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment to like goof around with if you want to. Uh, it's kind of nice, and you know if anything ever breaks or whatever, it's on them. Um, there, there's some there's definitely still some positives about like a big, nice, well equipped gym. And if you have that kind of like sleep schedule where you work nights or work from home or you can you can be flexible, it was so nice strolling in there at, at 2 30 in the morning and being like, I might see two people and like they'll have the same grind set that I've got and they'll be cool people. Like, what are you doing here? I'm training it. To- it was the fireman. I was I, he was training to be a better fireman. He was just full gear, the fucking gas mask, respirator thing, the helmet, the pants. And he's on the stairmaster, fucking going. And I was like, "That's the most hardcore thing I've ever seen." That's, That's pretty what, sick. What? Because there's nobody there to watch him. Did it have buildings more than two stories? Was it Hartwell? <laughs> like... <laughs> we're, in, we're in Locust Grove, but but uh, so, you know, I, I don't think he's actually training for stairs as much as just to be fit you don't need you know? a stair master just to go upstairs bro you just need to go <laughs> you back can be like... the stair apprentice and still get I, up there I, I feel you he was working hard though I there's like 30 cats stuck on the second floor of this house <laughs> oh but, they, but they're, they're, they're they're angry you can only bring them one at a time <laughs> <laughs> oh, back up everyone i've been training for this <laughs> There was no, uh, that that's cool. Sometimes I would like my if my workout went long or if I started it closer to four um a.m., then I would end up seeing some of the early morning crowd because you know it's it, it's all this like it all melds together. There's the late night crowd, the midnight crowd, and then the morning crowd. And at some point, they each become one another. And the morning crowd could be super fucking lame. There was that one guy in the wheelchair that had the headphones on and he was always singing and doing like. I won't say it it wasn't kata, okay? Because there he wasn't like actually doing kata, but his hands are always busy. He's like hand, you know, he's in a wheelchair. So that's you know, he's mm-hmm. he's being very expressive with his upper body. He's like twisting the chair, snapping the fingers, finger guns, fucking getting pumped up. And he's <laughs> doing like, like him. You didn't like dude, the finger guns. I didn't like hearing him like under his breath, and you could hear his his like fucking beats fucking <laughs> I, I you know what him. I prefer that to I don't know if it's just Miami. People here play, are if you play it out loud, I'm gonna complain. Yeah, people here will have their phones or they'll have the shitty Bluetooth speakers and they'll just be like playing it for for everybody to enjoy. And I've thought about like I have you can kind of see it in the background. I have like one of those big Marshall speakers that I've thought about yeah. bringing down to the gym and just setting the huge thing there and <laughs> cranking it up. If that's what we're going to do, I mean, it's in my apartment, so I just have to take it down the elevator, which would be I'm funny. I'm going but. to donate the, re- or, or dedicate the resources of the Destiny mm-hmm. Enterprise to winning the gym battles. People do that outside too, though. Like, listen, if you want to blast your music for everybody, at the very least, you should have to blow at least $1,000 on some shitty sub and amp on your car to do it. But now these motherfuckers can walk up and down the street with these Bluetooth speakers, like blowing this music out while they're just walking around. God, it's so. Oh, have you annoying. seen? Uh, they 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 have they have those speakers on bikes, on fucking. Motorcycles. Oh yeah, I've seen those too. Yeah, bro, listen, get some headphones. There are Jesus. really nice Bluetooth systems for your helmet that mm-hmm. sound good, and you, they integrate every app. And you're because you know your phones the whole. There's no excuse for being that asshole. I, I, if you're in a parade, 
Like that's the time. Parades. Mm-hmm. That's the time when you you blare sure. your fucking music. That is the only fucking time. They do it on like a Sunday afternoon like in like some little small town yeah. here in Georgia when everybody's cruising and having a good time. Mm-hmm. And I don't it doesn't even matter what your taste in music is. I don't care what you're playing. It could be the Star Spangled Banner. It's too fucking loud and it's coming out of a Harley, you asshole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My Goldwing has those speakers. I've never used them outside my garage. In the garage, if I'm like installing a new trunk rack or something, I, I might turn the radio on. Um, Your motorcycle's neat. It. Uh, we just went on a big trip overnight last night, and the, uh, the exception to my speaker thing on the motorcycle, I wonder it like if you're like on the interstate highway, if you could hear it, like I, no, no, over the sound of the bike, like next like, to you, I don't think so. I guess you guys are communicating back and forth, huh? Via via helmet. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our stuff. helmets are connected to each What's other. What's the quality and like to the on the same that? playlist? It's good. Uh, it's really good. It, it, that bike in particular that has good wind protection helps a lot. Um, and when yeah. we do it on my other bikes, you know, kind of like fighting the wind. Of... That's blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, but I, uh, I I didn't upgrade my helmet with the stuff partially because I got in that that little spiff with the dealership. <laughs> y'all wrecked their google reviews by the way nice job man uh you know when the owner of the company calls me that like <laughs> y'all matter. wrecked them y'all wrecked them um so thanks for that but but no, so i was gonna upgrade there but then after riding the bike for a while i was like i want to be able to hear things i'm i, I want i need to be able to hear things it, I, it would be like sometimes i can get paranoid if i'm home alone and like I don't know if I, if I, if I can't hear everything, like I'm I'm like like what if somebody's breaking into the house, not even trying to be sneaky right now? <laughs> like what if they're hmm. kicking the door in right now while screaming, "I'm gonna get you!" <laughs> and I can't hear them because I'm like blasting Justin Bieber or some gay shit upstairs, <laughs> or chatting with my friends or whatever. So, so sometimes I'll be like hey, Taylor up at late at night. I'll be like, let's make sure we're not getting snuck up on. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Oh, sp- in the mall so i got an xbox series x and uh, i can't find any games for it that i feel like i both enjoy and are like new games that take advantage of it being Mm. the most powerful gaming console supposedly any recommendations destiny i don't know i i can recommend you anything but i know that back when i used Mm. to have console then the last thing i bought was a ps4 yeah um they're obsessed with making all these fucking games backwards compatible for yeah. like the next five fucking years. Xbox is too, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, yo, I bought the PS4, okay? I don't want these poor shitters using the earlier PS whatever playing my games. Make Great. games for my system because you know they're gimping the fuck out of whatever new shit. That's not a racial slur now, is it? Did gimp the- no, okay. no, we can gimp. You know that they're gimping the fuck out of any new <laughs> game know. they're making because they're trying to make it like backwards compatible too. And the, um, yeah, I don't know. That triggers a fuck out of me. And you have to wait till the that system hits like the end of its fucking life cycle for them to be developing exclusively for the PS5 or the Xbox Infinity or whatever the fuck they're at now. Um, yeah, I don't know. That always triggered the fuck out of me. Yeah, I, really I, watched a, like I think it was Jack Frags. I watched a video of his where he's breaking down the, the new Modern Warfare and how it's backwards compatible and he shows mm-hmm. whoever it was shows you the the visuals quickly switching from like i don't know pc to the, the two leading consoles and then the 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 old ones he may have went back to xbox one i think it's xbox one compatible like jesus wait I xbox think it goes back. one the one from like 20 years ago no 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 there, there was that oh. was just xbox and there was xbox 360 and then i think there was xbox one i think he's going I'm back sorry, to like two two or three yeah. gens back i hope not um but but i can't find any games that i, that I even want to play I, I tried to play the alien isolation game and i fucking despise it like i thought i, I wanted a was horror game vr will the new xbox oh i don't have a vr headset for it i didn't even consider such a thing if i was going to do that then like i'm probably gonna get one of those 40 series cards um mm-hmm. when they when they when the ti comes out then i'll just fork over the 15 or 16 or 1800 dollars or whatever the fuck jesus yeah it'll be a while from now yeah six months right eight months something oh, like are you that. right destiny back me up say the 4080 drops how long before the 4080 ti i don't care about graphics cards i have no fucking idea i don't follow oh, any of this sorry. shit i thought you could, <laughs> yeah. well anyway I just, like, like i think i, I think i'm gonna wait and like, like get the good one but they're 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 fucking crazy expensive. It may be AMD time soon. I don't know. 
Uh, aren't all the prices coming down on GPUs because of the um, yeah. was it the the Ethereum no. fork or split or some shit? I thought a whole bunch of cards were coming back on the market now at lower than they were before. So Nvidia's uh, maybe the CEO was like, for those of you who there was a time maybe when cards got more get cheaper and cheaper, that time is over. Forget about it. And like okay. the new car, the new cards are starting at like sixteen ninety nine or fifteen ninety nine for like for the for the forty eighty I think. And just, I mean, the power consumption on it alone means that you've got to get like a much more expensive power supply unit. So this thing is getting you, this thing is incredibly expensive when you consider that you've got to support it with other I stuff. I think the, um, the new CPUs are also consuming more power. And mm. I've read that the heat, forgive me, I think 95 is like the new normal, whereas it used to be like 75 or 65. Like they're just, they run hot, which I assume means they take a lot of power. And I'm going to put a 1200... It, I'm gonna put at least a 1200 watt um, power mm. supply unit in. I'll have to 12 or 1250, some somewhere in there, roughly. Because, I mean, the, if I'm gonna run a 4090 Ti, potentially, I think you're gonna have to. What? So I have a 3090. I don't feel like I've ever played a game on a 1440p monitor at 120 fps that I felt like my GPU was underperforming on. Is there are there games right now that exist? Tarkov. Like can... So Tarkov's real CPU dependent. That's uh -huh. part of it, but it's just so poorly optimized. It runs like shit on the most premier of setups. Like, okay. like it, it, you're still only getting like 120 frames in 1440p or something like that. So like, uh -huh. there's room for for improvement there by beefing up and getting a three or four thousand dollar PC. It is time for me. I've got a 2080 Ti. It's time for for an upgrade. Okay. Yeah, man. Eh. I mean, it runs everything I play fine, but but I, but 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 I I wanted to fuck around on the console. Um, because that just seems more casual and I can do it on a TV. I've got a good 4K TV that does, I think, 120 frames that has one millisecond um, la input lag. Probably, so you can use yeah. it as a, as a monitor. It's real nice. And, I will uh, say, as somebody that's been computer gaming for 10 years and we've always kind of shit on console kids, uh, consoles look really, really, really good these days. The graphics are like hard. To, like, I always have a really good system. I, like I said, I've got a 3090 right now and, and playing through like some of the PS4. PS4 games, I think. The Final Fantasy VII Remake. Was that PS4 or PS5? I don't well, whatever know. it was, it looked really know. good. And I, it's really surprising how good some of the console games look these days. It's like this, I'm not like disappointed at all. The only thing that sucks sometimes is sometimes they're 30 frame rate, which sucks. And 60 is preferred, one, 120 or at least 90 plus would be good. But like, yeah, the games on consoles look really good today. The thing that sucks about consoles to me is some of the games I like to play, there's too many options. Like Tarkov, I swear, I use most of the keys on the keyboard to like lean to change weapons to fast <laughs> key shit to like you couldn't manage that inventory easily with uh no dark up wouldn't work on console like, you need to drag things from one spot to another i don't know how they accomplish that it's you'd have to reach the, over the thumbstick and grab it with a trigger and then drag it back it would be awful or you'd like hold a hold a trigger and then scroll a list and then press a button. It would be bad either way. Like you yeah, just selling something on the flea market for whatever, 15,999 rubles do that on a controller. Like that yeah, keyboard. Sucks. I mean, a console can't run Tarkov anyway. That That's a, mm -hmm. a good example of like the limitations of those things, but they will, the Xbox that I've got does 4k at 120 frames. Like that's cool. Like games yeah. look cool in 4k. I, I've, I've been messing around with Bioshock and um, dead space. Because but those are old fucking games. Yeah, I know so they're cool. remastering um, Dead Space in February. I think they're doing like a full remaster. I think it'll be 4K, and so I'm gonna replay it then. I'll play that. Uh, a remaster of all of all three of them. I just want to play the first one and maybe the second one. The third one's garbage. There's a there's an awful story about how they just bastardized the third game and made it a piece of shit. It's it's such an awful game. I'm all in on Dark Tide. I mean, and Callisto Protocol, Callisto out. Protocol is the single player experience for like that I'm looking forward to, but Dark Tide is the multiplayer experience for sure. Um, yeah, we should, we should, we could stream it together some if y'all wanted to. I will yeah, um, definitely. I'd be, yeah. Yeah, that game no so pressure much fun. anything. What is Dark Tide? I have no idea. Dark Tide is a four player co op, um, sort of slashy shooter. It's based in the Warhammer universe, uh, the Warhammer 40k universe. There's a previous title called Vermin Tide Two that we played that's based in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. So it's like magic and swords and bows and Guns. stuff. And the four of you hack oh. your way through like hordes and hordes of enemies and get to the end of these like dungeons. Uh, it's real fun. You have to work together or you will lose. Mm -hmm. And like it's there's enough skill involved that 
it kind of separates friend groups into different <laughs> tiers of skill, you know, oh, and it'd be no. like, Oh, you're on. All right. We can play for fun. I guess let's, let's, let's right. use silly classes. <laughs> you know, that happens, but, but oh, dude. so that we're reminds- really pumped for like how much grinding and time you have to put in to get the good weapons and the good amulets and shit in this game. Cause they I'll stream a, a bunch bit. of that. I'm excited for it. That'll be fun. Some- yeah. Yeah. Reminds me of when Apex came out. There must have been a lot of awkward friend groups when you found out that you were like the fourth friend in the group. <laughs> it was like yeah. the only game that oh, had three that player play- teams. Yeah, uh, so it was everyone a mean, discovered it, they were the fourth favorite friend. Yeah, it was mean. I didn't like it. So we'd often break into two teams of three or something like that. We didn't play Apex long. We mm-hmm. were not that we were good enough to like 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 it to matter. Um, that Apex is one that um, I don't know that that was cool when it came out, but I lost interest quickly. I don't remember what I went back to. Maybe PUBG. What was or interesting about Apex was how big it was. Like I, mm-hmm. I want to say like only Pokemon Go had a release that hit you know, <laughs> as hard as Apex did. And that was it huge. Was, yeah, Pokemon Go came and went almost as dramatically as Game of Thrones did. <laughs> yeah, it's back. Game of Thrones is back. Have, have oh yeah, the new Game of Thrones. People like the House of the Dragons, right? So I, I resisted it at first um because it's fine you'll there are a few people on the planet that are as upset about the last season of game of thrones than i am i oh i'm up there (laughs) i had gotten i had gotten i had become such a super fan that like so i moved recently and i was going through some bags i have so much game of thrones stuff that i left in the packaging in disgust like banners (laughs) i have like the big targaryen banners that you would drape on either side of a fireplace the good ones Fuck that shit. The good Fuck that one. shit. <laughs> like, 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 I, like, like I, I was so genuinely upset, and I, I and like we were all I, pissed. I bitch about it on this show at least twice an episode. I'm real <laughs> upset about it, and, uh, yeah. and so I, I swore this new show off. But like I kept hearing good things, and I like Matt Smith, so I gave it a chance. And while it is not Game of Thrones, like, like it, it's not like oh my god, I can't wait yeah. for the next episode. That hasn't happened yet. Although, give them time. I'm four or five episodes in. It's a fun show, and it's based in the same universe, and I take the character seriously. Matt Smith, they're going to have to kill off because he's just way too likable and cool. He's like a mixture of Jamie Lannister and um, Tyrion Lannister. Yeah, you said I would start liking him, and I watched episode three last night where he gets a little more violent. I'm like, all right, this guy's coming around. I'm liking him more. And <laughs> he's the guy who cracks jokes and is sm- is the smartest guy in the room, but he's also like the best fighter and diabolical motherfucker in the room. He's so a little like, oh, OP. You're... They're gonna have to nix him. They're gonna kill him. They're gonna kill him, and everybody's gonna and and, and that'll be their Ned Stark. I guarantee. That's my guess. That's my guess. No guarantee. Well, Ned Stark was never cool. That guy was a fucking clown. Okay, let's be. Real. We love like, Stark. The way here. you describe me, we're Starkmen. Like, okay, he sounds like the uh, Oberon character, maybe. Who this uh, guy yeah. from? Yeah, <laughs> Oberon character. Yeah, no, I, Oberon was tight. Everybody liked. Oberon was awesome. Yeah, I mean, that Kyle's right. It's not a bad. It it's a fine show. Like, but it is not. I'm not getting the Game of Thrones vibes. I'm not that invested in it. I'm. It's just kind of a. Have you gotten episode four? Cornish. Well, that's what I'm on. Uh, I'll probably watch that tomorrow. Have you gotten to the incest underage sex party? Jesus I haven't, Christ. I, you know, I haven't. I would remember. <laughs> and, right. and I have not well, gotten to that yet. So I, I'm going to leave your knickers around your knees. They all the blend alley. together, Kyle. Which incest underage sex party is the question I ask? The second one. Um, all right. <laughs> it's a, Yeah, that happens. And I felt a little uncomfortable because the actress is sort of, I thought of her as like 13 to 15. The actress is 22, but the character I think of is like 13 to 15. And while it's dark and it's one of those implied kind of things, I don't think anything actually happened, but it was like, I think she was getting like finger banged or something. Like like that's the idea or like definitely felt up in a real sexual way by a relative who's like 50. (laughs) It was awkward. Uh, But, but and the dragons and, and the dragons are just kind of, there you know we've all got dragons and uh i'm a little i'm they're they're getting too ham-handed with the dragons in the three episodes even like i mean they're they're spamming dragons there is not a problem like dragon 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 like (laughs) Like, it's it it makes it almost less interesting because it's like we haven't yet encountered an issue that can't be solved at least transitively with dragons yeah there's a lot of girl empowerment which i'm fine with don't give a shit the dragon thing kind of makes sense, I think, right? Because in the it it, in my opinion, I think a prequel should make you view 
the original material in a slightly different light. Sure. This is why I hate the Star Wars prequels. Um, because I feel like the, the goal of the Star Wars prequels is to make you feel sympathetic towards Darth Vader, but instead it just made me hate him even more because yeah. Anakin was such a dog shit. Because his problems were so small. He's, he's a piece Yeah, of you're like, what like... the fuck, dude? Yeah, like, but the, uh, in, in this, um, in, in the House of Dragons, I mean, in Game of Thrones, they always talked about how fearful, you know, the Age of Dragons, yeah. they've got all the dragon skulls and how the Targaryens would ride the skies and blah, blah, blah. And nobody took it seriously except when people started to take it seriously. So having like an earlier world where you're like, oh, this is why everybody hated dragons is because they could spam them at any problem and win. I guess kind of makes sense. But I haven't watched yeah. all of them. So, yeah. it, it makes sense. Like from up because if I were in their position, like I'd be doing the same thing. It's like when you play a fighting game and you realize like A is all you need. Like they're like, oh, uh, the, the crab lord is upset with us. And he's like, oh, my God. The uh, send a dragon. Okay. Uh, this this guy he doesn't want to come to the table with with uh, negotiations. Oh, I like oh, the daughter. Let's send the him only... a dragon, and then he's gonna be like, "Oh fuck, I forgot they had dragons." Oh, I didn't though. This was for exposition. Like <laughs> the name of the show, by the way, is House of Dragons. So I, know. I, I get it. Um, it is the House of Dragons. I just. So far, it is not surprising that there's not a lot of critical thinking skills in the Targaryens because they're they're spam and a. Have you got this? So there's an episode where the daughter is being. I'm, these are not, there are no spoilers here. I promise. Uh, the, there's do, the the daughter is being. Um, she's looking for a, a husband, and like men are coming to her. Like I'm Lord Wentworth of of shithole manor, and I'm yeah, I, I'm hardcore or whatever. And like one dude comes up, and some guy in the crowd starts like mocking him, and, and I think he even calls him a coward. And the kid and the kid's like twelve. Everybody's been laughing at him, and, and the twelve-year-old like pulls his fucking sword out, and he's like, "Let's fucking go!" And like <laughs> the, the girl's like, "We're out of here!" And like so they get up and they're leaving, and just as she gets to the door to leave, you hear someone go, "Oh!" And she turns around to see this child has gutted this grown man over him, calling him a coward in front of her, and she's like, "All right." <laughs> like I that like moment it. alone made me be like. I kind of like her. All right. I like that. She she saw him, that child disemboweled another man. And she was like, all right, cool guy. Cool guy. I remember you na your name, Lord Wentworth of, of shit. <laughs> Lord <Manor>. Wentworth of <laughs> whatever, shit Manor. whatever. I think there's, I bet it, those, uh, those YouTubers who do the like Easter egg shows are just jerking off with both hands somehow, because there's, I can tell just by the way they're doing things that there must be so many Easter eggs where it's like, Oh, that character who just in introduced himself is is his great great grandson is gonna kill that guy's great great grandson. It's like who fucking cares? You're making it up as you go. You can yeah. just, like, like you're just writing this. You're just making it up as you go. Um, it's good though. It's it's not a bad show. It's not a great show though, and that's what I wanted. I want another great show. Well, it's in and, line with the lore too, which is really important. Like it's based yeah, it on. Is. I on say they're making George it up, R. but Martin's. it's absolutely based on. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, like yeah. it's based on his his prequel book. And that's what the Empire. and that's what the Lord of the Rings thing can't say for the most yeah. part. I think a lot. So I haven't watched it, so I won't shit on it too hard. I would say that the 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 people that are shitting on it, I noticed that they seem upset about like Galadriel being like a bad bitch or something and just kind of riding around. I think she might kill a stone troll like single-handedly or some shit. I don't know. It, you know how nerds on the internet are. They, they're they very specific about the things they don't like. They're not like um, us cool people. Not like us. Not like us. <laughs> We're fucking cool over here. You see Woody's bathroom? No. Look at me. Look at how aloof I am. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're bad. You totally doesn't have an anus massager. Totally massager. cool. Peasant. Oh. Yeah. No, you're no, right. I, that, that you're def like people are more inclined. Like, I, I if I'm gonna watch it, like I want to see kind of George R. R. Martin's vision as as close as I can to it because he's clearly a guy who slow writer, but he developed an incredible world that is fascinating and and great to be in. It's I cool. uh, I saw that Hugh Jackman is signing back on to do a, the Deadpool three and mm -hmm. re and reprise his role as Wolverine, which he said he would never do. Uh, he uh, and and Woody and I were talking about this a little bit, and and we're really hoping that he gets back on the steroids and gets jacked. All because anything steroids. less be will huge, upset us. Jacked man, you better look big. If, if he comes back, and he uh, by the way, the way they teased it was really funny. Do you see the little video? Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Reynolds is sitting there in front of on his couch, and he's just like, "So we had this one idea," and Hugh Jackman is like way in the background, moving le camera left to right, like eating an apple, maybe. And he's like. Hey Hugh, you want to be Wolverine again in my next movie? He's like, yeah, sure. And he just he that's all he says and like like keeps moving off camera. And Ryan Reynolds is like, yes. And then <laughs> that, that's kind of it. It's kind of it. Uh, 
but but yeah, but I know everybody wants it. I think those two characters in the comics have a have a silly relationship, and it'll be a it'll be the good kind of comedy superhero movie. That's usually what those are. That last Thor movie was such fucking garbage. It was such fucking garbage. That Taiki wa TT guy, or, or I hope I, I I'm pretty close. Yeah, man, he, he just. He just made a sh- an awful one of the worst movies I've ever sat so that I, long in. I actually thought it was fine. Mm. Like that, that's my dispute. The thing is, it missed expectations by a ton. The previous Thor, one of my favorite Marvel movies, and I can see what happened. Like first they come out with Iron Man and like, oh, you know what? It's the quips that make it so good. And then they come out with this and that, and they're like, yeah. The reason this is better than the brooding, freaking depressing Justice League is, is how it doesn't take itself so seriously. How it has fun. It has little quips and I love you 3000 or whatever. And they just keep going and going until the recent Thor becomes the three stooges. And it, dude, it's it's fucking stupid. They went all in on those goats. Somebody thought that those screaming goats were the funniest thing they'd ever seen. I guarantee they saw one. We've all seen that Reddit gif Mm -hmm. of that goat going, ah! Like, like, yeah. yeah, it's funny when you see it the first time and you send it to three friends and then that's it. You don't make a whole fucking movie about it. Like, they have a, a magic school bus type spaceship that's pulled <laughs> by magical fucking goats and they're screaming the whole goddamn time. Every time. And look, it was it's all the over first goats. They say comedy comes in threes, but the eighth time they showed those goats, I was just so fucking sick of it. And, and look, like, Le- there's a worked out so hard for that movie that yeah. that that even popped in my mind i'm just like dude you, you got big for this <laughs> who's um <laughs> jane oh, foster man. right that's the character yeah. that that um natalie portman played yeah she's just trying to come up with a, a tagline right like it's thor in time or whatever and they <laughs> worked that fucking joke all movie long where she's trying to she's doing these lame taglines and thor is always like oh. no nah, that's not it we forgot the best part Go on. This slapstick Three Stooges comedy movie that they've turned this thing into, the core of the story is that Natalie Portman is at death's door with cancer that is taking her like looks and life away. She's about to die, and the only thing that's propping her up at, visually is the magic of the goddamn hammer. This is this is based on a comic book. I can't remember the exact name on it. It might just be Lady Thor, but it's this exact thing happens. The Natalie Portman character, Thor's girlfriend, gets cancer. She's dying, and Mjolnir like props her up long enough. But I think she might even die in that. But it's a sad, reflective story about cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and Taiki Ratiti was like, "Yeah, give me that. I'll make a bit a laugh of it." And <laughs> and and this is what you get. Like like if you watch Jojo Rabbit, you can see that he's got like one note. It, Jojo it, Rabbit. It, yeah. Yeah. Wait, did you not like that movie? I've never I seen love that, that movie. movie, but oh, okay, I bet, okay. but oh. I but I think all I, I think I, you can just kind of tell like his style and like oh, his okay, thing. Okay. It was he a comedy plays, about Hitler, wasn't it? It's a comedy yeah. where he play. It's okay. about a little boy dealing. It's it's about the Holocaust, not the Holocaust, but World War II and the Nazis through the eyes of this little boy. So it's a bit fantastical, and he has an imaginary Hitler that he talks to all the time, who's played by Taiki Waititi, I think. I don't really know. well. Um, he he does a good job playing a silly, funny Hitler. It's a good movie, but it's like I can tell what your sense of humor is, and you, like you don't go outside that little box. It's the same thing over and over, and it's I don't know. I hated that Thor movie. I felt did I pay for that shit? I think maybe <laughs> it was, I think it was free on Disney. So I, I guess I guess well I pay for Disney, so I guess they yeah. got me. I guess they get me coming and going over there. I don't know, but no, I, di- I didn't love it, and I'm not too hyped for any of the new Marvel stuff that I've heard about. I guess Daredevil could be good because they're bringing that, oh, you know, over to Disney with the Marvel. They're bringing the people from Netflix over to do their thing now on Disney, right? You know, the the whole Daredevil cast. Oh, you're saying Daredevil? I can't get my head out of Deadpool. The blonde la- lawyer guy, yeah, but um, blonde. the blind lawyer. Bl- oh, okay, okay, thanks. He doesn't yeah. know what color his hair is. It's dark. <laughs> but he doesn't dark. know what color his own hair is he's saying but yeah the only other thing i'm right i'm watching right now Superhero is uh, sucks rick and morty's pretty good this season um but they, they the the last episode was was actually kind of a horror episode it's pretty fucking creepy uh it's been a good season of rick and morty other than that i'm like out of shows i don't know what to watch you didn't you, didn't have, like wait, you said you don't you. 
You said you don't know what to watch, but you didn't watch the Lord of the Rings one at all. The new. I refuse. I refuse to watch that. Oh. That's out of principle. I'd that's, like to see that's, you watch that's Survivor. A principle thing. Yeah, Here, Survivor. People let, love that. Let me pitch Survivor for you. So, so, as you know, it's a bunch of people go on the island and they need to survive this thing. Right? It is all about social manipulation. You'd think if you don't watch the show that it's about the ability to like win these challenges or whatever. No, you're trying to appear useful but not too useful threatening mm -hmm. but not too threatening you don't want to be a total moron that they vote off but you also don't want to be a threat that they're like well we can't have this guy in the final five it'll be really hard to get rid of him then we need to get rid of him now i watched that show jackie and i watched the show and unlike so many other reality stupid shows i'm like fuck these people are all better than me they're all clever. <laughs> there aren't any stupid fucks in this show. This guy is a better athlete than me. He's a better <laughs> narcissist than me. He's a better every like this. Whoa, that's a smart move. Like this guy saw that <laughs> coming. This guy worked hard to find this immunity idol. Like this guy threw this match so that he could. Uh, he's. I'm a checker survivor player, and these guys are chess survivor yeah, players. They're duplicitous. I haven't in. watched a reality show like like that style the in a long other than Master Chef. So <laughs> the <laughs> last I'll make it up. I think maybe twelve survivors. I'm I'm not sure about these numbers. Eighty percent close. There's dozens at this point. Right? There's like twenty four people on the show, but the final twelve become the jury that decide amongst the final three which win. Mm -hmm. So once there's only twelve left, you have to vote them off. You have to defeat them in a way that makes them like you because you're trying to win they're going to decide if you win in the end or not so people are like i need to make big moves right i need to fucking shit can mm -hmm. this guy in a fabulous triple cross way so that when they vote who the best survivor was they're impressed by what a duplicitous dickwad i can be yeah or the i need to be chip. honest the whole way one thing that doesn't work is you can't be goody two shoes but a little dishonest about the like ah oh, he was pretty good but he wasn't really when it came down to it he wasn't that good now i got nothing going for me i'm neither goody two shoes nor the biggest dick on the island and no one's impressed mm -hmm. by that halfway thing that you got there that oftentimes there'll be two great challenges at the end and then the third one that only made it there because he or she was so non-threatening they wanted a fuckwad mm -hmm. next to them mm -hmm. that they could out that the jury would be more sure. impressed and I want, when you watch this, I think that you're really – I think you'd be good on that show. But I, I I watch it, and I'm like, I think I'd get my ass kicked on this show. I <laughs> I would not be able to maintain all those relationships, tell all those lies. Guys get caught in a lie. And he's like, listen, I told you the truth like 80% of the time, and that's not bad for Survivor. And they're all like – yeah, strong point. This is good defense. <laughs> G minus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just don't like reality shows. Or maybe I'm just not in. I, I want something that's hard sci fi. Like, like, I want something that's a bit like for all mankind, um, but, but with some sort of. Actually, I think Apple TV has an alien invasion show. Maybe I'll try that. I think they spent a lot of money on it and then, like, nobody watched it. Maybe it was one of their, like, launch titles. You but, could watch um, the Dahmer show that came out. I think I, I might thought be, about that, might but be, the way you described it made it so seem so gruesome that it's I pretty, often watch it's TV pretty late ruthless. at night, and I don't I don't need to be like walking my dog at, at three a.m. thinking about Dahmer with a power drill. I mean the the guy who's like you could take Dahmer. Uh, the actor who plays Dahmer is very good, and I mean it's a it's a well made show, but it is fucking Dahmer ruthless. drugged his Dahmer like, drugged, drugged his, uh, yeah. victim. Step one mm -hmm. in Dahmer's technique was to get you to go back to his place hoping to get ass fucked. If it was avoid to offer, that step. It was to offer you drugs, and I would absolutely <laughs> say yes <laughs> if I was walking my dog and some white dude with glass was like, "Yo, bro, you want some good stuff?" <laughs> you would have been so <laughs> raped and murdered. I'd be like, "Can I do it right?" Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Give me. What do I do with it? And he's just like. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, we, we yeah. Sitting, I snort it or like rub it we, in my eyes. Like my my, my wife, care. like my, my wife gets like more spooks puts than the me, lotion and on the skin. she she gets more upset by like gory shows and stuff. And we were sitting watching like maybe the end of episode two or three, one of them last night, and it was like the point near the end of the episode. Like if you know about Jeffrey Dahmer, it's not a spoiler where like he had lured the young pro male prostitute like with promises to pay him for pictures. And he'd already drugged the guy and 
he walked into the other room and like the guy's like barely with it, like can't move paralyzed. And it just shows like him seeing through the crack into Dahmer, like playing with a drill and he comes back in and he sits down and he's like, I'm just, you know, I'm just, it's just a little drill. And then it's just a little boiling water and an acid I've got in here. And then I like paused it and I'm like, do you really want to keep watching this? Cause like we'd already paused it. And she was like, I, I know I shouldn't, but I'm interested. And I was like, no, we're not. And, and so I, I literally just backed it. I'm like, you're not watching this anymore. You, you will have nightmares from this. And yeah, I went back and watched the episode. That's what he fucking does. And uh, <laughs> it is, it's ruthless and it's not even really the gore as much, but every episode has a huge amount of time devoted to like the sexual violence lead up where it's just like him like tricking him and the guy once again going through the like, this isn't a normal guy who wants to fuck, which, you know, shame on them for not realizing that before. And then he just drugs them. And then while they're like losing control, he's like almost taunting them and like explaining. I can't tell if he's taunting them or not because he like would keep body parts because he just wanted them to be close to him and stuff. Apparently, like he, yeah. he want, there was a scene like he's like kissing a fucking decapitated head, like he talked about in his interviews, nice. like in real life. It's just it's gory and gruesome, and it's it's. I know it's a Jeffrey Dahmer documentary, but the 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 the, the, the rape is ham handed. It's it's too much. It's too. It's not like a scene of someone getting raped, but the lead up to it is very like upsetting. That energy of like some, seeing someone totally helpless, totally outside of their control, at the whim of a maniac who like wants to save pictures of or not save pictures of them, save like save pieces of them, like just cutting off people's dicks to save or cutting off their hands to save, and then that guy was fucked. It, it it's wild to even even in the field of serial killers to be such an overachiever. <laughs> that people were like, oh, dude, what the fuck, man? Like, you decapitated them and then raped them? Like, dead? Like, oh, that's <laughs> that's gross, man. Well, like, so, um, um, the, 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 the whoa, who, who was the, Ed Kemper? You know, Ed Kemper yeah. was the one who cut all those women's heads off, and I think he was having sex with them, too. Yeah. He's, a, he, he's like, such a nice guy when, in Ed, his interview. Ed Kemper, he was the one, he, didn't he behead Co-ed killer. Him? He, he bed he did he behead his own mother and then yeah. fuck her decapitated head. Okay, you're right. He's in the mix. Yeah, with yeah. with Dahmer. Yeah, I, I I think. Did you he say made he a good bed case her for and then fucked her decapitated head? He no, beheaded, he beheaded her. her. Beheaded. beheaded. Oh, yeah. and then yeah. like had sex with her decapitated head as much yeah, as one he, can have sex with which her part head. the neck or the mouth the like, mouth hole. Well, don't no. be gross. Maybe I the mean, eye hole. Maybe the eye if hole. There's a rare opportunity. I, I, I'm, I, I'm fucking your eye hole. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I just feel like it's a little vanilla for a guy who I thought was it, kinky. Pretty gruesome. So I, I don't even think I'm going to finish that show. Yeah, it was a little, a little too negative. Dude, and, have you ever watched yeah. The Outsiders on HBO? Yeah, yeah, oh, the okay. one with. All right, uh, all right. Yeah, I've gonna, watched that. It's good. I was going suge- to suggest you get on that because I'm, I'm like. Two, the first two episodes of ended what is that the name of that one. old movie with all the hot big stars Emilio Estevez Tom Cruise what what are they doing are you talking about the young guns where they're all cowboys older and I thought it was the outsiders why am I fucking this up oh oh oh, 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 oh it's um it's the outlaws right or something like that or oh, oh are they all like gangsters with like yeah yeah pony boy is is a main uh, character it's, it's, in it? Ralph Macchio's in it. Yeah, I, I I can't bring up the name of that. I've never seen the movie. But, Zach but says I, it's called The Outsiders. I'm right. Oh. Does this other thing have the same name? It's a it's based on a Stephen King novel, and it's a spooky, dark drama that uh, the first episode a child is raped and murdered to death, and it looks like the yeah. man that the man that killed him has has like carved his back up and 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 eaten him some and okay. uh and and so uh that's the first episode and the second and jason bateman's character is accused of this and there is so much evidence against him that it's staggering hmm. and then jason bateman that so so without even interviewing jason bateman who's like the local little league coach they arrest him on the field in front of players and, and family announce what he's being arrested for he gets there with his lawyer his lawyer finally gets there and he's like I was at a conference a hundred miles away when you say this boy was killed. They and they look into it and there's video of him at the conference. And they're like, what but the and then they kind of take the mystery from there. And it's really, really good. The last episode's a bit of a letdown, but 
it's like a nine out of ten from beginning. I think I saw this. Actually, you might have. Yeah, I always sing its praises. It's one of the things I always direct people to. I, I just uh, I just linked something in the chat, Woody, that you're gonna love. We got from the horse's mouth, truthful and honest update, fair and balanced from Elon, from Elon Musk. Please show this, Zach. Oh. Cybertruck will be waterproof enough to serve briefly as a boat, so it can cross rivers, lakes, and even seas that aren't too choppy. Nice. That needs, <laughs> needs to be able to get from Starbase to South Padre Island, which requires crossing a channel. Wh- who, where does he get off? <laughs> Promising more features for a truck that is five years overdue. <laughs> like, now it's fully aquatic. Now it can handle. Now it can. Now it can handle calm seas. <laughs> That's insane. Who believes this? Has it, did the other Cybertruck even come out for mass production? No, they no. there's they never know. been a Cybertruck out. Okay. It's never coming. You just have the deposit. Can handle calm company. seas. <laughs> there's no way it can handle calm seas. The Atlantic can't stand up to the what propulsion is it going to have in water? He doesn't I, know. The tires do a wiggly wheel. <laughs> Needs to be able to get from Starbase to South Padre Island, which Figure requires how far crossing the channel. He you are a that hundred is. billionaire. <laughs> if you think for a second he's taking a romp across a channel in a, in a non-existent truck. Good God. No, that's retarded. I believe that. I believe that. What 49 I mean, miles? He thinks it'll go 49 miles across the water? Bullshit. He's okay. fucking okay. with us. He's getting us to talk about it. It's a joke. It's a, <laughs> you, know, you know what just occurred to me? You know, it's probably and I, and I, a joke. I, I'm, I'm stoned, so it only just occurred to me that it's an electric vehicle, so this is even more crazy. But oh, I don't know. He he's lost his... his. It's 49 minutes, and by the way... I, that's oh, a, what? No, no, no. Are you retarded? He, it, you go straight. He, he's got to cross that little thing by the white block, I think, is where he's going. So he's saying he wants to go straight across that bay, straight to South Padre Island, or that, that one hunt. I don't know which Just build a road, man. Maybe he's taking the road at the top right and just crossing that last bit. <laughs> I don't know. The important thing is, is that there's no fucking way this is a boat also. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's not even a car yet. It's not, right? even, <laughs> it's not, even, it's not even a car yet. Okay. Oh, for two. <laughs> on the on the promises, car and boat. Not even. Do you remember? Long. I think it was a Cybertruck where they were on stage and they were doing the demo of how unbreakable the glass was, and I think they yes. got it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he, you know, to, to oh, his man. credit, like he joked about that on the Joe Rogan show, and it was endearing. Yeah, you know, he talked about like how he was, he's like, and it just broke. <laughs> it was like, oh no, because <laughs> I think they practiced it a ton and it didn't break. Um, cops can never break the glass on cars, and it makes me wonder why there's not a better product to uh, to uh, to make that happen. They often have like pointy a spark ends. Plug. Well, they say that, but but like, you know, what the cops don't care. Why not take like whatever that hard shit that the end of a spark plug's made out of and make a put it at the base of a baton? You know the the pummel. Maybe it's they called. Have, they have those things like for your car that have like seatbelt cutters, and then it's got like, a little bit of sharp like tungsten or something that. Yeah, I've seen right. those. Why don't the cops have? Cause I just see. So I watch a lot of those videos, and I see the cops struggle with breaking a glass window time and time again. You need to just. I saw one last night. It seems where, like you're right. The cops, cops carry things, right? They, they a have utility a gun, they, belt. They're like they have. A, they have a flashlight. They have some mace. It seems like they should have a flashlight with the pointy end or something. Like just know that that's part of your routine. Yeah, or, or maybe maybe at the base of their baton or something. They just they're always struggling. Do they all carry batons? Is that a thing? Every cop I see has? so many batons. Like 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 okay. I, I would say fifty percent of the time they have one. It's probably a decision or a departmental decision whether they they can or or will. I know my my cop buddy told me that when you deploy one of those like gadgets, it's more paperwork. If you rough a guy up with your hands, it's like. Yeah, I physically restrained him and put him in the vehicle. But if you deploy a taser, it's like, and here's the cartridge and the video that was used, and here and it's a whole thing that has to be submitted. And there's is brandishing report. deploying. Does it deploy that, would mean you activate? Brandish just means you're threatening to use a yeah, firearm. Well, my, yeah, that's it, what it I'm means you used it. Yeah, like if so I take it, a baton out and extend it, is there any paperwork for that? Nah, if you whoop his ass with one, there might be though. Roger that. Okay. I yeah. bet people yeah. calm down mostly when that when that cool like, you, <laughs> like that no, cool. they don't. They're fu- no. the problem is like so many people are like crazed and they're higher 
brain function has seemingly just shut down. And it reminds me if you've ever had a dog get real skittish and like act out of character. And it's like, he is just on fear. Mm-hmm. Like, like he is just trying to get out of here. Like, like, like maybe like a picture falls and breaks the way they, they, they'll they run through, run you over trying to get away. Like people start acting like that sometimes. I don't understand it because I've been in those scenarios multiple times where police are shouting commands at you and they have guns and you just do it, you know, and you think to yourself, fuck, mm. <laughs> can I send a text message to my wall? No, no. Yep. Yep. Both hands. Yep. Here they are. <laughs> uh, Did you, know, you see I, the, like, whatever you want. Do you see the video recently with the probably crazy dude that crashed his car and called the cops and they end up like standing on this dude's car and they shoot him inside the car and kill him? He called no. for the cops' help and they came and killed it's like, him? It's so yeah. insane. It's suicidal. It's so... <laughs> oh, was it actually a suicide by cop? There was no. an Amber Alert yesterday no. where the child got shot and I got conflicting <sighs> reports. All right, so man kills his wife, kidnaps the child. The child's a teenager, I think. They're like, they're on their chase cops get them stopped however and Mm -hmm. the daughter comes running out of the car toward the cops and they kill her now there are conflicting reports whether she had a gun and was shooting at them or not the cops say she had a gun and she was coming at them blasting like jesse james or something is there no no camera no nothing well you know that footage is you know, been flushed down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it, I haven't seen any footage. I, I don't know the answer to that question. Is it, if it made the police look good, we'd have seen it already. Went the way of the servers on Epstein's Island. <laughs> Never to be seen again. That's what they were looking for at Mar-a-Lago, perhaps. <laughs> no, 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 no. They, no, Kyle, I have it on good authority. They were looking for Hillary's emails. Dude, I've, that heard, was that. The I've heard that from important the... people. <laughs> no, they, Destiny, the FBI, have you heard this? What was what? Trump said in an interview with Hannity that the way the FBI came in there, just so aggressively, such a raid, so overwhelming, that a lot of people think they might have been looking for Hillary's emails at Mar-a-Lago. I mean, yeah, because they hit it with such big force. A lot of and people. And Hannity was immediately like, do you have Hillary's email? Are you saying? He's like, no, 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 no. But maybe they think I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I, 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 it's not very good. I'm compelling. so stuck on that. Why is he in my head? Why am I like? Because I worry that other people think he thinks he's that he's making a point. I worry that other people are like, "Oh, Hillary's emails. All right, all right." Message came from Trump himself, and and uh, that fuck. Gotta, like, gotta, gotta says, stop uh, letting him live in your head. Gotta just, just distance. Well, intellectually, yeah. I know you're right, but here he is, rent free. <laughs> you know, and the problem isn't how much time he spends. There's got to be a joke there about uncritically about Trump amplifiers. And messages, <laughs> That's the but. thing. How many people uncritically just hear hear Trump say things and think he never lied? I they, um, this, this this guy in my life who thinks Trump has never said anything untrue. Never said right, just, anything. Just point untrue. me out if you're gonna do it. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you're do it right in fucking front of me. Like I'm not sitting here. So I came up with the example. I was like, how about this? <laughs> <laughs> when Trump, uh, when they were concerned about Trump's health, he had personally written a letter that he got his doctor to sign saying that if he was elected president, he would be the healthiest person to have ever won <laughs> like the, the presidential election in the history of the United States. True. Donald Trump at like 72 years old and 45 pounds overweight. Was that when they, for, it was, was that the document? Pound. Pound for pound, maybe maybe the largest ask, but like, <laughs> was that the time? When was was that when he claimed like two thirty or he weighed like two twenty five, and it was like, dude, get get real, pick a reasonable <laughs> number if you're gonna fib. Like, don't I? That's like me saying I weigh one fifty. Like, uh, let me read the doctor's note that that the Trump had signed. <laughs> I've been to my. I have been the personal physician of Mr. Donald Trump since 1980. His previous physician was whatever. I am pleased to report that Trump has no significant medical problems. Trump has had a recent medical exam and shows only positive results. <laughs> that's such a funny way to say that. Yeah, damn, that's the most HIV, chlamydia, heard. actually, the, the <laughs> his blood pressure, 110 over 65, and lab tests are astonishingly excellent. Over the past 12 months, he's lost 15 pounds at least. Trump has 81 milligrams of aspirin daily and a low dose of statin. 
And his PSA test score is 0.15, very low. His physical strength and stamina are extraordinary. Trump has suffered no form of cancer, never had a hip, knee, or shoulder replacement, or any other orthopedic surgery. His only surgery was an apectectomy. Uh, fuck, I can't say this word. Appendectomy. appendectomy. Thank you. At age 10, and his cardiovascular status is excellent. He has no history of ever using alcohol or tobacco. If elected, Mr. Trump, I can state unequivocally, will be the healthiest individual ever elected to the presidency. And this guy is like, that's not a 72. lie. <laughs> yeah, that's not a lie. It's not a lie that he's extraordinarily healthy and will be the healthiest ever elected to the presidency. How old I was JFK? That- 40 something no right way. yeah well in fairness JF, jfk he didn't live long shape though he, he, he'd hurt his back real bad in that plane crash yeah you know? and he JFK was he was he was like taking a lot months of... later he you can't pick out him as an example of health true clearly not Iron that healthy efficiency. yeah if he was healthy i he think it was lead right. poisoning <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Ms. Bingo. laughs> i like what you did there yeah yeah it led to the dude Iron like is that a isn't that like a really good blood pressure 110 over it's 110 60. over 65 now i thought 120 over 80 was what you're shooting for and lower than that's too yeah low but this guy's 110 and he's high. like fucking obese yeah like uh, if yeah, he's if, if that's his real blood pressure no he shot. needs to be like you know going to the mayo clinic getting tested obviously it's not there's, there's well, no i don't know they did say that when he got covid that his body was uh what, what did he say like the healthiest body the strongest <laughs> body to defeat covid or whatever okay when he got, say what he had you it right where he wanted it Donald yeah. Trump, a 70-something-year-old overweight man who you just spent the last 10 minutes laughing about how unhealthy he is, got COVID, okay. and then he stood there on that balcony doing his best not to pant. All right? that was <laughs> They all pull out that footage of Putin standing in the rain saluting a goddamn wreath. Show Donald Trump up there. like uh, It's like that scene in Gattaca when he's sprinting on the goddamn <laughs> treadmill with his normal human cardio system pretending it's enhanced. And then when they look away, he's like, <gasps> like, like same thing. Trump's this, a hero. This, God damn it. This is, this is on a different thing for Trump, but like it, it is like, it may be the funniest thing he ever did. It makes me actually laugh every time I think about it. Do you remember when he was standing out on the balcony during the eclipse? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, no, you're talking yeah. about eclipse. Oh, and, he, and there's the picture oh, yes. of, of Melania looking up with the thing, and he's just kind of squinting at it. <laughs> it, is, it is bar none the funniest Trump picture. It is. It even edges out the one where he's, like, proudly displaying fast food. <laughs> which is, and that one, that one is a fucking ST here as well but him him <laughs> squinting at the eclipse is that should have been his presidential <laughs> portrait <laughs> that, was, that was the funniest shit i loved that just rules for me for you the not for me and then just takes a peek Donald he Trump. has the best Focus eyes the America's strongest issues. eyes <laughs> lots of people are talking about his eyes <laughs> how powerful they are the best dude eyes. presidential season's gonna heat up soon like it yep. starts in two months you know he's gonna win it's it's already done. <laughs> the fact the fact Jesus that he's Christ. that powerful, he's that powerful, like like that alone. No no normal human being can do that. They warn you about <laughs> no, it. And no. There he is doing it. You watched him. You watched him do a superhero like feat right there on TV, and then and all anybody could do is laugh at him. You know, he, he, you know what he did after he stared at the sun for five minutes that day. He led the most powerful country on the world. He laser the beamed the crowd. Day. Yeah, and then he had kept, a little well a little he KFC. Could've, he could have <laughs> if he didn't have self restraint. He's a good man. If he was trying to make those health things pass, Christian he shouldn't have man. posted a picture every other day of him eating the KFC, McDonald's, <laughs> Whoppers. Or I don't think actually I don't Pepsi's think he was a Burger Cokes, King guy. Yeah, uh-huh. Pepsi's and Cokes. What was that like? He used Only to have Coke. the funniest. He's never saw a before. thin person drink yeah. a Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah, that like that? That's a great line. <laughs> and then he drank Diet Coke. He, what he, oh wait, yeah. What was that tweet? Oh, he said the Coca-Cola company is not happy with me. That's okay. I'll still keep drinking that garbage. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's unbelievable to know that like there are children who are today probably having like Donald Trump tweets printed in their history books. It's just like unbelievable. Oh, oh yeah, there should be a whole so. chapter just called Bangers. And it's just a list of all the, it's just a list of all the good ones. Oh, my god. Is an expert at triggering me. Like like he, I, was every <laughs> fucking thing would get under my skin. He, he'd re- like Goya beans were suddenly endorsing Trump, so Trump is endorsing them back, telling everyone to buy them. 
Yeah. And, and and then he'd tell people not to buy some other product and he'd pimp his daughters. Remember Oreos were bad? Remember when Oreos were bad? No. Oreos were oh, bad. Oreo. Oreo. He ever disliked Oreo. I, I don't remember what Oreo did. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but Oreo, Oreo turned against the conservatives at some point and, and we were we were supposed to eat these knockoff chocolate cookies. And, and and everybody was like, those are knockoff cookies. And then it turned out they were actually the OG chocolate with cream in the middle cookie and Oreo like stole their oh, thunder. Hydrox? And, Hydrox. That's what you were supposed oh. to drink if you were a good boy. That's like a that's like a lesson in like every business and marketing course you take is Hydrox and Oreo, and how really? Hydrox had the same product pretty much got there first, and then Oreo just butt fucked them in in marketing advertising. And I remember when Keurigs were bad. <laughs> Suddenly Republicans are filming themselves throwing their coffee makers off the balconies. Uh huh. I remember like that. that. Yep. Do you remember <laughs> when the Dixie chick chicks were bad and we had to stomp that on was our CDs? A long time ago. Oh, yeah. I remember. The I Dixie yeah. chick. Wait, wait. With oh, like, see, with he's Bush? too young. Okay, with this Bush? is the yeah. line. Oh, you yeah, no, I remember him with Bush. I was like, there's no way they were relevant. I thought we had found one of those generational lines, like, (laughs) right, just perfect. That you they're now the chicks, they're not the Dixie chicks. That's interesting. I didn't know that. No, nobody knows that. Oh, that, of course, they had to get rid of that. That's not, dude. dude, There was a time when everything they did went got went diamond, and then Mm -hmm. they. I didn't even. That was when I learned the rule that you can't say bad things about America unless you're in America. Like I guess it's perfectly fine to criticize America from here, but they were in Europe, and they're like, "I'm embarrassed that we're going into Iraq." It was after 9/11. Actually, that and, is worse. Yeah, like 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 you're just off like making fun of us. Like you're not even here trying to be constructive about it, right? Like if you were here in front of an American crowd, like you guys need to wake up. This, this look what's happening. But instead, she's like, I don't know, and and. London, where people are much smarter, even though they're also invading right alongside us, and and, and like, oh, you don't even understand how ignorant my people are. It's come on, I don't like that either. I I hear. I don't you like hearing people in accent criticize it. us. <laughs> no one does. Look at Pierce Ooh. Morgan. That's what he did. Imagine yeah, if some French guy was on TV talking shit about America. That would make my blood boil. God, yeah. the French. I don't like it. I don't like to hear a French mouth say anything. It's all all mealy mouth, better than you, smarmy. I don't know. About I don't. I don't that, actually know any really any French people. I, just, <laughs> I, I like GSP because he's he's, he's charming and yeah. he's French Canadian, so it's not, not exactly back. French. But um, you really need to watch the 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 animated stuff about him where he's talking about his alien experiences and like 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 he really has like this time loss thing where he thinks he's been taken by aliens and he'll take you know those foam rollers. Yeah. He'll like prop one up. You know, they're really easy to tip over if you put them on in. He'll prop one up to his door so that, and before he goes to bed, so he'll know that he's been abducted if it's knocked over in the morning. He'll know they came in and got him. And yeah, uh, in the proof. animated thing, of course, they make fun of this like missing time thing. And they make it seem that he just doesn't under- understand how sleep and unconsciousness works. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll, he'll, he has sex with a woman and it's 10 p.m. He's like, okay, good night. And like looks at the, you know, the clock by the bed, digital thing, 10 p.m., closes his eyes, sleeps all night, wakes up at 6 a.m., and he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this happens eight, every night. <laughs> eight hours were stolen from me. <laughs> and, like, yeah, that's the whole bit. Why wouldn't it's he use a... Funnier, well, when they do it, though. Why not just use a camera? Um. Well, you know, he's... he's. I don't I don't, I don't. don't know. You have to ask GSP. But uh, it's, yeah, That's it's a real, more useful system fun. than a, a foam roller. Woody, do you think GSP could come back now and be no. relevant? I know. I'm always that guy who dogs on old people. I'm the opposite of uh, my fellow oldies. Like, I'm like, dude, no, I, I, I doesn't work I with fighters. Does it? Explain to you why athleticism disappears or how it disappears. Like, I can lift more now. Well, not, not exactly more, but like, I, I'm about as strong as I've ever been. I. I I had to take two weeks off because of the nose and everything, but I'm about as strong as I've ever been, but I'm not more athletic than young me was young. me. Yeah, if you had to run hurdles or something like that, tires, yeah. that sort of thing. Like, I mean, I bet I was better at pinball or like random shit. Like the picture, really? some new skill. Like, like I, I'm trying to think in an athletic game. I don't know. Now, if I tried to learn to like dribble a soccer ball, you know, that thing where you keep it in the air, mm-hmm. I think I would have picked that up better at, 21 than i do today and i I think i think there's advantages right there there, there's like you see it in some sports right you see kickers who go on into their uh their 40s and i think that there's this one football player who i think he went four decades i think he played in four separate decades and he has a really interesting story that i can't remember all the details of but that was there was one game like toward the end of his career when he's like 48 or something 
where he kicked like a 52 yarder to go to OT and then like a 60 yarder or something crazy to win the fucking game at late 40s. And they show a picture of him and it's like, oh, yeah, you definitely started in the leather league. Like he looks <laughs> like a monster of a man. It's just a cool character. So I think you can do something like that, obviously, in your 40s. But if you got to run and jump and sprint, we don't yeah. see we don't see 45 year old running backs and wide receivers. We don't see in baseball, you, you know, the pitcher's arms are ruined by, by in, into their late 40s. You, you rarely and occasionally will see like a guy who comes back after they rebuild his elbow, by the way. Now he can do two or three innings of closing into his 40s. But in fighting, the only time I can think of, and it's before I was really even a fan, but who, what was the guy who has the real bad male pattern baldness that was a heavyweight who came back and like took the title at like sounds 40. like Randy Couture. Randy Couture, like he's the only example, and that's back when it was a bit more brawler and a bit less technique. And he beat like Tim Randy Sylvia. Couture just... could not jump in today and be relevant. The and competition his, his level prime. was is higher much is much higher now than it was when he beat Tim Sylvia. Yeah. Oh, I heard this about Dana White. They asked him at the press conference. They're like, we heard, we heard something. We heard you bought um, this guy um, a, a house, and he's like, yeah, yeah. He's uh, you know, he's a good kid. You know, he's on the uh, Contender Show, and he uh, he's doing well. And he, and he told me the other day, he's about to be homeless. You know, we're not gonna let that happen. And that was it. <laughs> 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 it was like. Oh, that's really cool. He just bought him a fucking house, and he did. He just bought him a fucking house. That, that's such a nice guy thing. I, 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 I don't know what to think about Dana White, but but based yeah. on like everything I have seen, I think he, I think he's a real nice guy. Might be hard to work for him though if you're not uh, 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 bringing really bringing in a ton of money for him. It, it, it it's always funny. I, I watch those deep dive like YouTuber made documentaries about MMA mm -hmm. subjects. And they'll sh they they'll remind you of stuff that happened, and it puts things in better con uh, context. Some of the the little stories, and there there was a time when like Dana had beef with like Nate Diaz, and like 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 they were having a real issue. And then like that night, him and Conor McGregor are in like a Lambo convertible, like riding around town, like having fun together. It's like <laughs> it's like it's really oh I know what it was. It was about Tony never getting that Khabib fight. And and okay. Tony and Connor being having the same representation, and them always putting Connor first and making sure he got the big fights, and uh, and, and they think that it sidelined Tony from uh, getting finally the 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 Khabib fight. Maybe they did schedule that fight five times. They did, so. and it failed. It's it's one of the most bizarre situations in, yeah. in, in, in sports that that you could schedule something five times, and for one reason or another, it just didn't happen. Like one or more of the two men couldn't show up five times in a row. Yeah, it was crazy. upsetting. I, uh, yeah, it seems like if you're on Dana's good side, you might get a house. Like, and interesting thing is this: a big part of the UFC compensation program is based on bonuses, seemingly at Dana White's whim. And it's hard to underestimate that a, a guy will get like a two hundred thousand dollar payday. And an extra million because Dana liked it. Dana liked your fight. He gives you a million dollars. It's the semi life changing amount of money. And Cormier uh, kind of cheese. Cormier. I think this is these numbers. He's the. Uh, that's what I mean. He's the house yeah. mouse. He's the only one who's getting those two million dollar bonuses. Uh, I bet Connor's gotten bonuses like that. I, uh, I, I can't Connor's, prove it. Yeah, but I bet Connor's. Contract I mean, he currently he's negotiating that kind of cash, but I bet yeah. early Connor was getting you know seven digits just dropped on him. I, I I'm done with Connor. I'm 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 not interested anymore. Like, come back and fight and do a thing. I don't give a fuck about his social media. He's such a weird dude. Sometimes I, I remember Chael Sonnen called him a weird little dude, and he got offended. And yeah. he is though. Connor is a weird little dude. He I, he needs to stop flexing because he's he's not a big man. Like, like, like you he, keep dogging his muscles. Can man, we get a recent so picture of Connor? He doesn't look little to me. Look, I mean, he's, he's he's not tall, but he just well. Here's the thing: he's flexing like he's he's not big enough to flex. Is the thing like like I just don't think he is. And and also like his flexing is weird too. Like it'd be one thing if he was showing us like trying out, but he's actually like flexing muscles like a bodybuilder or something. And then the other the other thing I saw him do was when he was like 
being really weird and he, like making those faces and making all those weird groany noises. He was just like, ah, like and he's small to you. Yeah, no, he's looking very I, I, big. I, I, I mean, this is a great angle when you you're see doing him the, the Derek thing from More Plates, More Dates, where he's like, "Look at Superman in this film. He's just <laughs> fucking fat." Uh, this <laughs> like, is, what's this, disgusting about this physique? He barely has abs. This is the best angle I've I've seen him. I saw him today. He looks and, very big uh, in that one. I saw him today on the UFC subreddit, and he looked. His arms did not look. Yeah, this, this. See, like this is a this to me is completely different. Look, he, he's flexing so hard and, and and accomplishing nothing. Like like his look at his arms. Woody, I think your arms look better than this man's when you're all pumped up and flexing like this. I, I think, don't know. My I, I see his dick on the right picture all the way to the right. I don't know that I've got that 16. Well, look, dog. it's not a cock off, okay? <laughs> <laughs> is that wrap around to the back of him? What the fuck is that? You're goddamn right it does. <laughs> I mean, right? he's but a by, by compared to what he's ever looked like, this is much bigger, isn't it? Yes, he has gotten yeah. bigger. But yeah. everybody's like, oh my God, he's roided out. No, no, I don't he, think he's on Roy. His traps are disproportionately large, but that's because he's, oh, he's flexing right there. Him up and yeah, that's good. Look, exactly. Yeah, right. Here's how you can tell. Look, traps look are at his than you chin. Think if you do look that. at his chin in yeah, relation like, to where his traps are. He's 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 you know he's posing like to look as big as he possibly can. And when you do that, and okay. this is what you get to, that means he is a very small man, comparatively speaking. Like 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 look, he's a professional athlete. He's big. He's strong. He's not trying to get like big and bulky or anything, mm -hmm. but he's flexing like he's showing off how big and bulky he is, and he ain't, is what I'm talking about. And he just doesn't look big, like like I, especially in the picture on the left. Those now his delt and that vein coming across is madness. Like mm -hmm. that looks great. That's that is a whole separate thing. But the rest of his arm, it I think Woody's arms are better. I don't know. I think Woody's um um I think Woody's arms are better. I think I think they're I, I bet Woody like bench press more to than show. <laughs> well no yeah because it's not fair go fucking like get hydrated and get some of Derek's shit and like your pre workout and do it do a whole workout thing <laughs> look at Woody's <laughs> dealt look at that I, I mean look good. at Woody's dealt like, like like Woody doesn't have a professional photographer there like like getting the lighting just right with down lighting and uh you know and he, he's probably not looking at a crazy full pump there and he's not tan as fuck uh there's many reasons why like Connor looks the way he does. And uh, I just think Woody's bigger. I bet you can take him, Woody. McGregor. You can take him. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Not in a cock off. <laughs> yeah, Woody could beat bit. up Conor McGregor. <laughs> That's, that much is a conclusion. <laughs> just speaking of sports, of you. Did, you, did you see that NFL clip I just sent you? Yeah, oh, the I'll send it again. To a thing. Dude, that guy, I wonder if we could get away. To oh, just, we can't show it because it's NFL. But like... He apparently he got concussed five days ago in his last game to the point he was like stumbling trying to walk. And I guess they still cleared him to play. And he's like hardcore, like fencing response out. They had to take him to the hospital. Like, I, I, I don't watch much football, but like this is very bad by football standards. Like he's 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 a quarterback and he's just fucking out. Yeah. He's oh, the video of this is like really fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. On the ground. Yeah. He's like just what, totally st like just what, uh, like what do, you, what do you think that hand signal means? Do you think they're decoding that somewhere to see that <laughs> like may maybe he went to another realm and they're sending a message back like that time data was stuck in the uh, the I time think he's loop just from a Star Trek or something. I, I think he's <laughs> oh, he's uh, I think oh that's West Side West Side okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're in Miami. You can't he's be repping that. Out. This guy's oh, gonna no, be dead tomorrow, and you guys are gonna feel he's horrible. He's doing this. He's doing this. That's what it <laughs> I'm is. not. I'm not making fun of this poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Taylor, this is a step Taylor, too you, far from a tumbo. Taylor, Taylor, <laughs> Taylor, Taylor wants pinned. <laughs> Taylor wants pinned the whole expose about about and uh, what Helen Keller, and you won't make fun of that knocked out QB. He's a professional athlete. Oh, that it man, was it was funny to make to draw a comparison. That man's me bathroom. just stoically not being willing to, to, to participate in this. That this is a bridge too far <laughs> helen keller that dumb cunt like <laughs> and i mean but like helen keller's dad thank god and no no she's like, still alive <laughs> so i want to read this second impact syndrome occurs when the brain swells rapidly and catastrophically after a person has a second concussion before symptoms from an earlier one have subsided the second blow may occur minutes days or weeks after an initial concussion so i didn't realize second impact syndrome cysts was what it was. Swelling. 
yeah, so that's rough. Yeah, I, I don't know if Zach is implying this is cis or he's at risk of cis. I, I don't mm-hmm. know which one he's saying. It says he's a, he's awake and responsive at the hospital now, and he has movement in all his extremities. So hopefully yeah. he will be fine. As long as it's not the, like the bulldogs, we're all good, oh. though, right? Like, so this is, is the one we saw his second concussion? That was the second one. That's the one that just happened tonight, like as we were doing the show. The previous one wasn't oh. as brutal. He's playing in a Thursday oh. night game. Mm-hmm. I didn't put that together. Oh, shit. I see. Oh, yeah, that's so he got hurt five scenario. days ago, and now mm-hmm. he's getting concussed again. Like, that could be life ruining. Hopefully, it's not. Well, mm-hmm. oof, dude. Like <laughs> in, these I've never heard of anything are like this. Do you think that like maybe head injuries in football could? I don't know. Like, nah. be tied together somehow. I think you're worried about nothing. Well, he'll be. He'll probably be fine. I really don't care. Yeah. I've never heard I mean, I player before. The good news is he has like nine days to rest before his next game. So yeah. <laughs> what a bit. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm, I'm trying. I'm wrangling up some. I'm, I'm gonna get some tickets. I think for for one of these playoff games, the Braves are about to be in. Um, I, we're in the uh, wild card. Um, Aren't game. the Phillies in it? Are you about to play my Phillies? Good. Luck. You know, I didn't check. I didn't care because I. You know, it's. How do you know like, who plays who in baseball? It's it's kind of like when they co- told Conor McGregor that uh, he was gonna have to fight Eddie Alvarez. Or they're, they're all the same kind of oh, mentality. That was Nate Diaz. But yeah. oh, was it? Are in it? Oh, was it? Hey. I could have sworn. It. And he lost. No, he, I I think I'm rewriting this. This is the kind of thing I know. He's like one man is as good as another. They're all the same, or something close to that. Fair enough. Well, in any case, um, might go to one of these games. Haven't been to a Braves game you in a should, bit. Man. Um, I wonder who they're playing. Yeah, it'll be easy. It, search NL Wild Card Game, NL NL East Wild Card Game, and you and you and you'll find it. All right, it might, it might not even be de- determined if the other. Oh, actually, uh, the Phillies are playing St. Louis. <clears throat> Really? Yeah, they've been the, both in the wild card play. And Taylor, we are now mortal enemies. I care I'm very much it. about the Phillies. <laughs> oh, is that wait? It, it says we're playing the Mets in, on screen. Can you put it back? Jesus, it lower. We got no. that one for three seconds, and we got the guy in the in shorts earlier for like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm on MLB.com, and it says a different playoff picture and bracket. It says well, the P is Phillies, right? Yeah, that's what mm-hmm. I'm looking at. So oh, okay. St. Louis right. taking okay, on Philadelphia. Sorry. Atlanta taking on San Diego. I like how in baseball there's no logos, just you just know. Oh, I are. see. They have assumed that Philly's gonna beat St. Louis and put us up against the Mets. I don't know. Based on those numbers, three better number than six. Well, so I just saw a photo from the future of the Phillies up against the second round team. Atlanta. I'll explain <laughs> that. <laughs> Let's come on, cards. Let's win it just to wait. Where where are the Braves? Oh, this the means a. that if this means if the Braves are going to win, they have to fight through a shit storm. So like 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 dealing with the Padres is whatever, but having to deal with uh, the Dodgers and then having to beat the Mets is going to be a nightmare. Uh, by the way, the Mets are going to fucking. Sp- Beat the shit out of whichever one of you coming. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, uh, the Mets are very good this year. Like, what about no uh, we're pools. playing the Mets tomorrow? I think. How about pools, um, though? I mean, I'm. I seeing... mean, how many homers is he gonna hit? They're gonna let him like bat three times an inning. Like, I don't. I don't dude, think it's dude, my. T- Albert Pujols, Yadier Molina. Do I need to go on with other players? I hope <laughs> only, not. Only if you know a third. <laughs> those, are, those are the only two guys I literally know on the Cardinals. And I'm it's only because Molina. Like, Molina's well, been on the cards for 20 years. So. All right. Well, the P has a higher number next to him than any of you fucks. The Braves are not going to repeat because this is fucking rough. Oh, don't be now down on I, yourself. You're oh, on a good man. run. Now that I look at it, it's a, it's a real shit storm. I, I don't know. I hadn't seen the uh, the playoff picture. Yeah, Do you I, think they'll roll through San Diego? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I, it doesn't matter because, because of the Dodgers and the Mets. I'm asking I mean, you guys yeah. who know as much about sports as me, but in football... If you get a bye, it really, really, really helps. It's rare that the team with a bye loses to the team who was in the wild card. Maybe because they're better, but I think the bye in itself helps a lot. They get a chance to heal and and plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In baseball, does the team with the bye have that level of advantage or not so much? Like, are your pitchers worn out? Are you fucked? Yeah, it's it's a bit of an advantage. The, the pitching is the main thing. Starting pitching is the main thing. Or the bullpen in general, right? Like, just being as rested as possible. Is, is is a big advantage and getting oh. everybody healed up is is of course a thing too um because you're gonna have to run that rotation in a, in a playoff rotation and not every team has four good starters 
So, so yeah, they might have to burn three of them just to get to the next round. A lot of teams don't have two, don't have three good starters. You know, there'll be these two guys. They'll be like, oh yeah, they got, we got one stud, one guy that can get it done like most of the time, and then the rest is kind of like these guys who are always coming up and trying, or just guys mm-hmm. moving in and out every week that you're hearing about. Um, starting pitching gets rough in the in the postseason. It's it, that's when I like baseball. I, I can't stand regular season baseball, but postseason baseball is fun. It's it's fun to see the decisions managers make. It's fun to see small ball, and uh, I don't know. I like seeing those night games, and and they're cold and chilly. I I remember watching Boston win that series in like two thousand three, four, whenever that was, and it. I watched them do that comeback. I watched oh, every inning of that, every at bat of that. Chilling. Uh, before Kurt Schilling, when they came back against the Yankees to to win the, the, oh. the their division. That was when it was crazy. Then going on to the series and winning that was even more impressive. But when they were when they were uh, playing, that the wasn't Yankees, the bloody sock thing. Uh, I think it led to the bloody sock, maybe okay. le- at, in the series. But but mm. I'm not. I don't remember exactly. I just remember them rallying to come back and even have a chance to to tie the series up, and that was crazy. And uh, and and what is it? What was uh, fucking Big Poppy was just constantly hitting these clutch home runs. Where it was just like the season was over, and then he said no, and we mm-hmm. go we go a little bit more, and, and they just kept doing that. The the Red Sox just kept saying no, one more, then, one more at bat, one more inning, and they kept winning. It was crazy. Didn't their like star pitcher beat up a coach for the Yankees? Um, that isn't that, so. I think you're thinking about um when Pedro Martinez uh-huh. threw that chubby white uh coach who was 60 or 70. It was His the name highlight of the series right now. But I don't remember something? what's. I don't remember when that specifically happened. I didn't remember it being part of the playoff picture, but maybe it was. I do remember seeing it many times. I don't know if I watched it live. I've just seen it so many times on YouTube. Him just, <laughs> he like grabs the guy's head and like kind of like olays him and like throws him out. Yeah, on the I ground. think he, he was the coach was like challenging this charging him. He's charging the man. professional athlete, and the pro is just like you're gonna go here. Ah. Pulling on my cable. Oh my god! Yeah, that's, look at that. <laughs> it's, it's just giving him that olay, just tossing. Yeah, him and I, I, dude ate shit. And and like keep in mind that. Old guy this, who ate shit and challenged him is just like personifying what I'm talking about with that like sort of hidden loss of athleticism. You know, there's a, there's oh, a reason he got dog like he did. He's there old. was a time when this would have worked out in his favor. He'd have went out there and whooped yeah. that dude's ass, and then well, the other guy would have been eleven. Yeah, you back up and make oh, him eleven on. versus thirty. I, I like his odds. Yeah, oh, I'm talking about in his day or whatever. But look, this didn't. This would have been embarrassing if it happened in a parking lot at Denny's. Look, look in at the that background. How, and and and, and think, this happened a decade ago, at least maybe two decades now. <laughs> We're laughing about it now, pointing at it. It was hey, that guy's got to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's he dead for sure. A hundred percent dead. He was old back then. Destiny. That's Have you I been think. watching Bill Maher lately? Do you pay attention to him at all? Um, not usually, except for when clips fly by. Nah, he's he's. I don't want to say he's left the left because he's he's always been like an edgy left leaning kind of guy, right? Like he's left leaning, but he's always been like pretty edgy. Like he's been against like kind of the woke stuff, you know. Yeah, I feel like that's become a bigger part of his identity than it used to be. I think because the woke stuff's become a bigger part of the left than it used to be. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Like wokeness for the left five years ago, even or even well, ten years ago, was awesome. <clears throat> wokeness for the left ten years ago was like gay people should be able to get married. We got to continue to fight for abortion rights, and you know, like maybe we shouldn't force kids to all be fucking religious or something. Or like men should be able to wear earrings. Like that was like wokeness on the left like ten years yeah. ago. Now yeah. wokeness on the left is like. My two-year-old daughter just said she was trans. Um, <laughs> men are pregnant. Uh, fucking, men yeah, are we pregnant. can't have men That's and women are like, yeah, just yeah, using any of these words is transphobic. Uh, yeah, it, it's gotten way, way, way fucking insane. So I can understand why somebody like Bill Maher, who's already he's always been like not a very woke guy, is probably like super triggered all the time about it. Man, maybe it's just the trans people that I know and interact with, but none of them care about any of this shit. Like, like I feel like 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 the the whole thing is like. The woke thing is a magic spell for white people to throw at each other. Yeah, like, like it has nothing to do with the the people that they're talking about because it every every trans person that we've met has a fucking sense of humor 
And the mm-hmm. last thing they are is trying to like pin you down to make you call them a certain thing or like get you on board with their, their ideology or like make you call them anything. Sure. Remember when I, what I, what I asked that one person like, Hey, what are your pronouns or whatever? And they're like, uh, I'm a faggot. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh, right. shit. Cause you have eyeshadow and you're, you're, you're kind of like pretty like a girl, but you're like kind of coming off dude as well. And, and, and like, 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 what's going on here? It's like, Oh yeah, I'm a faggot. Nice to see you. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. You also, you know, your your screen name is a woman's name. I, I had to ask. <laughs> yeah, you got to know. Got to be sure. Yeah. yeah, but I've never had anybody like get upset by by any of that any of that stuff. Yeah, it's always the opposite. Life, it's always people with not. senses of humors. That I feel like Latinx gotten, Matt, is one that that fits that thing too. Like like there's white people saying Latinx who feel like it's very important to mm, get right, uh, and then actual brown people are like dude that where'd this come from that's got to be an online thing people in real life don't say that and don't know i've I've seen a lot of corporate thing also that bipoc shit too yeah you see it show up in a lot of corporate environments apparently see emails getting thrown around with this stuff a lot and um this one's new to me bipoc is not it's that's pretty standard uh stands for black and indigenous and people of color it's like separating out black and indigenous and other people of color i think because oh that's these kids getting looped in with, with them all the time okay I, w- I wonder if the uh, like like the did when are they gonna? My African friends don't like black people who are African Americans. My yeah. Africans a- like my African friends don't like African Americans. So sure. so is there any way that they can differentiate themselves so that they feel properly represented in your acronym of choice? They need to use two African <laughs> African African Americans. <laughs> He's double <laughs> African. <laughs> like. That's- I think for a lot of those guys, I don't think the I don't think people from Africa consider themselves Africans. They'd be like Nigerians or Kenyans. Somalians and Nigerians. Like, or Somali- yeah. In my experience. like people that come to the United States don't be like like oh, where are you from? You're like oh, I'm European. It's like that's yeah. funny because <laughs> only white Americans say that. Oh, I'm very I have a European background. When you go to Europe, they're like yeah. you know. You're Although we do Russian say background. we're American. We do say we're American. God but, bless. but everybody knows what we mean. Hell yeah, we do. <laughs> Nobody goes to like Brazil. <laughs> nah, bitch. <laughs> the good one. Man. That is a pretty big W in our column. We take the whole yeah. continent. We take the whole thing. Two continents. No Two one continents. ever asks like like which one they they mean. Or they just know. Yeah. You tell somebody you're from Dakota, and they're all they're like, which no America. No, I like that you could go further. Be like, I'm from North Carolina. Yes. I expected you to learn all my states. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where they are, idiot. Like <laughs> the capital of Canada. Uh, Toronto. Do you want me to tell you? It's uh, Ottawa. Quebec. Oh, yeah. People never yeah. know. I mean, I, I would have got was, there. It was, we I have mean, no. It's the Ottawa Senators. The team no is edu- the Ottawa Senators. I never received any education that even mentioned the capital of that country, nor has our nightly news ever mentioned the capital of that country. Why waste time? I don't know how your government <laughs> works. I don't know how your government works. Is it like one of those trinary things? <laughs> like, 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 I don't know. Dude, don't if, if, Canada, wizards, if Canada we don't just, know. If Canada phased out yeah. during, during non-hockey season, Okay, okay, for okay. like yeah, yeah. for like a week, I bet we'd get to like day Phenomenal. five before we were like something's <laughs> up. Anybody knows. Like something, like something, <laughs> something's wrong. The internet's gotten meaner. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was the, well, that's the whole premise of a South Park episode, right? When Canada goes on strike and nobody oh, gives yeah. a fuck, so they're just like they all got beards and they're starving and they're like they're like, could you please make the smallest concession so we can call yeah. this a win? We'll come back. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In Canada, I, I remember having that argument with that Canadian guy, and uh, about technocracy, I suppose, in general. I and, know this. Uh, and and I, I was like, he's like, oh yeah, we the Canadians designed and built the arm on the space shuttle. I and I was that. like, I was like, dude, we designed and built the space shuttle. <laughs> 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 What are you talking about? Yeah. And let's talk be about- fair. That <laughs> was brass- busy work. We gave Canada to feel part of the team. <laughs> we absolutely the- could have handled the arms too, Canada. We <laughs> wanted you to feel like you're a part of the gang, so we put a little spinny hat on you and then let you pretend. You got a pity <laughs> invite to the space party. Get out of here with that bragging about your space arm. God, I'm ruining my only allies in hockey talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, no. No, that's probably no. a wrap right i gotta, I gotta go feed my puppy for the eighth time today and i'm sure he mm. shat somewhere <laughs> i'm sure he did all right well check out destiny's channel on youtube and any other channels you want to send him to any other places uh yeah youtube and instagram destiny yeah 
Check them right. out. Check it out. And PKA, check out 615. Buy our compills. <laughs>